right now sitting well to the southwest of you. So that's currently uh, where the weather is as far as the radar is concerned. I'll pull that up over it. And uh, you can see as far as the radar is concerned, there are showers and storms from the Mississippi River westward, but it's just west of Tallulah uh, that we do have a pretty good signature on this storm right here. So uh, this is something to keep in mind. I'll tell you what it looks like from a storm relative velocity perspective. And uh, yeah, it looks pretty good here. Uh, this is southwest of uh, Tallulah, uh, also south of Quebec. I want to make sure you understand this. This we don't believe this is going towards the Mississippi River uh, in Vicksburg, but we do think it's going to go north of Vicksburg across parts of the area as we go through the next 45 minutes or so. So if you live anywhere in the southern part of Issaquina County and in northwestern Warren County, we're talking specifically along Highway 465. Uh, that is where we have a tornado warning currently in effect. Uh, it's not a very heavily populated area to say the least, but again, we want our friends in folks in Eagle Lake to be prepared for the storm. I still think the way this is moving that this is probably going to move maybe even farther north. Just the way I've been watching these storms during the course of this evening. The storms that have been trying to cross the river have been doing so, but they seem to weaken over time, at least in our area farther north in the Delta portion of Mississippi. Uh, we have been seeing, um, you know, some of the storms remaining on the strong side. Um, so you could see as far as this particular storm goes, Right now, the tornado warning in effect. Uh, this is going to go until uh, about an hour from now, 1145. Uh, and the reason why is it's part of that cluster of storms that we've been tracking for you most of this evening out there. This is the way it looks right now on the radar screen. There are showers billowing up across central portions of Mississippi, very close to the Pearl River uh, through Lawrence County. We're seeing some heavier showers right now, and this stretches northward all the way up to between Kosciuszko and Belzona. We're really talking about right there, Durant. Uh, you're looking at some heavy rain just north of uh, Pickens, but these are not at severe levels, at least at this point in time. We need to watch, though, and it's these storms that are extending from Issaquina County here southwestward into northeast Louisiana that are posing the threat, the tornadic threat. The main line of storms sits a little bit further to the west here, and that is closer to Monroe, Louisiana right now, and that's coming from the north and west. So let's look at the live scan on first alert Doppler, and you can see showers and storms are sitting out here in the lower delta and in eastern sections of Louisiana. At this point in time, my vantage point as I've been watching this weather for you uh, most of the afternoon and the evening is it's not as intense as it was a half hour ago, but nonetheless, this particular storm is about to cross Interstate 20. We do uh, know that there are some storm chasers right now on I-20 uh, west of Vicksburg that are monitoring the storm and waiting to see as it comes across uh, the river. So this is the latest on that. Um, it continues moving from the northwest to southeast. This is where we have that line of storms that we've been watching most of the night. But the tornado warning is now in effect for southern sections of Issaquina and northern Warren counties from this particular cluster of storms that is moving from southwest to northeast. And yeah, it is showing some signs of uh, rotation and there has been a pretty good inflow and outflow to it. We do have a tornado watch in effect OK, so uh, just getting that information, I want to verify it with Peyton. Uh, did, can you just check the chat real quick to see if we have a con mm -hmm. confirmation on uh, that? But there was a uh, we, have, we do have storm spotters that are on Interstate 20 mm -hmm. so that are watching it at this point, but we haven't gotten any other confirmations. They're advising it when it will cross. OK, they're list. advising when it will probably cross and what time will it cross Interstate 20? Just to give me a vantage point here. Uh, do we want to go back to radar and look at? Yeah, let's go back to okay. real quick. Sorry about that. Didn't mean to put you on the spot. Meteorologist Peyton Garrison uh, joining us uh, this evening for coverage, or I should say overnight uh, for the coverage. Uh, but we're, this is Tallulah right here. The actual core of the storm is sitting well west of Tallulah, but that gives you a little vantage point as to what we're dealing with. So uh, it's going to be moving across Interstate 20 here, literally in probably the next yeah. five or 10 minutes. Yeah, so we should get confirmation if. Uh, if it is on the ground okay. here probably soon, I would I would imagine. Gotcha. And then, um, you know, from Vicksburg, it would be hard to see this storm unless you're looking due west. And even then, we're still talking about 15 miles west of Vicksburg at this point. And the point. National Weather Service is uh, saying that the strongest rotation is now crossing I-20 near Quebec, okay. west of Tallulah. Okay, so that would be right in this area. This is the area where that's going to be crossing. Again, it's outside of our viewing area, but this is targeted to move somewhere into Issaquina and uh, northwestern Warren County over the next hour. Again, Vicksburg is not included 
in this particular uh, particular tornado warning. I'm going to put the clicker over here, uh, but you can see it's not involved in this particular warning right now, uh, but it is sitting uh, to the west of Vicksburg, and it is going to be moving north and eastward into our lower Delta counties here as we go through the coming uh, minutes. Um, meteorologist Peyton Garrison joining. I wonder if we could take a look uh, when you get a chance uh, at Vicksburg Tower Cam, because there was a decent amount of lightning right when the tornado warning was issued, and I popped on the air. Um, I didn't get a chance to put it in the show, but maybe you can pull it up yeah. and just give us a vantage point um, because we haven't seen quite a bit of lightning with the storm, although it's a little bit of a distance off to the west, but it's the closest to Vicksburg that this storm cell is going to get. There are other storm cells out there, though. Again, as I've been mentioning, this is part of a cluster of storms that sits well off to the northwest. So this is the area where you're going to see the lightning in this particular shot, only because we're looking northward at the bridge, but there's quite a bit of lightning out there. Uh, so a decent amount of lightning. Um, that is coming from that particular storm cell. We are getting some showers now popping up in Metro Jackson as well, but they're not really a, a, of a severe nature at this point in time. I um, Go ahead. I do want to point out that we do have now a severe thunderstorm warning for uh, parts of Issaquin and Sharkey counties, uh, mainly for that potential of a 60 mile an hour wind gust, but it does have that tornado possible tag uh, for this storm impacting the northern part of uh, Issaquina County right now, very close to Myersville. This warning also includes a rolling fork, uh, Anguilla, Delta City, very similar to where we also had that tornado warning uh, earlier a couple of hours ago. Uh, but this one, not a tornado warning, but it does have that tornado possible tag where it could uh, spin up a tornado at any uh, moment pretty much. And you can see that uh, broad rotation uh, just a little bit just to the south and east of Myersville south of Highway 1. So that's something that we're going to watch, uh, but not tornadic right now. Right now. And yeah, that, that circulation could it could change at yeah. a moment's notice, just like uh, we've been watching the weather do so this evening. Uh, that severe thunderstorm warning, by the way, is in effect until 1130, another 40 minutes from now. We are monitoring that storm to see if it goes tornadic. If you were watching uh, me on the 10 p.m. news on WLBT, we told you as we were signing off, first places that we're going to have the problems tonight would be north of the Big Black River. So that's really all of our lower Delta counties right now. Vicksburg right there to give you perspective. Storm is well to the west of Vicksburg. This storm cell specifically is not coming towards Vicksburg. So Eagle Lake, you are advised to be paying very close attention to the storm because if it tracks a little bit more east than north, it's going to be moving right over Eagle Lake. If we can track out the times, I'm just curious to show folks that Valley Park is bounded by the end of this tornado warning, but that cell and wow, that's a well defined cell. We don't see that too often, do we Peyton? That's the one that's right there by uh, Quebec. Yeah. Um, what are we looking at? Well, I'll tell you what we're looking at. We've got inflow and outflow that are very in sharp contrast. And when you start seeing purple, like we're seeing there, those are some pretty strong winds. So that's uh, a circulation that is pretty intense there. So Eagle Lake around 1113, 1113 is when you're probably going to be looking at this cell moving into your area. So 1113 be on guard, but that's an intense cell. Am I right, Peyton? I mean, Mm -hmm. We don't just see that too often. Let's go closer in on that maybe just to give a better vantage point. This is outside of Tallulah. If you know some folks in Tallulah, you might want to advise them about this. Um, these storms in the middle of the night are the ones that we really need to watch. We do know there are some storm spotters, uh, storm chasers that are out there on I-20 getting a vantage uh, point on this particular storm cell. But this shows up very clearly uh, just west of Tallulah, crossing the interstate with I-20. It's going to be moving farther northeast to Talabina in Louisiana. Eagle Lake is here. So this is our concern. This is our primary concern right now included in this tornado warning. And the tornado warning is the tornado is moving north and east. And as uh, Peyton just showed you, about 1113 is when this thing ought to be crossing the Mississippi River into the Eagle Lake community. Um, otherwise, the rest of the area right now, it's relatively quiet, at least here in Mississippi. Across the river, it's a much different story, but uh, we're seeing these showers. I've been telling you about them here. They're very close to the Pearl River, but they're not reaching severe limits by any means. But still, around Tyler Town, up through Monticello, uh, the western part of Simpson County, western areas of Rankin, really most of Rankin, and then into southern Madison. That's where we're seeing these showers and storms. And then across the lower delta, that's where the more intense weather is taking place. This is the back edge of this weather system. 
Normally when I show you that, and it's only about 120 miles northwest of Jackson, if you want to give uh, just some reference to it, 80 miles west of Vicksburg. When you normally see a line of storms this close to us, you say, wow, that severe weather threat's not going to last that long. The problem is this front is slowing up. So that's the main line of storms. Out ahead of this main line, we run the risk of getting tornadic storms, and that's what's happening. We have supercells that are forming in central Louisiana, and the northeastern part of the state, and they're now starting to get close enough to Mississippi. We really need to pay attention to what happens with these particular cells here, because as they start moving more northeastward, they could become an issue later on, later tonight or early tomorrow morning, as we get closer to the Vicksburg area. So I would tell you, that the weather is going to be going downhill across western areas of Mississippi over the next couple of hours, and it is likely that we are going to be looking at the worst of the weather during the overnight hours across the rest of central Mississippi and southwestern Mississippi as this line of storms pushes in and these supercells try to break out in front of it. Um, meteorologist Peyton Garrison joining me watching the storms here, watching this mm -hmm. particular storm that's now northwest of Tallulah, west of Eagle Lake. We almost and had that donut hole looking. I don't yeah, know and you know that. it's weird. We have haven't we seen that a lot? It seems mm -hmm. this year um, there's been a lot of that. So why don't you explain real briefly what the donut hole means to you? Uh, where we kind of sinking air in a way. Uh, it's like the rotating, funnel. Yeah. Uh, so if we were to have a potential tornado, that is where we would have one. Uh, this actually did. Ha this same cell did have a confirmed tornado on the ground uh, not too long ago. Not the case right now. We just have that potential uh, for this storm to produce a tornado. This is a radar indicated tornado warning, uh, but uh, I just want to update you. We are getting uh, reports from one of our storm spotters that is watching this uh, storm along I-20 that it looks like as if a tornado was potentially touching down as it was crossing I-20. They saw uh, multiple flashes. I'm assuming power flashes. Right. So um, we can turn on the debris signature potentially and see if uh, we're seeing anything right there as if maybe anything is being uh, lofted in the air. If anything was on the ground, I'm not seeing anything, Dave, uh, that stands no, out. No, I'm not either. And you know, the, the part of the issue here, if you just know the population centers in that part of Louisiana, that really beyond Tallulah, <clears throat> you know, there's not a lot in that area. So, but I do uh, want to stay right here real quick because yeah. now they are reporting that a large tornado is on the ground right now to the north. So okay. maybe if this is, um, yeah, we're probably going to see it. Yeah. If, if, if there is a tornado on the ground, we may potentially see a tree, anything being lofted in the ground, I mean, in the air, I should say. Right, and here's the story. So when you're looking at this, um, it can be a little bit confusing. You're saying, what's all these little pixelated colors for? But it's in here that we can pick out uh, the debris signatures. So we're going to let it go a scan or two. And they are, and National Weather Service is going to go observe with this, okay. changing the wording. Yeah, so we now have an observed tornado. And this uh, increases the concern around Eagle Lake. This is an update on velocity here. You know, I'll tell you, Peyton, that, that has jogged a little bit eastward, hasn't it? Mm -hmm. um, so there is a northeastward movement to this. I guess the argument is how far to the east, how far to the north, because that will really determine. To me, it looks like it's doing a little bit of a right turn in that last frame you just showed. It was going north, northeast, and then it looks like it turned a little bit to the uh, northeast. Yeah, which may not be a good situation for those out in Eagle Lake. No, that's the that's what I'm concerned about. Like they're yeah. not, Eagle Lake w would not be out of the woods by any means if this thing is going to be a right turner and continue doing that fashion, that mode of travel, uh, because that's going to bring it close to Eagle Lake here as we go through the next uh, half hour, not even, probably 15 minutes to a half hour. So I want to put you on alert. If you're in Eagle Lake, uh, this storm is going to be very close to you. That's for sure as we go through the next uh, 20 minutes or so. So um, taking a look here, um, let's go a little bit wider out. I just the reason I want to point that out is it looks like there's an, uh, I don't know if they're going to kill that tornado warning south of Richmond, but that's something we have to watch. And then there's some pretty good storms near Winsboro and Mangum. Uh, that are moving across the area uh, from southwest to northeast, but the main line is moving from west to east across our area right now. I'm feeling a little bit better not seeing a lot of tornado warnings, but you know, the reality is we still have a ton of instability that is set up across central Mississippi that and the southwest. It has not been touched yet. Right, it hasn't been, has not been tapped into. Yeah. Yeah, it's just all this fuel is just sitting in the sky, so to speak, and we're just waiting uh, for these storms to really kind of ignite them, and that's what could happen. So we are monitoring this. This is going to be a long 
long duration event. This is different from other systems that we've covered for you because these storms, while they're moving at a pretty good rate, I bet you that one's going, the one that's going into um, uh, Issaquina County. It's at 40. Yeah, 40 miles an hour. So I've been seeing them at 40 or 50 miles an hour most of the night. But it's the stuff behind it that's going to start slowing up progressively. And when that starts slowing up, I'm talking about the activity you're seeing near Monroe and uh, up to about Greenville. Once that stuff starts pushing down, pressing down into our area, it's going to slow up and all that energy that's in the atmosphere is going to get tapped into. That will spark possibly severe weather, but it's also going to spark torrential rainfall. And you know, our forecast models, uh, Peyton, when you were in earlier this afternoon, they were upwards of 11 inches. They backed down a little bit, mm -hmm. okay? They're showing some places could wind up with as much as eight inches. And that axis of heavy rain has shifted a little bit south and eastward too. But somewhere in central Mississippi mm -hmm. over the next 24 hours, and honestly, it's probably the next 18 hours, that's where we're going to be looking at the potential for, uh, for flooding and um, some serious problems. So uh, you really need to stay weather aware throughout the day on Wednesday as this front moves in. Uh, and, you know, here's the problem. The farther out you are in ahead of this front, the better chance you're going to have of getting any kind of uh, severe weather, when it be, whether it be tornadic or not. So there's that donut hole showing up very prominently north mm -hmm. of Tallulah. That is the large tornado that's been observed uh, that is currently moving through the eastern sections of Louisiana right now. And now they're reporting more uh, power flashes west of 65 north of Tallulah. All so, right, so they're I mean, watching right it. That rotation yeah, is. so they're watching it from that 65 highway there, which um, almost mirrors 61 on the Mississippi side. That's Highway 65, and you start getting up towards uh, Talabina and Roosevelt. And uh, that's where this storm's probably going to wind up going. And then the question is, will it keep making those little right turns? These storms, these supercells are on their own. So what they're doing is, you know, they almost get too big for their own good. They're in an unstable air mass. And what happens is they're already in a rotating column of, of air. The whole region right now is seeing some pretty good southerly winds, southwesterly winds. And they veer, they change direction over height as they get up in the atmosphere. I don't want to get too technical on you at 11 o'clock at night, but they get a little too, they get veering. So it's, it's south at the beginning, then southwest, then west. So you have the, what causes the spin in the atmosphere. And this one's a well-defined one that is sitting west of Talabina, north of Tallulah. And this will continue to just feed on that atmosphere until it runs out of energy. And uh, honestly, this is one of those things where it can keep going for a while until it actually runs out of energy. I'm curious if we're getting any hail from it because it looks like it's a pretty tall uh, thunderstorm. Yeah, there's some hail, a penny size hail for the most part, uh, but we're not seeing any intense amounts of hail. Uh, we were seeing some heavier uh, hail stones earlier this evening from some of the storms, but uh, this is uh, nothing to write home about, so to speak. The tornado is the main concern here. Eagle Lake right here, and the tornado is sitting off to the southwest. Can we put a little range on it just to give people an idea as to how far this thing is from Eagle Lake? And uh, you can see the radar is very well pronounced as to um, what's going on. Boy, that, uh, that inflow and outflow is showing up so well right there just west of 65. So I'll be, I'll feel better about this. Okay, so it's about 11 miles, yeah. it looks like. Okay, about 11 miles southwest of Eagle Lake is where this is located. I will feel better when it's level with Eagle Lake, when it's actually due west of Eagle Lake, because then we will know that it's going to spare parts of it. But right now, this thing is still coming very close to the Eagle Lake community. And um, it's going to be crossing 65 here probably in the next five minutes or so, based on what I'm seeing from this particular storm. Again, it's an observed tornado. We do have a tornado warning in effect for southern Issaquina County and northern sections of Warren County. This is away from Vicksburg. Uh, the storm is a considerable distance away from Vicksburg off to the north and west. But this just gives you an idea. Valley Park over through about uh, the Eagle Lake area under this tornado warning. And you got to take this seriously, folks. If you're in that area, you know, now is the time to take action. And when I say that, I'm saying get away from windows. Okay, get to the center room, uh, wherever you're watching us from, whether you be at home or whatever, just get away from the windows, cover yourselves to protect yourselves 
from flying debris because that would be the main concern with this storm. Why have we not had any reports of flying debris so far? Because it really hasn't impacted any major uh, populated spots, but now it's going to be getting a little bit closer to Eagle Lake, and this could be one of those situations where it just comes right up on you. Of course, we're tracking it for you, but I'm just saying as far as it actually touching the ground. This is telling us that in the air there's a circulation. There's no doubt about that. The question is, is it reaching the ground? We've had confirmation from now uh, multiple people that are located in eastern Louisiana that are saying, yes, we've been watching it. We have seen it touch the ground. We've seen the power flashes that accompany it as it uh, picks up the transformers or really breaks those lines with the transformers. And so that's what's going on right now with the storm. It is about to cross uh, the Talabina community at Highway 65 in extreme eastern um, in the extreme eastern part of Louisiana. This would be Madison and then about uh, to impact Tensaw Parish as well. So these are the parishes in northeast Louisiana, not to be concerned or confused, I should say, with any of the uh, counties that we have here in central Mississippi. I'm just pulling up the latest information here. The tornado warning is going to go until um, 1145, so we've got about another 40 minutes to go on this. Uh, right now, it is focused on uh, southeastern Carroll Parish, northern Madison uh, Parish at this point. So okay. that's the area that's going to go ahead. Uh, they're going to be issuing another tornado warning for that uh, storm farther north near Rolling Fork. Okay. So this is, is going to include parts of uh, Sharkey uh, and maybe parts of Issaquina County, but I believe the rotation is probably out of Issaquina. Yeah. And okay. it may also include um, Humphreys County as well. Yeah, the way it's moving the trajectory, I would tell you if you live in Belzona, uh, you should be paying attention to the storm. Should it uh, strengthen and move towards you? If you live in Delta City, um, this storm is very close to Rolling Fork, so we're just waiting here. Tornado warning will pop on your screen here any second, and uh, we will give you the update on that. I'm waiting for it to populate on my screen as well. So appreciate you catching that, Peyton. Peyton's on her second shift today, <laughs> and um, you know we're in for we're in for a long night here. So. And we're prepared for it. And we've got Brandon and Patrick that will be in shortly as well uh, to take you through the overnight hours in the morning. And we'll be back accordingly as needed, uh, possibly in the morning time. So right now, uh, coming up on 1107, there we go um, on the screen, just popped on the screen. New tornado warning in effect. This includes Belzona and Silver City. Uh, back over to about Rolling Fork and Delta City. I'm um, right now combining two tornado warnings really into one, but that's really the main tornado warning here is it takes into incorporation northern Sharkey, uh, the northern half of Humphreys County. And um, I do want to alert you that if you live farther down the line in parts of Holmes County as well, you need to be alert to this. This tornado warning goes until midnight. This goes until midnight uh, for those areas. Um, the latest on that you could see here, Delta City is where it's going to be approaching. Highway 61 near uh, Nittayuma is going to be also the next spot that gets impacted by this particular uh, cell. And there it is. Looks pretty small, but there it is nonetheless from our radar perspective, uh, just north of Rolling Fork, moving up to the north and east. This one's going at about 40 miles an hour, just like the other one is. Uh, it's very close to Rolling Fork. Severe thunderstorm capable of producing a tornado. So this has not been um, ground truth or anything like that. This has not been spotted on the ground, but we do want to alert you that this is radar indicating a potential tornado. And with it moving 40 miles per hour, this is going to be moving across the countryside here pretty quickly. So give you an idea as to where it's going to be. Ritchie at about 1123, Murphy 1131, Gooden Lake 1138, Silver City 1144, Belzona 1149, and around the four mile area about 1157. And then the warning expires at midnight tonight. So right now we have a new tornado warning that is now in effect. This is for the Rolling Fork area, Highway 61, where it meets up with Highway 14 in Gila here. And you can see it's going to continue moving up to the northeast. And it does not include Louise. It does not include Wolf Lake. It's just north and west of there. But this storm is blossoming currently in the environment. And that's why we are concerned about it, that a tornadic cell uh, is forming right there on the radar. And the question is, will it translate into an actual tornado on the ground? We will wait and see on that. But this tornado warning goes until midnight for another 50 minutes or so. I do think the way things are moving here, the way things are evolving, it's probably going to be uh, out of here sooner than midnight. But please be on alert in Belzona and Silver City. This is the kind of situation you want to uh, really uh, protect yourself. Mobile homes, cars are not ideal spots to ride out this particular type of storm. All right, so now it looks like that donut hole. All right, the, the center of the funnel is located right there. 
So it's really close to the Mississippi River, but it's west of Eagle Lake. So I think this is going to go just north of the Eagle Lake community. Mm -hmm. Can you push in a little bit more on Eagle Lake? Because just when you, we may be able to see the streets pop out here on the screen uh, from the actual community. Um, but you can see right there, this is where we have pretty much most of the areas there. Pine Tree Lane, Sea Island Drive, nesting site. So it's going to miss, the good news is the worst part of the cell is probably going to miss the Eagle Lake community right there. But boy, wow, is this close. And so near Brunswick, I would say you're not out of the woods on Highway 465, but that's getting a little bit further out. But if you live in this area, uh, this is right on the line between Warren and Issaquina counties. So that's where it's coming in and it's going to cross the river here probably within the next five minutes mm -hmm. or so the way this thing's going. And so the National Weather Service also noting that it will likely pass just north of Eagle Lake as well. OK, well, this is good news uh, for folks that live right in Eagle Lake proper uh, because it's a concern. Alamaro Lake, which is a little bit farther north and you've got the Kelso community. Uh, you need to be alert to the storm as it moves towards your area, assuming that it's going to hold together. And this one's been the strongest cell that we've been tracking so far this evening. This is stronger than when we had the tornado warning that was issued for the northern Issaquina, northern Shark counties at around 9 p.m. this evening. Uh, so this is the storm that we are currently monitoring. Sometimes you'll see each scan reveals a different side of the storm in the sense that it's stronger for a while and then all of a sudden the next scan comes in and it looks a little bit weaker. You don't let your guard down though because the way these particular storms typically work is they're pulsing up and down, not just literally vertically, but also in intensity. So sometimes they have a lot of energy to work with. It is literally like a cycle. It's an engine. You've got to think of it as an engine. So sometimes it's very powerful and that's when it can obviously cause the most amount of damage. And then sometimes it's not nearly as strong. But what we're seeing right now as we look out into the atmosphere is we're seeing some pretty good inflow and outflow on the winds. That's what you're looking at right here. And when you see toward and away that is giving you an idea as to where the winds are blowing. Now, if they were all blowing in the same direction, they'd, they'd be green or they'd be red, but they wouldn't be green and red in the same place. And that's what we're seeing right here. So when you see that, when you start seeing purple, that indicates not only is there that twist in the atmosphere because you've got winds blowing to and away from the radar at the same time, but you've got some pretty intense wind at that. The farther you get onto the scale here, when you start seeing these yellows, when you start seeing these blues, and this particular scan that we are using right now, that tells you you've got a stronger circulation. And in this case, we have confirmed that there's an actual tornado uh, that was moving across portions of Madison Parish as it's been lifting northeastward. Uh, not as not as strong this particular scan, but it's still it's there. It's there nonetheless. It may not be a strong tornado, but it's still a tornado. It's still bad. And so that's the thing we're watching with it as it gets closer to 465. Uh, let's go show the folks the bigger picture of radar. So in case you don't live in the places we've been discussing with you here for the last uh, 20, 30 minutes. This will at least show you what's happening elsewhere. And for the time being, we have scattered showers, maybe a blip of thunder here and there. But the worst of the weather is really confined uh, to the lower delta. And that's where we're seeing the stronger activity at this point in time. We also have the main line of storms here, which uh, interestingly enough, at least for me, Peyton, um, it's advancing at a pretty good clip into our area. The question is, when will this thing slow down and will it clobber some of these storms out ahead of it? That's also a possibility where the main line of storms actually overruns those storms in front of it. I am doing a little wishful thinking at the same time as well as uh, trying to predict the weather, but I just wanted to throw that out there in case uh, we do see some of that happening. But in the case of this particular storm that's about to cross um, Interstate 49 in central Louisiana, that's going to be a lot harder to come by. And that's what opens us up to the possibilities really of western Mississippi being hit by some of these tornadic storms as we go through the coming hours. It's almost 1115 at night and the atmosphere is pretty primed for a couple of reasons. Today it got heated up pretty good. Temperatures in the 70s and in southern Louisiana, southern Mississippi, it's actually even more unstable, more moist and the temperatures were actually able to achieve some higher limits. So right now you can see the actual storm cell has entered the extreme southwestern really corner of Issaquina County that's uh, close to Highway 1. And it's well west of Valley Park, but it's right in here that we are having that circulation right on the Mississippi River, basically. And, you know, in this area, it's kind of squiggly all over the place. So it's about to cross in well to the northwest of Eagle Lake, but still a very bad thunderstorm is going to cross over Eagle Lake nonetheless from this particular cell as we go through the coming minutes. Then we've got the other one farther north. We don't want to forget you. 
and I promise you we won't. Uh, that's this storm right here. And uh, just southeast of uh, Nita Yuma, passed over 61. And so now if you live between Ritchie and Delta City, please take cover immediately. We have not received any ground truth reports yet. I know Peyton's monitoring for that just in case uh, it is confirmed. But if you live near Sunflower River Road and Highway 434, this storm is going to cross your area within the next 10 minutes. So please take cover in the event this is an actual tornado on the ground. This is a radar indicated thunderstorm capable of producing a tornado that is moving northeast at 40 miles per hour. So between Delta City and Ritchie, that's next on the list. And then getting closer to the Murphy community and then over through Gooden Lake and Silver City. Eventually, should this storm hold its intensity and hold together over the coming minutes. Anything new that you're seeing over there, Peyton? Um, I am not seeing any uh, new additional information on this storm, uh, either uh, this one and on the other one that we were watching that's now pretty much in southern Issaquina County. Uh, I will say that when we were last looking at that other one that uh, pretty much has now crossed over the Mississippi River, mm -hmm. uh, the rotation does not look as impressive. It doesn't look uh, as intense, it almost has broadened out just a little bit, which may show a weakening trend. Hopefully it's not going through a cycling phase where it's weakening and then almost pulses back up and strengthens once again. All right, so that's near the Brunswick community. Mm -hmm. That's in the southwestern part of Issaquina County right now and uh, moving along or very close to Highway 465 and the Mississippi River. So bigger picture again, just to show folks where it's storming and where it's not. Uh, the worst of the weather is continuing in our lower Delta counties. I am seeing the weather's going downhill in the western part of Holmes County now. So be on alert for that, that a storm may be trying to pick up there in that area. And the storm that we have been tracking, which was a confirmed tornado uh, observed, which is right there uh, in the extreme southern portion now of Issaquina County, is continuing to move up to the north and east. They have now put out severe thunderstorm warnings for that main line of storms that is approaching from the north and west, now located about 60 miles northwest or west of Vicksburg. That's where the main line of storms with this particular system is located. Also due west of Natchez, but several miles west of Natchez, a storm in central Louisiana also has had a tornado uh, warning with it, but it looks like that's starting to lessen as well. So uh, go ahead. Sorry, um, and look now they're reporting that law enforcement um, is now reporting a tornado over Lake. I don't want to pronounce this wrong. Um, Chotard. OK, uh, near the Issaquina and Warren County line. We're going to have to give Peyton the benefit of the doubt on that. <laughs> is that one. Not, that's I'm not, not really sure. Oh, we, OK, we take, well, I, I wouldn't. I'm not going to pretend to know if I don't know. Um, yeah, it's right now, like Chotard, what, I, what I'm reading, and I could be wrong. We'll get a lot of people complaining from that area, I'm sure, at some point. But uh, in the interest of just telling you where this is, it's right on the Warren, Issaquina, Issaquina County line. Law enforcement reporting the tornado is over that area. So again, as I said to you before, maybe it's not a strong tornado. It doesn't make a difference. Tornado is bad. So you have a tornado, it's just a tornado, but it is a tornado nonetheless that is right now moving on the Issaquina and Warren County line, that's that line right here, this white line, that's Highway 465. And so the actual storm is crossing over it as we speak. And this is going well to the north of Eagle Lake, which is good news, but we will wait to see what they decide to do as far as issuing any warnings downstream from the storm. Looked a lot stronger when it was moving across um, I-20 over the northeastern section of Louisiana when you and I were tracking it just a few minutes ago. Good news, there's not a lot of information coming in off the chat right now. The chat is something that we monitor. It is a way that the communications go on between emergency managers in Mississippi and the National Weather Service, also other governmental agencies. And so we get a chance to really see these reports as they're happening, as they come in. And it really helps us get the information out there to you. Uh, that's how we can tell you when a tornado warning is about to come out, even though it hasn't come out yet. There we go. We have a new tornado warning that is now being put out. This will include the Delta National Forest. This is really, uh, am, I, am I mistaken here, but this is really the other tornado warning that they've just upgraded, it looks like, as a result. This is a new warning Okay, but for parts of Sharky and Yazoo. Right, and this was, uh, but the, the other warning that I was looking at, this is the one we had before it. Okay, it looks like this covers up quite a bit of it, but it's south of the Rolling Fork storm. Yes. So now we have an observed tornado. They're going downstream on this. And this is going to include uh, the western part of Yazoo County. I'm waiting for it to populate. There it goes. New tornado warning until 1215, until 1215 a.m. This is downstream from the warning we've been reporting to you at. Um, 
Tornado warning for Northwest Yazoo, East Central Issaquina, and Southern Sharkey until 12:15 a.m. Again, moving northeast at 40 miles an hour. This is nine miles west of Valley Park. Just to give you a little perspective on where the storm is, and it continues to move northeast at 40 Valley Park. The storm will be on you in 10 minutes. Onward 11:35 Holly Bluff at 11. 45. So it's now turning into an active night, folks, and we're here to tell you all about it. This is the way that warning looks, and the actual cell is back here, which is just moving to the north of Eagle Lake, and that is also about uh, 10, 15 miles west of Valley Park, and this is going to continue to track northeastward. So Kelso, Delta National Forest, up through about the Limerick area, and almost, almost to Yazoo City under this tornado warning right now. Let's go a little bit further north, uh, take a look at what's happening up here with that storm that uh, is up by Rolling Fork. And you can see that's got a pretty good signature on it now, inflow and outflow signature. This is going to cross Delta City very close to Highway 434. That kind of just kinked up a little bit on the radar, didn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Definitely seeing a lot of those brighter colors, more pinks on there, uh, which indicates stronger winds. Yeah, when you start seeing again the pinks, when you start seeing blues, that's where you know you've got strong winds that are conflicting with each other, very close to each other, and that's where you're going to have the center of your likely tornado when you're looking at uh, just the wind product here as we're doing. I wonder if there's anything showing up on, um, uh, on the debris signature. Just curious about that in any of these storms. And you can see they're not overly pronounced. It's nothing that really stands out. We, we see this noise that gets filtered in, and that's what you have to do. It's part of our trained eyes. It's kind of distinguishing between what is noise and what is actually not noise. So that's a well-defined storm on radar that is just outside Delta City. And uh, this thing's moving off to the northeast. All these storms that we're seeing currently in our area are going 40 miles per hour at this point. So Belzona, take cover on this particular storm as it's moving towards you. And then farther south uh, in now into parts of the Yazoo County area, we've got to watch this storm to see how this Acts. This is going to tell us a little bit more about how the atmosphere is primed or not. If the circulation holds, then we know the atmosphere is very unstable across our area and it will breed more thunderstorms likely. But if it doesn't hold together, it may run out of steam and that could also tell us a little something about maybe the atmosphere isn't perfectly aligned yet for all these ingredients. You know, we've got a lot of these ingredients around, but it's almost like you have all the ingredients uh, and I know you've probably heard other meteorologists say this. You've got all these ingredients in the atmosphere. So you got everything you need to bake a cake, but you can't get the oven to light. <laughs> and if you can't get the oven to light, all you've got is this cake that's, it may look pretty at the, at the onset, but it's not going to be pretty at the end. It's just not going to come together at all. So that's something to keep in mind with this particular um, weather system right now. But we do have the ingredients in place. Uh, did you like my cake analogy, Peyton? I did. did. Okay, I did. you did? Okay. I think you're just saying that because you're <laughs> tired, but that's okay. So this is the Kelso community right here. Storm off to the southwest, moving in. Eventually, Delta National Forest uh, will be the area that's impacted by this as well. So we're giving you continuous coverage tonight as tornado warnings are now popping up across portions of central Mississippi and the lower delta of Mississippi. This is just the beginning of what we expect to be an extended severe weather threat that's going to go on through the overnight hours, through most of the morning hours as well as these storms continue to move north and eastward. We will uh, stay on the air as long as we have tornado warnings for you. If uh, the warnings drop, we'll go back to regular scheduled programming, but want you to know that uh, we are actually here through the night. Uh, our staff is, and we're going to be covering these storms for you. So don't worry if, if you get to about three o'clock in the morning, you can't stay with us. You're going to make, maybe doze off. Just have a way to get warnings. Make sure you've got the free first alert weather app. You've got the settings set up where you can get the actual warnings uh, when you need them. And that way you are not going to miss out on any storms that are threatening your area. We don't want you potentially putting yourself in harm's way by sleeping when there's an actual threat going on. This is the big picture here. You're in Natchez. There's not much going on right now. We don't expect too much for her another hour or so. We're watching these showers with Brookhaven and Macomb. You know, Peyton, I've been watching them most this evening. And this activity just has failed to launch, if you know what I mean. The showers are there. Uh, there may even be some lightning and thunder from time to time, but they just have not been turning supercellular, which is good. We don't want supercells anyway. These guys here are supercells, but it begs the question. I am curious to see what happens as this line is moving in from the north and west. Will it outrun those storms and basically kind of just run into them? 
and take the punch out of them a little bit. It's a possibility. When you have cell, coll cell collisions like that, uh, they actual collide, uh, sometimes you get the, the weakening, and sometimes you also get them turning into just massive downpours. So do want to alert you to that. In fact, we already have a flash flood warning in effect for northeastern Louisiana, southeastern Arkansas, and that extends into Washington County, Mississippi from torrential rainfall that's been falling here. But that heavy rain that was sitting over Monroe when we started broadcasting a little less than an hour ago, that heavy rain that was over Monroe has now shifted eastward, and now we've got the two tornado threats pretty much uh, that we're watching here uh, moving into parts of uh, Sharkey, Humphreys, as well as Western uh, Western Yazoo County at this point in time. So these are the two storms that we're watching. Um, are we getting any further ground truth reports? Or? Uh, nothing besides when law enforcement saw um, the confirmed tornado on the ground near the Issaquina and Warren County line. Of course, uh, this the rota rotation itself has already uh, shifted northeast of that. Uh, point is now uh, getting closer to making its way into southern Sharkey County. Okay, so that's moving to southern Sharkey County right now. Still have a pretty good uh, defined inflow outflow that we've been watching. Uh, this is southwest of Kelso. Uh, by the end of this evening, you'll have a good education from uh, Peyton and myself. I'm not really sure why we're seeing a uh, picture of the, the Grinch, Grinch, but you know what? There are Grinch colors on the screen, and maybe it's appropriate that we're seeing him. Uh, but you can see this cell is moving towards the Kelso community and will continue moving uh, near onward uh, as well. And then eventually up towards the Delta National Forest in Campbellville. Hardy is located right here too, but this is on the eastern side of the storm. And you have to remember something. Maybe you don't get the tornado where you are, but it's still going to be a bad storm in many of these cases as these storms are blossoming up in the atmosphere and they're moving across parts of the area. So this is where the storm is right now, just outside of the Kelso community, uh, moving from southwest uh, to north. Gonna, uh, sorry, they, they are now going to update this one to considerable. So this will now be uh, from what the National Weather Service is telling us, likely a uh, tornado emergency potentially yeah, if they are going to up, if they are going to upgrade this one for uh, that considerable tag that there is a tornado on the ground right now doing damage all right so if that's the case and this is just coming off 465 so this is really moving more towards uh, the Blanton area and the onward community so we're going to be paying very close attention to this we're going to wait for them to upgrade it when you see it uh, just chime in Peyton mm -hmm. and I will uh, try to do the same and we will see that warning box. We should go see it go from white where we mm -hmm. currently have uh, it should go to pink for that considerable okay. tag. And we actually saw that earlier this evening. Mm -hmm. I saw it happen on one of my uh, weather casts where it actually did uh, swap over to that color, but we want to get the information. We'll have new information to share with you once they uh, do in fact do that. That means that this is a considerable risk. There it is just popped on the screen. And that is for a small part, it looks like, uh, for Valley Park. So that's northern uh, Warren County here, um, bordered by Goose Lake Road, Low Water Bridge Road. Can we push in a little bit closer? I know this is a rural area, but um, just want to see if there's any roads that stand out here. But this is getting close to Low Water Bridge Road and the Kelso area. Uh, there's Summerall Road, um, Atwood, Gaunt and then eventually Kelso, Kelso Road over by the Griffin Road area. So this is a pretty significant storm that's now moving from southwest to northeast. Um, what does that tag tell you when the tornado emergency is put out? And that's what this is. It's now a tornado emergency for northern Warren County. Folks, this is not something that you should take lightly by any means. This is no longer a radar indicated tornado. This is a tornado capable of producing significant damage that is right now moving through the countryside of northern Warren County. So here's Highway 61, new scan just came in. It's about to uh, get very close to leaving northern Warren County, but it is in northern Warren County right now. And again, a significant uh, risk with this particular storm. A tornado emergency is now in effect. We're looking at debris tracker for you. That could be a signature. Let's take a look here. Mm. It's hard to say, but again, this is a uh, more of a rural place. So. Right, and that's the thing, mm -hmm. you know, which which means that it's going to be picking up materials likely, but those materials would be smaller in nature because they'd probably be comprised of leaves or maybe some sticks. And um, so for now, there we go. Now we have an expansion of the tornado emergency. And so this is significant tornado emergency now for Bayland, the Delta National Forest area, uh, also around the Limerick community. And this almost gets to Yazoo City. So western Yazoo County and southern Sharkey and northern Warren counties right now have a tornado emergency 
in effect. A tornado emergency is when there is a storm capable of producing a considerable damage uh, with a tornado as it moves northeastward. This one is going 40 miles an hour right now. I want to put you on alert if you are in Yazoo County, if you're in the southern portion of Sharkey County. This is an area right now that we want you to be on heightened alert. This is uh, where if you have family, you have friends that live out here, get them on the phone. Uh, at this point, uh, this is where you want to warn them and alert them to what we're seeing. And, and this is debris, debris tracker. And it's about to cross highway 61 here shortly. Let's go a little bit closer on Coast this. Coast, I'm sorry, what road was that again? I, I didn't uh, catch off. It's about to cross highway 61 here shortly near Kelso. So anyone in that community, uh, maybe if they're asleep at this moment, go ahead and give them a call yeah. uh, and say that there is a tornado on the ground right now doing damage. A tornado emergency remains in effect for parts of uh, Warren County, and this will be moving into parts of Sharkey and Yazoo counties uh, here within the coming minutes. Very dangerous situation now. OK, this is uh, this is again on the extreme level, um, very close to Atwood Drive, Griffin Road, um, Dorsey Road, very close. Debris is being lofted into the air. This is a classic debris signature. This is not one that we question. Um, and this is moving northeastward, Highway 61 in front of it. This will cross Highway 61 in about the next five minutes or so. So it's a dangerous situation if you have a helmet and your home um, or any kind of protective device, maybe for the kids, a football helmet, whatever you have, um, a hard hat, which is what I keep. Um, I showed it to you when we were doing our tornado coverage the other week. It is advised you get those now and uh, place them over your heads uh, because again, this looks like it is lofting a considerable amount of debris into the air right now. So this is on the border. Uh, this is on the border with Warren and please correct me if I'm wrong, Peyton. It looks like that's Sharky County. It Sorry, Sharky County. it's a uh, when you look at all these colors, <laughs> you know, it's hard to keep them all straight, but you could see a uh, highway 61 here around Kelso. Uh, this is the area that we're watching right now. Uh, debris signature, a classic one showing up there. Serious situation. Uh, if you know anybody in the southern areas of Sharkey, western Yazoo County, please alert them at this point. This storm is moving at a rather rapid rate. Let's let's um, throw a track on it okay. and, and so we can kind of track it southwest to northeast. And um, by the way, you may hear Peyton and I talking over each other at times. It's it happens we're, 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 and we're fine with it, right? Are we fine with it? Absolutely. Okay, just want to make sure I have to check with her first, yeah. but we want to get that information out to you. So um, if we're not staring at each other. We're not gonna be able to get, you know, know when to talk and when not to. But just want to let you know this is when that actual cell is going to be moving through Kelso 1134 Delta National Forest 1147 Kearney 1151 Campbellville a uh, Campbellville excuse me at 1157 Bayland at 1205 Craig 1212 12, 12, and then into Yazoo County at 1218. If you keep extrapolating this, this storm could be close to Yazoo City at about 1221. That is almost 45 minutes from now. You have time to prepare, but this is a dangerous particular cell. We now have a tornado emergency in effect, and that is something you just don't see very often. It's for a large area too, wouldn't you say? Um, but it makes sense when you've got a cell that is showing the characteristics of this cell. It was strong when we picked it up in northeast Louisiana. Then it weakened a little bit. Mm, it looked like it's a closed, yeah. but now this is not a weakening system. This is a dangerous and damaging storm. That is debris that is showing up and it's a little bit large in the atmosphere too. Yeah. Let me tell you what could be going on. All right, so with the debris signature, you got to figure a couple things here. First off, the debris doesn't go straight up into the atmosphere, so it could be blowing up and then the winds are carrying it aloft for a distance. So that could be what is responsible for making this wider than it normally would be. It could take that debris, spread it out in the sky further, and as it does that, uh, it will create more of a signature on the radar. So it looks bigger, uh, but it is bigger, but that doesn't necessarily mean the storm is bigger, but this is a dangerous storm nonetheless because we've got a defined signature on it. So debris is being blown up uh, from this particular cell into the atmosphere, and then it is traveling northeastward because the winds are right now from a south or southwesterly direction. They're really feeding into this particular storm, and that's why it's gaining all of its energy. So Highway 61 right now in the Kelso area. If we can go back to regular radar real quick. I want to see if we could slice it, maybe 3D slice it, just to give folks an idea as to how tall this thing is in the atmosphere. It's between the Smeeds and Kelso area now by a low water bridge road and also um, very close to Highway 61. So as we take a look at it here, this is 10,000. Oh, we just got off the screen. I'm sorry. That's okay. Don't be sorry. You're fine. We'll get, we'll get it back, folks. We will. You know, we got all night. 
But you can see that um, there's that cell. And again, very strong debris signature right in that area near Kelso. And that's moving southwest to northeast uh, across the Delta National Forest. What are these purple colors? That's really intense rainfall. All right, so we're looking at the storm and we're about 20,000 feet, at least in this particular scan. Uh, this shows us this is like a vertical three dimensional look at the storm. So we can kind of see how tall it is in the atmosphere. Do you have the ability to wave um, maybe just back and forth just to see or are we kind of stuck with what we got? We may be stuck. That's okay. Maybe. I've been in worse predicaments before, so it's okay if we're... Are we stuck, you think? Oh, no, let's see. Okay. So I just wanted to see if any part of the storm was going like to 30,000 feet. Um, but it probably is when you start you know, moving it a little bit more to the north and east. But the bottom line is uh, I just wanted to see how tall this goes into the sky. So at least we can tell you right now where the core of that storm is right there. Uh, that's going about four miles up into the sky. Pretty tall storm, relatively speaking. I've seen them as high as 70,000 feet. That's about 35 miles in the sky. Those storms are storms you want to definitely avoid at all costs if you can. So alerting you now to where this storm is going next. It will go over the Delta National Forest. Not a lot of folks live in this area, but once you get to Highway 16, different story. The population starts to pick up again with some homes scattered around on Highway 16, closer to the Sunflower River, and then you're going to be getting up to about uh, Bayland and and south of 149. Dave, so I, sorry, I do want go. to correct myself that um, a considerable tag is not the same as a tornado emergency. Oh, it's not. Okay, it's so let's let's clarify that's, that's that then. Being said in the chat. Okay, let's just clarify that then. There's so many different little nuances mm -hmm. uh, to this. So this either is way, a tornado is doing damage out this way. All right, tornado doing damage, considerable damage. This is not a tornado emergency. So let's clarify that. Okay, the color can fool us. Uh, that's what it is. A lot of this is looking at colors and interpreting from those colors. The bottom line is we have a tornado warning that is in effect uh, with a considerable uh, damage potential in this area. And so thank you for correcting us. Appreciate that. Uh, just get that straight with you all. But the bottom line is it doesn't change the storm that we're seeing, which is very close to Kelso right now and moving northeast towards Campbellville and Balin. So this particular storm from the Blanton area back across Highway 61 will continue moving from southwest to northeast across the area as we go through the coming minutes. And again, a dangerous storm. We've had a debris field with it. Let's go back to debris uh, to our debris scan and just to see where it is north of Kelso now just moved across 61 and it's holding together pretty well. So it's something we cannot take our eyes off for the time being because this storm is actually lifting debris into the atmosphere at this point. And again, we uh, we've had this storm pulsing up, pulsing down in intensity, but now it is in fact uh, continuing to move and march its way southwest to northeast across the area. If you live in Onward, it is now just sitting southeast of town. If you live in Onward or the Blanton area, please remain cautious with this storm. It is about to enter the Delta National Forest. As it does so, it will find uh, fewer residents in that region. Uh, but again, once it emerges out of the Delta National Forest area, it will be a different story as it's closer to Highway 16 and the potential for uh, more tornado damage is certainly there. We are waiting to get additional reports. Uh, again, this is a sparsely populated area, so we're waiting to get some reports from the region. We've had law enforcement reporting on uh, sightings a little bit earlier with the storm, about 20 minutes, maybe a half hour ago, I think it was, that it was coming across Highway 465, or it was right on the border with Issaquina and also Warren counties. But now it has moved out of Warren County just to alert you folks in Valley Park. It is definitely out of Warren County and it is now sitting in the southern part of Sharkey County and Campbellville and Kearney are places that we're going to have to watch here over the next uh, half hour as that storm gets a little bit farther out. Let's go back to regular radar and show folks what's happening um, with that storm. And you can see it's a pretty well developed storm here. It's been dumping some heavy rain. We've had some purple showing up on the screen uh, close to the Delta National Forest. Uh, we pull out a little bit further. Uh, we've got a tornado warning that's going on to the north here, and that is including the Belzona area. Let's go into that, zoom in, give folks an idea as to what they can expect. Here's Belzona, there's Gooden Lake, and there's where the actual tornadic cell is. This is radar indicated, a little bit different. This is a radar indicated cell. And it is showing you right now uh, the wind field. And on this wind field, uh, you can make it out. It's right over Gooden Lake that we have an inflow and outflow. So this is where we have a circulation. This is moving northeast. Wow, this is going to be right on Belzona probably in the next five minutes or so. It's moving almost across Highway 12 right now west of town. But we think this is going to come very close to Belzona, Highway 49 west, Highway 7, which is north. 
uh, just north of downtown Belzona, and you can see that it's going to be this area that gets impacted. So if you live west or north of Belzona, including downtown Belzona, you're going to be looking at a potential tornado here. Doppler indicated tornado moving towards you from the southwest. It's already raining quite hard in Belzona. When this storm co comes overhead, it's going to be torrential rain, probably blinding rain at that point in time. So uh, I do want to point this out. It's maybe common sense, but let's get the word out. This is not the kind of weather, <clears throat> not the kind of weather you want to be driving around overnight tonight. This is the kind of rainfall that will reduce your visibility to zero and the wind on top of it all. Forget about the tornado threat. The wind on top of it all, even just in these regular storms, is going to be quite gusty. 30, 40 mile an hour wind gusts easily. And how do we know that? Because the storms are moving from southwest to northeast at 40 miles per hour. So that tells us we already know the wind speeds are 40 miles per hour because that's what pushes and carries these storms along. So Belzona, we want you to be prepared. Storms are approaching from the south and west right now. Four mile over through Belzona. That area is right now the target of this particular storm in the next five to 10 minutes. And it looks like we have a new tornado watch coming out. Okay, figured that would happen at some point. And, you know, they're going to realign, I would think, several counties in and our area. And basically the entire yep. area with the exception of Walthall and Jeff Davis County. But I mean, some point later in the morning, we're talking tomorrow, yeah. technically Wednesday uh, at some then another watch may needed will likely be needed downstream. Yeah. <clears throat> so if that, you're not in a watch right now, at some point you likely will be. Right, and that's the thing. I, I know folks were asking me earlier uh, when I was live on Facebook, they said, well, what about, you know, my county is not included. Do I have anything to worry about? And I said, hold on. This is going to be something that happens in tiers. Initially, you'll have central areas of Mississippi, and then these watches will be reconfigured depending on the weather situation. I also want to point out, once this line of storms moves into central Mississippi, it's going to slow up. And when it slows up, it's going to be a transition into some pretty intense downpours. That's going to be in the morning. So for some areas that are not under that line of storms, you're going to get a little bit of some relief. There'll be a lull in the activity. All right, there'll be a lull in the activity. But in other spots, okay, it's still going to be an ongoing severe weather threat. So this is not a one size fits all forecast that we've been saying to you, but this is where there's the potential for significant damage in several portions of our viewing area. And that's why we're here tonight uh, giving you team coverage that's going to continue through the night and into the morning and probably beyond as well, because that's what we're looking at here. This uh, dangerous weather situation that's playing out. All right, so we've got a tornado warning that continues for Western Yazoo and Southern Sharkey counties right now. Uh, the storm is getting closer to Campbellville. It is still over the Delta National Forest. You can see off to the south and west. That's where we're looking at uh, the inflow and outflow with the storm. Uh, let's go back to uh, debris and if the debris signature, let's see if it's lessened at all. Well, it's, it looks a little muddy. How about mm -hmm. that? Um, it's a muddier look. <laughs> Would you, would you agree with that? Yeah, the, and even the National Weather Service also noting that, that it's somewhat uh, more diffused, but uh, still confined enough that they believe that a tornado still may be on the ground. So uh, we may not have that confirmation right now, just looking at the debris signature, but still treat this as if there is still a tornado on the ground doing damage. That's right, and this storm is blossoming still uh, across portions of the southern areas of Sharkey County, and I want to alert you, if you live near Highway 16, in the next 10 minutes or so, that's where this storm is is going to cross. So Highway 16 west of Campbellville, that's where this particular storm cell is going to cross regardless of the debris signature, which is lessened a little bit. The other thing we have to point out is it's still a dangerous storm, a very dangerous storm. In fact, look at it on regular radar. We'll just pull it back here to regular radar for a second, show you all the red and purple. That's as high end on the scale as you get. That's the heaviest kind of rain that you're going to find in this type of storm. And it doesn't have the same presentation as it did a few minutes ago where it looked really ominous. It's still a bad looking storm, but it does not have the same characteristics that it did a little while earlier. I am a little concerned about what's going on south of Blanton, not to ruin the party, but uh, there is that little node there that's sticking out. And sure enough, Oh, what did you know? Broad rotation. Yeah. I also want to note that um, when this uh, was moving into southern Sharkey County, that power outages mm -hmm. jumped upwards. So we now have about uh, 365 customers currently without power in Sharkey County. So uh, hope maybe at some point we'll see some uh, maybe reports coming out at that way, considering uh, that is when we did have uh, that pretty well defined tornado debris signature crossing over Highway 61 near Kelso. OK, and uh, meteorologist uh, Patrick Ellis joining us late this evening. 
Um, are you mic'd up? Yeah. Okay, there we go. Uh, good morning. You're here. Good, uh, good, good evening. Morning. It's good close night. enough, isn't it? 15 <laughs> minutes and you get to say good morning. But well, you know what? Since you're here early, you get to say whenever you want. Appreciate you being here. Again, I told you we'd have team coverage for you to keep you going through the night. Patrick's going to pop on here a little bit, give us his perspectives. If you're ready, I don't want to put you on the spot. Uh, but uh, we're going to have Patrick and Brandon carrying you through most of the overnight. Peyton and I are going to hang out for a little while longer uh, to keep you covered because the tornado threat right now is a considerable one mm -hmm. uh, that's moving out there. But um, any of this weather surprising you so far? Uh, you know, just waking up and seeing the litany of tornado warnings that started to come out uh, a little earlier than anticipated here on this uh, now Tuesday night going into Wednesday morning. We told you yesterday, my friends, uh, you know, if we were going to be dealing with this, it would be a long duration event. We told you about 10 o'clock p.m. Tuesday through 4 p.m. tomorrow because of the multitude of waves of storms that we're dealing with. Again, you've got a considerable threat of a tornado moving through the Delta National Forest right now. Again, that's a lightly populated area. The next towns in line, Campbellville, Holly Bluff, Yazoo City. Now the warning comes up to the back doorstep of Yazoo City, uh, but uh, you do not need to sleep on this storm system. If you're in Yazoo City right now, I do go ahead and start thinking about what do I do in this situation. That's the next major town in line, but you got Holly Bluff here as well. So again, if you're in Holly Bluff, you're probably getting very heavy rainfall, maybe some hail associated with it, but the circulation is to your south and west. Go ahead and take your tornado precautions right now. It looks like that circulation is starting to get a little bit more uh, Re, kind of redefining itself. It was broadening out a little bit, but it looks like it's cycling. That's the problem with these storms here. It looks like that storm system is cycling. You got and one circulation here, one circulation here. So it looks like we may have possibly two different circulations going on right now. Go ahead, Peyton. Sorry, I was going to note that as well. And they are also going to back off of the confirmed okay. slash mm -hmm. con, uh, considerable wording on this war uh, on this severe uh, excuse me on this tornado warning, uh, but uh, still go ahead and get your tornado safe. Yeah, and the reason they're probably backing off it a little bit is just because um, at this point, it's over a very sparsely populated area, very rural out here. But and I open. will tell you right now, as soon as this comes out, um, it's going to be near Highway 16. There are some homes in that area, and uh, those folks need to be on guard right now. Uh, this storm has been pulsing up and down, as we've been talking about. We see that with supercells, and I know, Patrick, you were mentioning that you feel like there's another circulation developing here. I'm still watching what's going on farther southwest because we could see another back-end system. If you remember the last severe weather event, that we saw a lot of. We had a bunch of these storms popping up. And now they've dropped it. You can see mm -hmm. it's now just a what we call a regular tornado warning. We're not downplaying it. But we're just letting you know that is a different definition than what we had on the screen before with considerable damage. But if you live in Campbellville, you know somebody who lives out here on Highway 16, get them on the phone, text them, make sure that they respond to you because this is a dangerous situation. Again, these nighttime tornadoes are the worst. The only way we know they're coming in this regard is from radar. We don't have folks that really can see them ahead of time. We have folks that can confirm them that they're on the ground, but we don't get the luxury of being able to have folks see them in advance. So this is our only way of scanning it. We've got a pretty good angle on this storm too. We're hitting it uh, from the southeast here and you can kind of see uh, the storm as it's elongated out across that area. But there could be multiple circulations with this particular cluster of storms. And it's been going through cycling where it looks strong, it doesn't, it looks strong, it doesn't. And that's really what's been going on with it, right Peyton? Yeah, and even in the chat, they're noting that it's try it's attempting to reorganize. So a uh, while they we don't have any confirmation that a tornado is on the ground right now, that doesn't mean that uh, it couldn't just drop one here at any time uh, since we could have a new one maybe at any moment. Any you know, moment, I try to remind uh, try to remind the folks at home that we're showing you radar imagery. All right, so we know the circulation is happening in the atmosphere. The question is, is it reaching the ground? So we know that this is going on off the ground. Wow, that really is a big pickup yeah. there. Yeah. You see that? That is a big. I wonder if we. Have. I think that that is trying is definitely trying to cycle mm -hmm. right now as it's moving through the Delta National Forest while it's over, kind of unpopulated land. We have the other warning that's to the north that's up in the Shark uh, Humphreys County. Let's go up there really quickly. That storm is about to cross Highway 49, uh, just north of Belzona. Here's Isola right here, Belzona right here. That circulation right here. Crossing Highway 12 and again, maybe about a mile or two north of Belzona. Go ahead and take your tornado precautions up here along Highway 3, Highway 49 West and Highway 7. So again, Northern uh, Humphreys County, take your tornado precautions now. That went a little weaker, but it looks like it's trying to cycle as well. You see 
kind of two little nodes right here, one right here near Coal Lake Road, the other one uh, right along uh, Highway 12, just west a 16 section road. These areas right here going up to the north and east, you need to go ahead and be in your tornado safe place as well. Again, if you're in the city of Belzona, I need you to be in a safe place as well. Of course, the northern portions of uh, Humphreys County up towards southern LaFleur County as well. Uh, just getting some uh, reports uh, from this storm as it moved through Warren County. There's good news to report with not this storm, sorry, the other storm uh, that's currently going through the Delta National Forest. When it moved through Warren County, Sheriff Martin Pace just reported to us that he's had no reports of damage, and so that's really good news. But there are considerable power outages right now mm -hmm. in the northern parts of the county, especially, he pointed out, in the Eagle Lake community. Mm -hmm. So that would make sense. And I do want to point out a uh, new update on the power outages in Sharkey County. I said around 300-ish, not too long ago, but now that number is around uh, 1300 and how much quite a, a step up. It's a big step up. Yes. Tell me what the percentage of the county uh, is 71% yeah. is currently without power. So right most now. of the county is now without power. Didn't mean to throw that math at you, but most of the county is without power now in uh, Sharkey County due to this particular storm cell. It may not be the actual tornadic portion. It could be just the wind portion, but you get the idea. We know something's going on something big right now in southern Sharkey County, and this is headed for Highway 6. This is really ramping up and ramping up quickly now, so it's probably reorganizing is what it's doing mm -hmm. and we're going to have to watch this cell in particular as it gets very close to the river here and then starts moving towards Campbellville. Let's go back over to uh, traditional radar. I want to show you something really quickly because it looks like we've got what we call a donut hole. That's the same thing that we were showing you a couple of days ago with the uh, tornadoes that we had uh, back, what, a week and a half ago. That storm is about to cross Highway 16 again near Holly Bluff. If you're in Holly Bluff, I need you to go ahead and be in a tornado safe place right now. Interior room away from windows, lowest floor of your home because again, this area here where we have that circulation, it is trying to ramp up quickly. Uh, so again, this is a cycling storm. So again, it's going through its motions of trying to re-strengthen itself, reorganize itself. It, it could very well try to tornado again, try to put down another tornado here near Highway 16, near the Holly Bluff community. Uh, I know we got some folks out there who watch us, uh, you know, in uh, Western Yazoo County, the Holly Bluff Volunteer Fire Department. We'll probably get some information from them if anything happens uh, from them. But again, the general track here will take it through Northern Yazoo County. So this circulation is about to come out of Sharkey into Yazoo, not to mention you have a secondary circulation trying to form back here that just crossed Highway 61. Let's go back over to, and that one's a little weaker uh, from where it was a minute ago, but we'll watch that closely. The one that uh, Dave was talking about near the Blanton community, south of Cary near Onward. But you've got this one, again, re-strengthening pretty quickly as it's making its way off to the north uh, and east at this point in time, just kind of checking and seeing what we've got going on back to the west. We've got a severe thunderstorm warning that just came out. That's going to have a tornado possible with it uh, as it's making its way out of Louisiana. It is angling itself for Eagle Lake, the same areas that were just affected by this last storm. It did look like that storm did pass just north of Eagle Lake, but you know, that's a sparsely populated area once you get outside of Eagle Lake uh, with that uh, first storm that came rolling through here. This is the circulation that they're looking at here that will cross or cross Highway 65. This is over Madison Parish, West Carroll Parish, Louisiana. So just across the Mississippi River uh, from uh, Warren and Issaquina counties. Again, a possibility that that could tornado as well. That's a severe thunderstorm warning that we're keeping an eye on. Yeah, so that would be the Eagle Lake community. Again, you need to be careful about that. Patrick mentioned the donut hole. We were talking about that. Peyton and I were uh, about an hour ago, it seems. And uh, when it was over northeastern Louisiana, and that's a classic definition of a very well formed tornado when you see the circulation hole where there's just dry air in the center and everything's wrapped around it. Sink drain. Yeah, sink drain basically is that's the funnel of the actual tornado going right down towards the ground. So you have to understand that when we see those, those are really giving us the clear indication that there is in fact a tornado uh, with that cell. Uh, we are looking right now at this particular uh, tornado warning that is right now from the Delta National Forest through Western Yazoo, uh, through Bayland and Campbellville. The storm is now about to lift over Highway 16. We have well-defined uh, inflow and outflow on this, a good couplet of wind that is right now moving north of Kearney, headed towards Campbellville and Patmos. So if you live in this area, all right, uh, this is getting close to Satarsha Road. 
Uh, but if you live in this area, it's going to be moving northeastward here and almost paralleling 16 for a little bit as it moves north and eastward. Tornado warning in effect. Uh, tornado warning in effect for this entire area. New tornado warning is going to come out for the one that's coming North out of Louisiana. Yeah, here we go and on this one. That might be a very similar track to almost the same track that that the storm that's now moving into Yazoo County. Yep. Uh, following almost the exa exact same path where it crossed Highway 65, where we got reports of power flashes. New at, tornado yeah. warning now in effect till 1 a.m. Uh, this is going to be for Warren and Issaquina County. Sorry to cut you off there. Just want to get this out. To nor tornado warning in effect um, until 1 a.m. Uh, a severe thunderstorm capable of producing a tornado located about eight miles north of Tallulah. This is moving northeast at 35 miles an hour. I'm not going to make a big deal over that, but I will make the point that it's a little slower than the storms we were tracking earlier this evening. First storms that I was looking at earlier this evening were moving 50 miles an hour. This one's going 35. The other ones are going 40, as we've mentioned. But it is something to note that we're seeing this line, the main line of storms now catching up. And in areas where it catches up, it will be the main controlling, uh, you know, device, if you will, of these storms. It's still the supercells popping up ahead of this that we really have to be cautious on. Again, that is a severe thunderstorm with a Doppler indicated potential of a tornado right in here. And this is almost the same area as before. Eagle Lake and working its way up into Issaquina County. Again, there's not a lot of folks here, but it is bounded by Valley Park. So we want to let you know if you're in northern sections of is northern sections, I should say, of Warren County, southern sections of Issaquina County, and then the southwestern portion of Sharkey County. Again, we are watching this line of storms. Let's look at regular radar here so we can give folks a little perspective as to what's going on. This is where we have storms kind of converging. This is the most active part of this line of storms right now, and that's why in the Delta we're seeing all this activity uh, in the area. Also want to point out just outside Lexington, we've got a pretty good cell that's starting to take shape, a thunderstorm nonetheless, uh, but we will watch for this, some of these storms to do other things. Let's look at the bigger picture so in case any folks that are not getting rough weather right now kind of know where they stand in all this. Pike County, we've had a good amount of shower activity tonight. We keep seeing these heavy downpours that have been popping up in these lines uh, in Pike and also Lawrence counties. Uh, this has been the case most of the evening. So we're watching these storms here and you know, I don't like what I'm looking at back here in Louisiana. That has n at least at this point in time, it's not tornadic, but that's a pretty good cell that's starting to pop west of Natchez. Maybe and the next one. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. As soon as this starts getting into the unstable air here, it may be something we have to really start paying attention to. But for now, it is really the lower delta that's getting the worst of this weather presently. And again, it's all that stuff in central Louisiana that must work its through, work its way through our area before all is said and done. And that is several hours. And uh, just to reemphasize, Holly Bluff needs to be in a safe place immediately. This storm is uh, rapidly coming over your area right now. And again, right in through here, uh, you've got a uh, tornado possibly on the ground. Uh, this is a storm that's going to be moving across an area that at least has some uh, buildings and structures. You know, hopefully we do not see that debris signature revigorate here soon enough, but it's crossing Highway 16 right now. Let's hope that that is not what we think it is or it could be. Uh, but again, uh, this area here again near Holly Bluff, you need to be in a safe place immediately. You've got a secondary circulation to your south and west that we're watching as well. And then the other tornado warning that just came out back over into Louisiana. The storm that's up into Sharkey County uh, into Humphreys County. Rather that storm is starting to weaken broaden out. They will let that warning expire. It will not go into southern portions of LaFleur County, so that's good news. But that's storm has now crossed over 49 West, crossing over Highway 7 right now, and eventually will make its way up into southern sections of LaFleur County, south of Itabina and uh, Greenwood, uh, but something else that we'll keep an eye on. They would, uh, wouldn't be surprising if they go with a severe thunderstorm warning for that storm. Uh, I think they just issued a severe thunderstorm warning for the storm that Dave was just talking about. Yep. yep, there you go. Severe thunderstorm warning. This is going to be Highway 84 uh, out here. Again, this is Concordia, Catahoula Parishes, Louisiana. If that's uh, on the same path, it's further south. This would be more so for like Claiborne County as well as Jefferson and Adams County. If it stays on the same path as it makes its way off to the north and east, that one's moving. Um, Peyton, you know which, how fast that one's moving? Oh, fast um, enough. <laughs> <laughs> That one is moving. I'm going to have to click into uh, the warning. Peyton has all the answers yeah. in case you don't realize folks at home. That's why we rely on her. Uh, this one's moving northeast at 35. Okay. So go back to your Common point. Common theme. So yeah. this is slowing down a little bit. 
across our area. By the way, just to get, let you know what we're doing here tonight, uh, we are doing play by play weather pretty much for you because these storms, we, we've been talking about the forecast for several days now. All right, and it's pretty much been the same forecast over and over again. But now these storms are popping up. And so we're seeing these trends evolving and we're looking at the storms that don't have warnings on them yet. And we're saying that could be the next one. Pay attention to this, pay attention to that. So you have the ultimate amount of time in preparation for these storms. We have the warnings that are popping on the screen. We're telling you about them literally as they're coming to us before they hit the TV. And we want you to be well aware as to what's going on. But it's a dangerous situation that is setting up right now. Nighttime tornadoes are pretty much the worst. All right, when it comes to weather phenomena, because obviously you don't see them until they're right up on you or you have to track them through radar and radar. It's hard to know if they're really touching the ground or not. We're looking at that storm that is now on Highway 16. This is the inflow and outflow. And again, this this guy is stubborn. Yep. Um, it's been holding together pretty good as it's moving up towards now Balin and eventually the Anchorage area. So if you live near Highway 16, you know anybody out there, uh, family, friends, text them. It's OK. By the way, coming up on midnight right now, you're watching live coverage. That's Patrick's alarm going off. You're, you're not, not supposed to wake up at midnight. Well, you're not <laughs> late. You're watching live severe weather coverage. Well, you woke us all up. You're <laughs> watching severe weather coverage right now on WLBT Jackson, WDBD Jackson, as we keep you up to date on the latest with the severe weather that's going to be impacting our area most of today, Wednesday. But that includes these overnight hours as well. We've got the whole team here, meteorologist Patrick Ellis, meteorologist Pey Peyton Garrison. And by the way, Brandon's going to be here. Brandon Walker will be along here in a very short period of time as well. So our team coverage will continue through the night and through the day as long as this severe weather threat continues in our area. So let's bring you up to speed on what's going on. We'll look at the regular radar first, and just to show you what the regional radar looks like from that perspective across our area. In central Mississippi, not much going on just yet. Southern part, south central areas, showers and thunderstorms starting to billow up. But most of the region is quiet. North of the Big Black River, it's not quiet. It's anything but. And that's where we have tornado warnings in effect. The tornado warning that was in effect for Humphreys County is now expired. That's gone. But we do have a tornado warning in effect for northwestern Yazoo County. This is west away from Yazoo City. A pretty intense cell that we've been watching most of the evening here. Last couple of hours, it seems, is now moving in that area. And then we've got another one here that is getting close to the Mississippi River in east central Louisiana. And this could impact the Eagle Lake area and farther north, very close to Valley City as well. Why don't you give me an update on that right now? What's going on with that, Patrick? Uh, again, uh, that storm again working its way north and eastward. This one we're going to be watching very closely because again, tornado warned storm that is going across a very similar area to what we were just dealing with maybe about uh, an hour ago, uh, just north of the Eagle Lake community. As far as what we've gotten from uh, uh, Warren County Sheriff Martin Pace, uh, again, haven't heard any reports of damage. That's good news. Let's hope it stays that way. And it looks like they've clipped Warren County out of the warning and just Issaquina and Sharkey counties are now underneath that warning. Am I, am I right there? Yeah. yeah. All right. So there's your circulation again. Very similar area uh, near Albemarle Lake uh, again. Looking like that one's starting to tighten up again uh, as this crossed Highway 65 near the Roosevelt area. This is over into uh, West Carroll Parish and as well as um, uh, pa Madison Parish, Louisiana. Madison Parish, yep. Louisiana, not Madison County, Mississippi. So Albemarle Lake, again, this area is not the most populated area in the world. A lot of folks have camps out here. This is out here in, uh, you know, forest land. A lot of folks have camps and stuff out here in this part of the world. Uh, you know, it's the time of the year. People have been at the camps lately. So, it's, you know, something to be cognizant of. Abermaro Lake, uh, this will be north of, uh, of Eagle Lake. Okay, so north of Eagle Lake, but uh, again, that circulation is starting to ramp up as well as it's making its way across Highway 465 onward. Kelso uh, down towards uh, Valley Park, all going to be in that similar scenario that we were just in maybe about 45 minutes ago to an hour, but it does look like it's starting to get a little bit more uh, robust here as it's moving across the Mississippi River. If we start to see that debris signature, we'll go back to it. Let's go back up to the north. The storm that is coming up along Highway 16 right now. Again, this one making its way up to the north and east. Uh, I would not be surprised if they get issued a tornado warning for southern portions of Humphreys County here soon enough because it's about to come out of that warning. So let's zoom out really quickly they're, because they're this about is the, to downstream one. Yeah, so let's go ahead and put a, a storm track on that storm and um, you know, it's moving at about what 40 miles per hour on that one. The other one that was moving at 35 miles per hour that goes back to Dave's point 
of the storm slowing down as you get closer and closer to the frontal boundary. We mentioned this yesterday that at some point this morning, this front will stop moving. Uh, it will probably be somewhere between about three and six o'clock this morning. It gets to the metro area and may just stop and we may have a relative lull in severe weather, traditional severe weather. OK, when it comes down to tornadoes, hail and wind, but we're going to have a lot of rainfall that will come along with that. And unfortunately, that becomes a flood situation right during the heart of the morning commute. So that's going to be its own situation. And then later on during the afternoon hours of Wednesday, then we have a secondary severe weather threat that will then sweep in our easternmost communities. This is a little marathon, not a sprint day yet again. Again, coming right up Highway 16 here, uh, heading towards Wolf Lake. That's at 1219 Carter, 1226. Eventually, this makes its out, way out towards the Eden community in northern Yazoo County at 1235. And B Lake up here as you get close closer to Milestone. That's going to be about uh, 1238 as well. Uh, this should shoot just north of Yazoo City, but again, it's going to be a close call. It's going to be out near the Yazoo River uh, bottoms, out closer to the bridge going across the Yazoo River if it stays on the same track. But again, we need folks who are in Eagle Lake, uh, excuse me, Holly Bluff, stay in your safe place right now. If you have a Holly Bluff address out here in the western portions of Yazoo County, I need you to just stay there for a couple more minutes until this can pass over you. It'll cross across Highway 149 near Wolf Lake, uh, Carter, and eventually making its way up towards the Eden community. But uh, there's your new yep, uh, tornado new tor warning. New tor and Belzona's and back Belzona's in again. In that, yeah, so okay. may say just south of Belzona, but it's on the same general path here. So again, something to be cognizant of as it makes its way off to the north and east. And this one goes until 1245. Okay, so that one's the, the new one until 1245. The other one that we got uh, that's for the other portions of the area, there's that circulation there. The one that's south and west of that, that one goes until one o'clock in the morning. Uh, that goes all the way to the back doorstep of, uh, you know, Sharkey uh, and Issaquina counties as well. And the storm that's coming out of Louisiana. So this one is eight miles northeast mm -hmm. of Holly Bluff, 13 miles east of Rolling Fork, and it's moving northeast at 45 miles an hour. Do want to alert you if you know folks that live in Sharkey County, most of the county is without power uh, because of the earlier storm. So now that we have an additional warning kind of being thrown at you, if you know folks out there, text them, call them just to alert them. Also remind them that if they don't have power, they can still watch our tornado coverage right now streaming through the free first alert weather app on your phone. So alert them to that as well so they can stay in contact with the information as it's coming into us. We just want to keep everybody informed as best as possible. We're also on Facebook right now too, so you can check out our coverage there as well. This is the storm that's very close to Albemarle Lake. It is south of the Fittler community and Blanton. We mentioned you a little while ago. You're back in this. A lot of these towns are seeing almost the same thing happening over and over again because this line of storms, while it's moving, generally eastward, southeastward. There are these spin ups that are happening within that line and they are racing northeastward because the wind ahead of the front is definitely from a southerly direction, but with height it changes. It, it spins a little bit and that's what's giving these storms or giving these storms the potential to also spin. So we want you to be on alert. Highway 465 Highway 1 in Issaquina County. Again, a tornado warning is in effect right now. That storm is currently moving in uh, to the county. It just crossed the river and we're going to continue monitoring this storm along with the other storms that are impacting much of the area as tornado warnings continue from this line that is now impacting most of the lower Delta region. Patrick, I was just going to mention if I'm not mistaken, there was a report that came in that uh, the uh, Inverness transmitter for the National Weather Service radios, uh, the, the weather radios that we, you know, we, we try to get you information for. That was down. Uh, and that infects Sharkey and Humphreys County. So you may be without weather radio service uh, if you are tuned into the Inverness transmitter. That's not good news. So again, that's why we have multiple ways of getting weather information. Okay, so I tell you before we get to these events, mm -hmm. have multiple ways of getting weather information. Facebook is a secondary source, but those right. weather radios, your app, your wireless emergency alerts and the television are your four first alerts. Mm -hmm. Secondary comes social media. OK, so again, that's what we need you to be weather aware to. Again, that's going to affect Sharkey County, Humphreys County. I think parts of Holmes County, southern portions of uh, of, uh, of um, 
of LaFleur County back over into Sunflower County as well. So uh, not the best situation, but we can make do. That's right. why we have the multiple ways of getting information. I just want to point that out. If we could pop radar off for a second, just show folks the counties and where these warnings are in effect to maybe zoom in on each one. So we give folks a perspective as to who's at risk and who isn't. Uh, the first one here in Humphreys County, Belzona, Gooden Lake, Silver City, Honey Island, Milestone, back through Carter, Louise and Anchorage. A tornado warning is in effect for your area. This is Doppler indicated farther south in western Yazoo and southern areas of Sharkey County. We are watching a tornado warning as well that is currently in effect. If we can just drop a little bit farther south. You can see that's Colby, Campbellville, Bayland, and then farther southwest Blanton again, Kelso again, a tornado warning in effect that includes Fittler and Albemarle Lake. So many communities I just mentioned for you uh, that are under a tornado warning yet again because an hour ago we were telling you about them being under a tornado warning. Now additional cells in that line of storms continues to move on through. So this is Highway 465 or west of Goose Lake Road here. This is uh, right where 465 kind of bends with the Mississippi River and that is where we do have that particular cell. This is the inflow and outflow that you're looking at on radar right here and it is moving northeastward. So Albemarle Lake, you should be taking cover at this point in time. Once we get beyond Albemarle Lake, it's going to be a minute before we get back into a populated area. We're going to be up closer to Blanton when that happens, but that's going to take uh, several minutes before this actual storm cell gets up there. You can see there's Blanton on the edge of your screen and then we go into the Delta National Forest again and this is where we're watching that other storm that's had a pretty good signature that's near Balin. Let's stop off in the Anchorage in Bayland area just for a moment and you can see this is getting close to Louise and this was the storm that really was cranked up about 20 minutes ago a mean looking storm not as mean now but still a tornado warning in effect for it so it doesn't look like it was uh, it didn't have the considerable tag which is what it had a short time ago but this is headed more for Anchorage Louise and eventually Silver City. So again, this is going to be a long process through the night as this line of storms pushes in here. And then we've got that other storm that we're watching in East Central Louisiana. And that one will be something we'll have to keep an eye on for folks that live closer to Natchez and Port Gibson because this line, this part of the line has not been something we've really engaged with so far this evening. Um, and that's why when this moves in, we're going to have a lot of energy for it to tap into. And this could pose a problem for southwest Mississippi, probably between 1 and 3 a.m. That's what I'm thinking it's going to move in. So law enforcement is uh, looking at a law enforcement officer on the Mississippi River levee is reporting a tornado near Lake Albemarle. Uh, Albemarle. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not Maybe you can answer this question yeah. for us. Chotard Lake? I think so, yes. Okay, so you don't, this, you know what, we may have stumped them. Yeah, yeah. You don't know of a barbecue restaurant near there? Wow. I, last time I checked, I don't think there was a barbecue restaurant. I don't restaurant think so either. <laughs> I, I, I've been up that way. I haven't seen much around there, to be honest with you either. So they're going to be changing the wording on this. And go. Okay. Go confirmed. All on right. That. We're going to go confirmed on this particular tor uh, tornado near Albemarle Lake. We have law enforcement confirmation uh, from the levee there that a tornado it has been spotted. This will be moving towards Fittler and Blanton close to Kelso where we just yep, had that right in here on the ground. All these towns we've been talking about all night and you're getting publicity for all the wrong reasons. Unfortunately, this particular cell right here just moving across 465 and it's going to come close to 465 again because as I mentioned to you, it curves with the river here and um, basically the levees, but it's going to be up there close to Fittler, Blanton and the Low Water Bridge Road area as this moves northeastward. This storm, if I'm not mistaken, this one's going 35 miles an hour, so it's a little bit slower than some of the other storms uh, that are currently moving through the area. But again, we have confirmation on it, so we're expecting uh, mm -hmm. this warning to be revised a little bit and increased in the uh, intensity and the concern uh, that we have for it as well. Most of the storms so far this evening have been in uh, rural areas, uh, which Mississippi has plenty of them. But we want to let you know as these things are developing because they move from basically the middle of nowhere, all of a sudden they come up on a community. And that's why we want folks that live close to Blanton. And there we go. They just changed the uh, uh, qualification, if you will, of and we this also warning. have a storm spotter on Highway 61. So they, I'm sure, will let us know uh, once this rotation does cross. Uh, Highway 61, they'll let us know if it's still on the ground. All right, so 61's up here by Blanton. All right, that's 
Highway 1. So this storm is going to get closer to 61 here before long. It disappears for a second here on the radar screen. Not really sure why, but it's there. Trust and, me. And just to point out, they're going to go with a tornado warning for the storm that's coming out of Humphreys County. I point that out because these storms remember cycling. Mm -hmm. That one weekend up north of, Yaz of uh, Belzona, that one again moving up into LaFleur County. We'll get a new tornado warning here fairly soon as it's making its way up to the north and east. But again, that goes back to this thought of these storms cycling, going through a process as they're making their way through over the next little bit. And as Dave was mentioning again, just because you know these areas here don't have as many folks as Metro Jackson or some of the other metropolitan areas, Vicksburg, uh, Natchez, Macomb, doesn't mean that they don't deserve to get weather information. So that's why we're here yep. to keep you updated on this, uh, this storm. Again, uh, obviously somebody's watching the storm over coming across the levee. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. just happens to be a sheriff's de uh, deputy, probably. But again, that storm ramping up as it's making its way closer to Highway 61. Again, carries up here onward again in this uh, general vicinity, same area that we saw you know what 45 minutes ago mm -hmm. with the, the first storm. And, and the problem with these storms the reason why it's so important that we let you know even though it's a small community rural maybe there's nobody there but the point is we have to let you know about these storms because there's not much time for warning not much time for preparing these are nighttime storms so we're grateful that we're actually getting the amount of reports that we've been getting now be honest with you the more than i thought we'd be receiving so it's great we appreciate uh, law enforcement and the storm chasers that are out there watching this stuff but this particular particular cell is one where you need to keep an eye on because it's going to be getting closer to Blanton. Let me give you a little perspective here. This is the border, this white imaginary line, if you will. It's the border between Sharkey and Issaquina counties here. And so this storm is going to move through southern Issaquina and move into the southwest portion of Humphreys County here in the next few minutes and along Highway 61. We do have plenty of folks that reside there, and so we want you to be aware that this storm is coming. The problem is in this area, if you have family or friends in southern Sharkey County, please alert them to this storm moving in because if they're not watching us on the free first alert weather app, uh, they're probably going to have a tough time getting the information because at this point the power is out for most of the county. So we want you to know that we're on Facebook, we're on the free first alert weather app, and we do know that uh, there are folks out here trying to get this information and it's vital that they know that there's a storm coming. We don't want in this particular environment, we don't want folks going out to survey the damage only to get hit by another storm, if that makes sense. So you can see right now, tornado warning in effect for that storm that crossed through Al Albemarle Lake uh, on Highway 465. And now it's going to be getting closer to 61 where there is a storm chaser that is currently out there spotting for this storm and will keep us updated. Let's go farther north. Want to show what's happening with that storm. There we go. Just got that signature. Mm -hmm. And you can see this is what's happening with the storm that's in Humphreys County. Belzona, here we go again, but south of Belzona, Silver City over to Louise. An intense part of this cell is moving. And you can see it's south of Louise there. Uh, mm -hmm. There's some good inflow and outflow. These need to be watched by the Bayland and the, uh, wow, there we go, by Louise. Look at that. Uh, pretty intense winds in this area. Uh, Peyton, if you have the ability, maybe we could measure the wind real quick just to see what's going on there. That um, looks like it, it, it's, it's still circulation there, but it may mm -hmm. broaden out a little bit. Yeah. Um, so wow. it may be in a circulation. It, it's trying to go through its cycle, but even if it's going with winds in a straight motion or twisting about in a circle, it don't mm -hmm. matter. That's a whole lot of wind. And of course, that's just come across Highway 149, just south of 14. Uh, midnight sits about here. You got Louise here. And then uh, again, between Car uh, S Silver City and Carter along Highway 49 West, that's going to be the next one in line. But you see how that kind of kinks up right there. Yep. I, I wouldn't be surprised, again, if it tries to notch up and that becomes more of a tornado signature yet again. But again, tornado warning in effect. You need to be in a safe place now. If you're along Highway 149, stay there near Louise, but Silver City and Carter Wolf Lake are the next ones in line. And you know what Peyton revealed there when she was pulling up on the screen is we had 70 mile an hour winds and a mile away from that, the wind was blowing at five miles an hour. So that gives you an idea as to what's going on in the atmosphere to have something so turbulent and then it'd be the complete opposite, less than a mile away. There's something right there. So we're watching what's happening there near Louise. I want you to please be on special alert if you're in the Silver City area on 49 or over by Carter, because this storm cell is gonna ride just north of Wolf Lake and probably wind up between there on Highway 49 in the next 10 to 20 minutes or so. So a dangerous situation playing out right now in this area. Let's go to the bigger screen here. I wanna show you what uh, what's happening regionally 
regional radar. I do want to go oh. back to that other warning. Do it. Um, and for Southern uh, Issaquah and Sharkey County, law enforcement is continuing to confirm uh, that a tornado is on the ground that just crossed the river. So that one will be um, moving into Southern Sharkey County and they're going to reissue another warning downstream, which will take it uh, into uh, likely, Bluff. yeah. It'll be the next thing. Yeah, like, probably. probably bluff. Yeah. And you know, one of the things I want to point out, I'm getting a little concerned about this. We're starting to see them moving over the same ground. At least right now they are. Um, that may change over several hours, but for the past uh, hour, hour and a half, we've been watching these storms moving over the same locations. You've been watching them on radar with us. They've been showing you lots of red, lots of purple. That indicates heavy rain. At some point, it will be too much rain. And so we could have a flash flooding situation uh, developing very soon in the lower delta of Mississippi on top of the tornadic threat that we've been reporting to you right now. I'd say about another hour or two maybe of this and we could have those problems, maybe less. Yeah, let's uh, let's take max three behind me. So let's uh, pull up uh, traffic max behind me uh, really quick. I want to show you that idea here because we've been talking about the potential for the storm system to slow down as it's making its way across the area. So whenever you guys are ready in the back, just let me know. But again, we do have again a tornado that's about to cross Highway 61 near the Fittler community. Take your tornado precautions right now on that storm system as it's making its way through the other storm moving past Louise Carter Wolf Lake and Silver City are next in line and you see a line of storms that are lining up back over here towards the Mississippi River. So uh, whenever you guys are ready, uh, take max three and again, there you go. That's the line of storms as we see it right now moving across the area. We'll step this forward and again, you see how the line gets into the metro area. Look at the time frame here. That's like two to three o'clock in the morning. So if you're with us right now in Jackson, Jackson, you probably got another hour that you can go get a couple of winks of sleep before the storms come rolling into your backyard, but you need to be weather aware to this. But look what happens here. And I, I mentioned this yesterday. There's going to be a point where this thing just slows down and nothing happens. I put my arm here. And notice how the rain just does not move, especially through the morning commute. It may be right over Metro Jackson, maybe a couple miles south of Metro Jackson, but somebody's going to get shellacked with a lot of rain over a good uh, period of time through the morning commute to, uh, this morning uh, as the storm system starts to move through the area. So something to be aware of moving forward within the next couple of hours. Remember, long term event, not short term on this one. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, folks are asking, well, why is this thing slowing up? Why, why isn't it going to keep moving like the other ones? The core of this storm system, the actual center of low pressure is up in the northern plains. All right, it's not even close to where we are. It's causing blizzard conditions up there and in the Rocky Mountains. We're on the southern end of this storm, and so it's bringing weather from the Canadian border all the way down to the Mexican border virtually here. And so we're watching what's happening with this. I do want to point out these storms in east central Louisiana need to watch them because the way they're setting up, that's going to be more of a Vicksburg, possibly Fort uh, Port Gibson issue over the next couple of hours as this line continues to advance into our area. But when it stalls out, it's because the actual core of the low pressure system is going to really not be moving much either. So we've got a big storm system and it's got a lot of energy in the southern stream of it. And that's where you've got a little bit of a jet stream coming in. I don't want to get too technical with you, but you need to understand that we have this system stalling out. All of our forecast models are seeing it in some shape or form. Let's go over the tornado warnings that we have in effect right now. 1222. All right, this one is for Humphreys County and includes a good portion of Belzona. This nudges its way into the extreme western portion of Holmes County. Got another tornado warning here, and that's southern, uh, southern Sharkey and northern sections of War, excuse me, that's Southern Issaquina and Southern Sharkey County. I want to ask you, Peyton, I noticed they just took off the uh, observe tag off this. Is that correct? Or is that, it, nope, that still there? We just look at warnings only. Okay. We can't. Depict if we can't distinguish between yes. that. I, I just want to make sure but it okay. is still have it still has that observed tag uh, and it looks like it just crossed over Highway 61. So if our storm spotter is still out this way uh, and the, is talking in chat, mm -hmm. uh, maybe we'll get some confirmation on that if there's any damage out this way or if he does see any sort of maybe hard to see, but there would yeah. be a good amount of lightning, I think, out in this area anyway. Uh, so that should illuminate the sky. So hopefully he could see it and hopefully maybe he could see it and there was nothing there to see. So that could be the other possibility with this storm as well. We will keep monitoring this particular cell farther north. We have the other cell. 
uh, that we're watching. And this one, again, showing a pretty well pronounced signature on the inflow and outflow here. The couplet, if you will, of wind is showing up there. As Patrick pointed out a couple minutes ago, it looks like it's kind of stretched out a little bit, and that might be the case. In fact, we're looking at just an awful lot of rain. This is heavy rain right now. Uh, when you see things on that scale and you could see every once in a while a little purple shading showing up in there too. So around midnight, what an appropriate name uh, when it comes to this kind of weather late at night. We've got some heavy rain in your area and from Belzona southward through Carter, Lampkin and Silver City. Heavy rain falling as well with this storm that is moving towards Grass Lake and Milestone and Bee Lake. And eventually we think maybe Chula depending on if the storm holds together or not. Big picture right now showing you most of the weather is confined to the lower delta in our area. There are some showers that continue to straddle the line between um, parts of Walfall and Pike counties moving into Lawrence counties right now. And then you can see the eastern part of Louisiana. We've got some intense storms that are approaching and this could be an issue for west central Mississippi or even southwest Mississippi in the next one to two hours. So we're you with team coverage through the night of this severe weather. If the tornado warnings subside, if they do, okay, we'll take a break and let you go back to regular programming for a little bit, but we're not going to travel far from our TVs here because we are going to be providing you with updates regardless through the overnight. And then our morning show is pretty much dedicated to weather coverage at this point, uh, starting this morning at 4 30 a.m. or sooner if the weather necessitates. Give me a little tease there, Patrick, because you're going to have a long, busy morning ahead of you. I have Brandy with me. You so have Brandy you know, with you. Yeah. That's true. He'll be here shortly. <laughs> and you know what? You have us as well. We can yeah. come back in, too. So I've got my cereal set aside. I'm ready to go. And, um, you know, we'll provide you with that help, of course, as you need it, like you're providing us the help right now. We appreciate An that. An extra cup of coffee. I can do that. Okay. In fact, I put, just dropped some creamer off in the weather center. So you can see right now, uh, Belzona, a uh, potential tornado uh, approaching the Belzona area. Let's go on to... Um, Let's map this if we can with winds and also uh, the debris signature, see if we get anything. So we know there's something going on in the southern part of the county uh, between Liberty City and Carter. All right, that's about to cross over uh, the Highway 49. But let's go over to Debris Tracker, see if we've got anything. And I don't know, it doesn't look like it's, it looks to me, I'm curious that what's happening might, down by Wolf Lake. That might be just dust getting kicked yeah. up, honestly. Well, it's quite windy out there. I mean, yeah. that's the thing we have to remind everybody. There are 40 to 50 mile an hour winds at the surface. And Peyton just showed you when she did a scan on this storm just a few minutes ago, there were 70 mile an hour winds. So there should be things flying around in the sky. Theoretically, it could be just a bunch of leaves, though, um, or just parts of you know branches. But that's what's going on, at least there. And we've got a pretty good wind field. If you're along 49, you are going to really feel it probably with the storm that's going to come across here in the next five, 10 minutes tops. That's north of Wolf Lake, south of Silver. Silver City. Yeah, that's going to come across right across uh, where you turn off to go to Carter off 49 West. Uh, but again, uh, you know, you're not going to get a four mile wide tornado. Mm -mm. Uh, it's going to be very hard for that to happen. Yeah, uh, but uh, right there again, that's going to track right across Highway 49 West in between Silver City and Carter. There's not much here. Uh, again, we're out in generally open fields, uh, but again, you do have at least two areas here. Wolf Lake Carter up towards uh, Silver City and again, you probably got to uh, you know, maybe 60, 70 mile per hour winds maybe coming at you at a straight line across the highway coming at you straight across. So if you are driving along 49 West, you might get a crosswind here at 60 or 70 miles per hour. Not a good situation for a trucker uh, as that makes its way off to the north and east. Still has a tornado warning associated with it, so you need to go ahead and take those precautions as such. But looking at it again, it looks like it's still kind of getting its act together, trying to re invigorate itself as it's making its way off to the north. This storm here, this is the one that we've been talking about that has uh, been reported on the ground back over near the Fittler community. Uh, it's now moving into again generally rural areas heading across Highway 61 south of the Cary area. This will be moving up into Sharkey County or through southern Sark Sharkey County through the Delta National Forest. Next major town in line would be Holly Bluff. So again, Holly Bluff next in line on this one. The last report that we had tornado was on the ground, but that was near Fittler as it was making its way across uh, through southern uh, Issaquina into Sharkey counties. Uh, that storm again making its way off to the north and east would not be surprised if we get a new tornado warning on this one that would include central Sharkey, northern Yazoo and probably southern sections of, uh, of Humphreys County. Uh, let's go big picture and I just want to I want to take 
we'll stay actually stay on the on the velocity product. I want to show you again. We have a train of supercells here. Okay, supercell thunderstorms. They make their own environment. We've got one right here. You got one right here. And uh, zoom out one more click, and we'll go up to the storm that's even further to the north. That one right there, heading up towards Greenwood. So you have three cells here that are in a line. Uh, this one here looks like it's surging, so more of a straight line wind situation, but can very well kink up. I mentioned that yesterday, uh, that you can have these surges of wind, and on the top end and the bottom end of those lines, you can have the circulation kink up, and that becomes tornado potential. So that's what we're seeing right now, I think. Uh, but on the top end of that surge is where we have it crossing Highway 49 West near Silver, Silver City, Carter, and Wolf Lake. The other storm system that's about to cross Highway 49 East near Greenwood, if you know somebody up around Greenwood, they need to go ahead and be in their tornado precautions. The storm that we've been talking about coming out of Southern Issaquina into Southern Sharkey counties, that one is about to come out of that warning, but I will tell you right now, more than likely, they're gonna have to issue another warning for that storm coming up uh, through the Delta National Forest. That would include probably places mm -hmm. like Go ahead, Peyton. No, they're uh, they're gonna they're working on okay. issuing another one. All right, so new warning about to come out. This will probably include Western Yazoo, eastern portions of Sharkey, southern portions of Humphreys County. As uh, we mm -hmm. continue with that uh, that new storm that crossed 61, so not terribly long. We are getting ago. reports from the storm spotter that was on Highway 61 that large transmission power lines are down across Highway 61, uh, and that Dan Sheriff. Uh, and then the sheriff says that at least one home is uh, substantial or is dan damaged east of Highway 61. Okay, so that goes back to again. And this is in Southern Charlotte County. Now that the question mark is, was it the first storm or the second that's, storm? That's that's going to be a hard one to answer. Yeah, that, I, I don't know. It's almost you, the the same path. Yeah, so, right. so you know we could just be getting yeah. reports from the first storm and not the second storm, but we're, at least we're getting some more reports, uh, which, you know, for this part of the world, this time of the morning, as uh, as Dave was mentioning, is its own feat. Yeah, um, I would have never expected that. I, no. am, I am concerned. We have, it's really stood out to me, Patrick, uh, in all the storms we've been covering tonight, the wind uh, that we've been seeing right here in, in that storm in southern uh, Humphreys County. Maybe I'm making too big of a deal over this, but I mean, we just don't see that that often um, that's been holding together. Again, as you said, it's probably not going to be a four mile long tornado, but this is some serious wind that's blowing right now along Highway 49 uh, from Silver City South through the Carter area. I wonder if we can go to Debris Tracker real quick just to kind of see if something's going on there. Not really, nothing that stands out. Maybe with Debris Tracker, we'll go farther southwest and kind of see what that uh, law enforcement officer may have seen um, and so we're east of 61. I mean that could be it out here but again we're over the Delta National Forest at that point. It's hard to say it kind of blends in with some of the noise that also corresponds with it. There, there are things in the air constantly, bugs, uh, birds, and they will show up in a lot of these products too, believe it or not, as they're trying to get away from the storm. So it's important to make the distinction there. By the way, uh, a couple of viewers are sending us emails and we appreciate that. Dorothy wanted to compliment us on our pronunciation of Shotard Lake and Albemarle. So we appreciate that. She says she has family that has uh, some pl a place out there and she appreciates us pronouncing it, at least trying our best to pronounce it. Those are some of the smaller communities in the area. We try to get out there and see most of these places because it's such a beautiful area. The state Mississippi has so much uh, diverse scenery. It's wonderful, but not a night like tonight. Tonight, of course, the weather's closing in and it's really stormy in this part of the lower delta. And a lot of those smaller communities that we may not be used to talking about are getting a lot of talk tonight because of the fact that we're seeing this storm system uh, playing out over and over again over the same area. And these storms are close to training. And when you see that training effect going on, they're going over the same place again. That's where you get the serious potential uh, for getting additional uh, additional heavy rainfall, flash flooding at that. What do we got right now? Peyton? That's the new tornado warning. North tornado, okay, new tornado warning just popped on the screen, and that's really to, to bridge the gap, isn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, between uh, the one to the north and the one to the south. And, and this goes to the point I was just making that these storms are kind of following similar paths at this point in time. Yeah, uh, let's, uh, I'm trying to pull up the, uh, the sky cam over in Vicksburg, but let's mm -hmm. actually pull up Max 3 really quickly. I want to show you the impact tracker for uh, this is going to say Thursday, but it really is today uh, because once we get into the morning commute, 
significant risk for flash flooding, okay? Uh, on top of the fact that we're gonna have storms ongoing, I think there's gonna be a period of time where we don't have necessarily your traditional severe weather, okay? So I wanna give you a heads up of where we're going. It's 1233 in the morning. If you're up with us this morning, uh, you know, uh, you're probably wondering what's gonna happen next too. The next thing in line would be the storm threat that will continue through the afternoon hours. I know that sounds crazy. It's like, how are we gonna have more storms after this? As Dave was saying, there's a point where this thing just stops. It doesn't move for like six or seven hours. Uh, so that we're, that's where we become more of a flood risk uh, issue. And then a storm threat will reemerge for eastern areas, east of I-55 during the afternoon hours. You may be in places like Macomb, uh, my, uh, like uh, uh, say Collins and McGee and uh, Raleigh and not get a single warning until one or two o'clock in the afternoon. That is a possibility. Uh, so again, you got to be with us through the rest of the day. For the folks who are in, in the western areas who are dealing with the storms right now, be patient with us later on today when it's the eastern areas that have to deal with it. Be patient with us in the central areas because it's going to be you here over the next few hours as we get closer to the uh, morning rush hour, it seems like. And so here we are at 1234, just about 1235. We've got three tornado warnings in effect for our area, our viewing area, and they include right now Humphreys County. They include Western Yazoo, Southern Sharkey, and then right there, the southeastern corner of Issaquina County at this point in time. Storms are now moving in. There's a line of them and look what's happening behind that line. Flash flood warnings are in effect for northeastern Louisiana, southeast Arkansas and parts of the Delta in Washington County. Need to watch what's going on with this storm. Uh, coming out of East Central Louisiana because that's going to wind up somewhere probably between Port Gibson and Vicksburg in the next hour. That's how things are playing out right now. So they've issued a warning for the parishes here, which indicate a severe thunderstorm warning with the potential for a tornado. So keep that in mind as this storm is kind of blossoming out of the uh, unstable air mass here and it's feeding off. It's being pretty open to the so south, so it's feeding off of the unstable atmosphere in that area and that's going to continue to feed these storms, especially in this particular quadrant, which is extreme eastern Louisiana and the southern really the southern third of Mississippi, where we are going to continue to see these storms tapping into that environment, that rich, moist environment. Got a pretty a couple heavy showers now starting to form uh, near Peelahatchee in eastern Rankin County and parts of Scott County, too. We're starting to see some rain in Smith County and then Lawrence, you're back in it again. That line of showers, there's been a pesky line of showers that keeps developing over the same spots close to the Walthall and Pike County border. That's where we're seeing those showers out there. And then you look westward and you can see in eastern sections of Louisiana and the lower Delta. That's where all this weather is converging. And at this point in time, we are seeing quite a bit of heavy rain falling in that area. And again, we have the tornado warnings that are in effect. Peyton, why don't you remind us again why this one gets a white box versus the other ones getting we have uh, the white box, which means that uh, we do have uh, it's observed by radar. We had that uh, and also it was observed on the ground from law enforcement uh, in southern Issaquina County. But the new warning that was issued downstream of the one that was uh, when it was observed is just your traditional radar indicated tornado warning, which includes uh, parts of Yazoo, uh, Humphreys, even southern uh, Sharkey counties. Uh, my, this one included uh, several counties, and I believe that might be all of them, and uh, still includes parts of Issaquina um, as well. This one's moving 40 miles per hour. A severe thunderstorm capable of producing a tornado was located near Onward or eight miles north of Valley Park, moving northeast at 40 miles per hour. Uh, the circulation right now over the Delta National Forest in the southern part of Sharkey counties, and that will be moving into probably the northwestern section of Yazoo County here shortly. But I will say that the rotation does not look as impressive. But again, we've seen several of these storms uh, cycle where they broaden out in terms of uh, when we look at the rotation and then it tightens back up pretty quickly where it could drop a tornado at really at any point. And that's kind of what I was just thinking about that same storm. The storm that's further to the north, though, uh, that's up here now moving up towards Milestone. That one has wrapped up yeah. on the top end of that surge line. Again, we were talking about how the winds were coming out in one direction originally here, more of a straight line wind situation. But on the top end of the line that's now pushed past Silver City or east of Silver City, 
that's moving up towards the milestone community up towards Chula. Uh, it wasn't what, what two weeks ago, week and a half ago. Mm -hmm. we, we were talking about Chula and they had massive hail up there uh, from that uh, from a storm that uh, rolled through here. So again, that's the next thing that we have to watch out for is because now when you have these straight line wind events, sometimes so surges on the top end and the bottom end and even in the center portion of that line, you can have these little circulations. This one looks to be on the top end. You could get one that happens right here on the central portion of the line and you can get another one that's further down. This is when we have these randomly placed tornadoes just kind of like all witch away, uh, you know, and we end up with like three or four tornadoes out of one storm because of things like this, where you had these little kinks along that line and each kink could quickly put down a tornado, more of a quick spin up than a long track situation. But needless to say, you got maybe one, two, maybe on the bottom end, three uh, possible circulations. One of note right now is about to move uh, towards the milestone area. Here's Highway 12 right here, Highway 49 East. Again, rural areas here, but the uh, next major town in line would be more so Chula, uh, milestone, a couple of uh, a small community there, uh, but could very well be very close to it, or at least maybe a mile or a couple miles east or west of there, but still very strong winds at any rate coming across through eastern portions of Holmes County, far western, uh, far western Holmes County, eastern Humphreys County at this point. Yeah, we're in for a long night, or I should say in this case, morning at this point with severe thunderstorms impacting a large portion of the area. Again, even if you don't get severe weather out of this, the potential for heavy rain and flash flooding pretty high on this particular scenario as well. We've seen a lot of the energy focused in the lower delta here in the last couple of hours. That's where most of the tornadic cells have been, but we are seeing these cells in the eastern part of Louisiana that are starting to get a little bit better organized. They're starting to get a little stronger too, and we have to really keep a close eye on that particular cluster. It is uh, pretty exposed to the south, which means it's feeding off the warm, unstable air that is present there, and it's unobstructed, meaning there's nothing really blocked blocking the inflow of those ingredients into the storm. So we're monitoring that there is a tornadic cell with it on the back end, not so much in the middle, but towards the front side, they are indicating that this could go tornado at any time. And that's what's happening here. You've got the storm system that at this point is really a line, a frontal boundary that is now pushing in and it's starting to slow up. There's a lot of spinning along and just ahead of this line, but it is starting to slow up. And as it starts to slow up, that's where you're going to have your heavier rain. But also it's a concern because there could be these rapidly developing spin ups and that could really change the game. But if you're watching us, uh, you, as Patrick brought up eloquently, uh, if you're in McGee or you're in Prentice, it could be a while before you get any kind of this weather, and it may be a while before you get rid of it. And in central Mississippi, in the metro area, we're still a few hours away at this point, probably from the weather actually catching up to Metro Jackson. It's coming, but I'd say it's probably two or three hours away at this point, the way this front is moving in and the way it's slowing its forward movement into the area. If you joined us earlier in the evening on the 10 p.m. news, I was showing you a line of storms back toward Shreveport and in between Shreveport and Monroe, and there was a broken line of storms out ahead of that. Well, that broken line of storms, okay, has now kind of congealed with the main line, the front. And so that's what's now slowing the progress, the progression of everything. But until this atmosphere here gets worked over, uh, we're still going to be having the potential for getting rough weather. And if we get too far into the day later today, middle of the day and we're still looking at the front side of that line and I feel that by the middle of the day the front side of it's going to be somewhere in the eastern and southernmost counties in our area uh, that's where more severe weather could pop up and that's another concern that could develop so we've got several different elements to the storm system we're not trying to catastrophize or anything like that, but we're just letting you know this is the, the that's what makes this storm system different than previous storm systems that we've been covering for you. This is one in which it's just slowing up and the slowing up part with this kind of energy could produce more severe weather and lead us to more in the way of flash flooding, which is why flash flooding or flash flood warnings are currently in effect farther north and west. Currently have a tornado warning in effect for southern Humphreys County. That includes Belzona, extends into western 
Holmes County right now have a tornado warning that's in effect for Western Yazoo, Southern Sharkey counties where Peyton's been monitoring the uh, power outages as of late and told us a little while ago 70% of the county was pretty much without power. And then right here uh, in the Kelso and Blanton area, we're continuing to watch where we have a tornado warning in effect and that's where there's a, if I'm not mistaken, that's an observed tornado, which is why it's got the white box around it. So uh, this is the way the situation looks right now. We go back to regular radar just to show you what's going on. And, and just to bounce off of that, I think that circulation has already moved out of that box and right. is now firmly into it's the, the Delta new box. National yeah. Forest. Yeah, it's probably that's what that new yeah. warning is taking up. So the white box will disappear here before long, uh, but I am curious to see how this storm continues to play as it moves farther along Highway 16 near Colby. And that's really the next place to get this. There's some heavy rain falling out here too. Uh, so the rainfall rates could easily be one, two, three inches per hour. Uh, right now it looks like one to two inches per hour is what's coming down from these storms. So that could lead us down to that flash flooding concern. And the I only thing we got going on for us, I'm sorry, the only thing we got going on for us is we're two inches below normal so far halfway through the month of December. Uh, I do want to point out that the storm that has a tornado warning out on it for uh, parts of Humphreys uh, and uh, Holmes County is that it looks like it's starting to bow out uh, quite a bit and we'll likely see uh, that strong wind potential moving into the western uh, side of uh, Holmes County here shortly. So when it bows out, um, it becomes more of a wind threat than a tornadic threat. Uh, that's the key on that particular storm cell. So we will monitor that to see how that kind of translates as it moves more into Holmes County. The storm right now is just in the southwest corner of Holmes County, but as this continues to move out and that kind of falls in line with what we were seeing right Peyton on this a little while ago when this was back here uh, over Highway 49, we saw that large lengthy wind field and so now we've got what we call the Boeing signature. I hate seeing those kinks, don't mm -hmm. you though? Mm -hmm. That's the stuff you got to watch out for. That's where you could have a quick spin up. So we'll watch to see what happens here. Um, this suggests wind and this suggests watch out. There could be another try and try and uh, another tornadic cell trying to form right there. And that's west of Chula, by the way. Yeah, so, uh, you know, that, you know, you got strong winds moving into the Eden community right now, mm -hmm. all the way up Highway 49 East. Uh, looks like we just lost a warning. They just there. lost a warning there. So uh, that's good news. Well, that's the warning for that one. I would wouldn't be surprised if they reissue for something yeah. uh, with that. But we haven't had any reports so far from this storm as it's been making its way through southern uh, portions of Humphreys County, moving over towards uh, western areas of Holmes County. While there's no warning active right now for for this storm, I'll tell you right now, based off of what we're seeing, again, you've got strong winds no matter what, and the potential, as Dave was just mentioning, again, the top end of that little uh, of that surge, that wind surge right there, that Boeing segment, that could very well try to tornado as well. That's a highway 20. Uh, that's the highway 12 corridor here between Belzona and the Milestone community. Again, next up in line would be Chula. We just talked about the, you guys not terribly long ago, but again, while we don't have an active warning for that storm. Uh, which I wouldn't be surprised if they reissue or maybe go downstream on a severe thunderstorm warning on this here soon enough. I would take this as a tornado warning as it was uh, just a couple of seconds ago. So uh, for Milestone and Chula, I'd go ahead and take the course or at least regret on this one and just go ahead and make that move to the safe place. But again, even along 49 East, heading down towards Eden, heading down towards Yazoo City, north end of Yazoo City, uh, we've got some pretty strong winds moving through there. The other storm that we were tracking, again, I would say don't worry about the white box right now. The one that's the observed tornado warning. That storm is now firmly in the western Yazoo County, moving out towards Holly Bluff, but it's moving through some fairly rural lands right now. Again, kind of a wind surge line looking more straight line wind, but it doesn't matter whether if it's twisting about in a circle or if it's coming straight at you, it does not matter. Wind is wind and wind does damage. So that's what you need to take into account here. You know, even though we may say it may not tornado from that storm, that wind is still going to be surging at you and coming at you pretty fast. You know, uh, you know, these storms are moving 35 miles per hour. Take that into uh, consideration. Then you add in what the winds are blowing out of the storm, say 35 miles per hour. You've got a 70 mile per hour wind all of a sudden. So again, that's something to keep in mind as these storms are making their way across the area. Wind surge here, wind surge here, looking more straight line wind, but wind is wind, like as I just mentioned. Farther down to the south, let's zoom out really quickly because while we have those two warnings, well, uh, one warning now, we only have the one active warning that's going to be for western. Mm -hmm. 
Western Yazoo. And they're going to issue another warning. Uh, they're going to go severe okay. with the tornado possible, but they're still going to monitor that threat for uh, tornadoes uh, just in case one is able to spin up for uh, Northern Yazoo and Holmes County. Yeah, that's what we were just uh, talking about. The storm that uh, had the warning expire. Uh, so they're going to with the severe thunderstorm warning on that, uh, but are going to Keep a mention that there could very well be a tornado. Let's go to the storm that's further down to the south and west. That has a severe thunderstorm warning with a tornado possibility uh, that's moving through eastern Louisiana. That's uh, near Faraday and up towards uh, uh, down around uh, uh, Vidalia, back over towards St. Joseph, uh, Lake Bruin. Eventually, as it makes its way across Highway 65 soon enough, that again, strong wind line, but could very well have some circulation associated with it as it's making its way off to the east. That is the dead ringer that would be for the highway 61 corridor south of I-20. So we're talking from Vicksburg down to Port Gibson, Lorman, uh, Fayette and eventually down towards Natchez as well within the next hour. There's your new severe thunderstorm warning that we just mentioned. Again, it's going to clip far northern sections of Yazoo County. So technically does not include Yazoo City, but the storm that's coming up from your south and west. So let's zoom out just a little bit, Peyton. I want to show you that storm too. That storm right there, you've got a tornado warning that basically comes up to the back doorstep of Yazoo City. On the other side of Yazoo City, you got a severe thunderstorm warning uh, with a tornado possible. And that storm right there is the one that we've been talking about up near Milestone and Chula and down towards Eden. That's going to move out towards Lexington. So let's put a storm track on. Uh, go ahead, Dave. I want to point out yep. something about the storm, and I want you to keep. I want you to actually keep uh, doing the storm track in a second. I don't want to take that away from you. But what I want to point out is that the latest track on this particular storm is now east. It's moving east. Everything we've been talking about this evening has been going northeast or northeast 45, 50, 40 miles an hour. This is going east at 35 miles an hour. So that just gives you a little perspective here that we are starting to see probably the Boeing effect from the storm uh, is starting to take hold across Holmes County. Take it from there, Patrick. All right, so that's the uh, storm track on the storm that's coming out of Holmes County, out of Humphreys into Holmes County. We're talking about Lexington by 114. The time right now is coming up on 1250. So you got a couple minutes on, on that storm. Durant at 12, uh, 132. West 143 and heading out towards uh, Kosciuszko. Uh, it's saying Baptist Itala County. That's the hospital. But again, uh, we're talking Itala County uh, and Kosciuszko by about two o'clock in the morning. So again, it, that's as long as it's moving at 35 miles per hour. But to Dave's point, as he just mentioned, this storm has gone from like 50 miles per hour down to 40 miles per hour down to 35 miles per hour. So at some point, Later on this morning, this line is going to go to zero miles per hour. <laughs> yeah, and that's going to be a real problem yeah. where and when it does that. But interesting to note, I think the Boeing winds coming out of this are, are an indication that this part of the line is now tar starting to turn more directional uh, to the east right where it is. I don't want to say that the whole thing is doing that, but uh, then you look to your farther southwest. That's where you have a tornado warning in effect right now, and that's for western Yazoo County. And again, we're, we're pretty much not focused on the one that's in the white box anymore. That's going to disappear off your screen shortly. But again, places just west of Yazoo City are included in this tornado warning right now. And there's some pretty good wind and some pretty good rain coming out of that storm in the western part of the county. Does this sound like deja vu to you? It should because we're pretty much talking about the same storm cell, sort of, just a little bit earlier, about an hour ago, that moved through this area. It's been um, seeing quite a bit of activity, and I am concerned about the flash flooding threat increasing in that area as we continue to see storms moving over the same place time and time again. That's been going on now for the last couple of hours. Central Mississippi, we just had some pretty heavy rain move through Peelahatchee. We got some rain in Lawrence County, and then we got some pretty good showers that are starting to pop in Walthall County, but this has been the same line that I've been watching for quite some time. So this is moving east now, okay, at 35 miles an hour. This activity is still moving northeast, decidedly northeast, and there is rotation in these cells here. And if we're looking southwest of Natchez, they're starting to pick up a little bit. If we can go a little bit farther south, I just want to see what's happening here in central Louisiana and um, a little bit farther south, uh, just to see if there's anything kind of popping between Baton Rouge and uh, Lafayette. And you can see that there's not a lot of activity there, but right in here, we're going to have to watch closely because again, from central Mississippi southward, there hasn't been much going on during the evening and now we're into the early morning hours. It's just a matter of time before this mess 
gets closer. And if it can hold off long enough, uh, that could give parts of this area what we call air mass recovery, where the air mass actually fixes itself, gets unstable all over again, and that would be a little bit of a concern. But right now, the big concern is what we're dealing with currently on the table, and that is we do have a few tornado warnings, a couple tornado warnings, I should say, uh, that are out, and a severe thunderstorm warning that is right now in effect for a large portion of homes, northern Yazoo and western Atala counties. And again, wind potential remains high on this segment that is bowing out here just outside the Eden area and now heading for Brosville and Lexington. Ebenezer uh, over here, Coxburg, uh, those areas are also uh, in front of this particular storm cell and probably in the next 10 to 15 minutes we're going to see it moving into Lexington and again moving 35 miles an hour but yet there's a pretty good amount of wind um, being pushed out at the front end of the storm so we'll keep an eye on that um, as it continues moving eastward farther southwest again western Yazoo County that's the place right now that we have a tornado warning currently in effect and that's moving towards Krupp Highway 3 eventually we'll deal with this storm. If we can put on, um, let's just, we're looking at wind velocity here. I, I just don't think we're seeing much of anything else besides that. That almost is taking on a Boeing segment too, but again, you got to pay attention to what's happening here in the northern parts of the county. When you start seeing these little couplets, these little twists and turns breaking off of it, you got to be careful that the, that's not the next thing that's trying to develop. But I feel like at this point, we are plateauing for the time being. Now, this might be a five minute occurrence. Mm. <laughs> this could last for five minutes and then we're back to the races. But this is kind of how it's been uh, this evening is all of a sudden stuff fires up, really gets going, goes away, then fires up again just as intensely as it was the first time. So for now, we'll continue to watch what's going on. Again, watching the front end of that storm. It's a very curious one. That's been one of the more interesting cells we've been tracking for you tonight near Tolerville yeah, as that, it's moving towards Lexington. That goes back to the three points that we were just talking about. When you're looking at those wind surges, you can have uh, circulation on the top end of the line, center part of the line, and then the bottom end of the line. Usually these right here on the apex, the center part of the line, these are the ones that you have to watch out for that could be a little bit more a long lived. The top end and the bottom end tend to be more of these uh, these skipping and hopping type of situations. This one right here, uh, we just saw pop up there within the last uh, a couple of seconds here near uh, Toler uh, Tolerville. That's moving off towards Lexington. As we just mentioned, uh, right now it's 1255. Uh, the Lexington uh, warning. Uh, well, the the storm as it as it approaches you will be there within the next 10 minutes. So I would go ahead and take the course with least regret on this. If you're in central portions of Holmes County, including the city of Lexington, go ahead and start looking at this and saying, yeah, that doesn't look so great. Uh, so go ahead and take your tornado precautions. Now we're starting to get back into some trees here. OK, uh, I say that because it's coming off of the bluff. So now you're starting to get into some trees here. So if we're going to see a debris signature, we'd see it a little better, even though that we did see the one back over to the west earlier this evening. When we say debris signature again, that's being lofted, uh, whatever just happens to be, uh, you know, it could be trees. It could be, you know, unfortunately, at times it could be people's houses. Uh, you know, we've had that happen. We we had the report of a house being uh, damaged back over into uh, Sharkey County. I think uh, either Sharkey or Issaquina mm -hmm. County. I think Sharkey. Mm -hmm. uh, so again, it, it's possible. Uh, so again, we're watching that very closely. Tolerville, safe place now. I'd go ahead and take the course of least regret Lexington. Uh, you are underneath the severe thunderstorm warning, but it's with the tag of a tornado possible. Farther down to the south, Panther Swamp uh, uh, Refuge. Here. That's where this is at. So again, very rural uh, when it comes down to this warning here. Now this one I think was allowed to expire and I don't know why it's still on yeah. there. Sorry, they're going to come out with a new warning farther mm -hmm. south. The, uh, keep, I'm just letting you know. This we're gonna one? See, yeah, we're going to see a new warning box uh, the, uh, for circulation over southern Catahoula. Parish. Okay. So that's going to be the one. And that uh, might take it in two hours. Really. Yeah, that's going to be the one that's coming up uh, right there, how, coming across 460, uh, 425. I don't know if they would go all the way to It's probably going to take it to the river. The river. All right. And a new tornado warning just popped south of there. Mm -hmm. The other thing I want to point out is we now have a flash flood warning in effect for the lower delta. Uh, so they just issued a flash. Did I say watch? I meant to say flash flood warning. I may have said it's late at night. So a flash flood warning currently in effect uh, for Issaquina and also southern Sharkey counties um, and that includes Eagle Lake, a flash flood uh, 
flash flood warning currently in effect for that area. So just alerting you to that, that's a new development as we've been talking about. That's the next component that comes into all of this. The heavy rain that's going to be falling across parts of the area as we go through this morning, and it's going to cause considerable problems in many areas. Uh, but again, farther south, we're starting to see more activity. Let's go farther south because I know Peyton, you said they're going to put that warning out here any moment. Um, and that was the one. That was the one. Yeah. That, oh, that it was, was the, the tornado one. Yeah. Okay, well, listen, this is important because if we zoom out a little bit here, uh, this shows you where the next area to watch will be. It's going to be from Natchez through Port Gibson up through Vicksburg. I was originally saying uh, Port Gibson. Uh, to Vicksburg, but the way this is kind of working out here, maybe a little bit farther south too, depending on how this line enters the picture. So that storm cell on the southern end, again, open to the moisture, to the environment, that southern inflow, that really helps it along. Patrick. Uh, I was going to say, notice how the warning box is oriented. Yep. More northeastward. You're probably going to get more of a tornado situation if that warning box is oriented like this. Remember the one that was over Humphreys County and Holmes County? It was slanted more towards the east uh, directly. That means that that part of the line is leaning into the wind, uh, and that's where we're going to start to see the flood threat. I think as you start to see parts of that w that line start to turn more into the wind, which is still southerly right now, as it turns more into the wind, you're going to have a situation where more than likely flooding becomes more of a concern. But this storm right here, man, if it's not if it's not putting a tornado down, definitely got some wind yep. uh, again that right there on the apex and of that slow, bow. It's slowing up. It's mm -hmm. moving eastward now, and I'm telling you, that thing's going to be right over Lexington yeah. uh, here in the next few minutes, next five to ten minutes. So if you're in Lexington, uh, be ready, uh, but do be aware you're going to have some rough weather moving overhead here very, very in very short order. Uh, this is where we have the severe thunderstorm warning in effect, but it could tornado at just about any time because this storm has been just a real stickler. Uh, as far as the wind profile that it's been putting out, this is south of Chula here. Uh, Chula, you're about to get the worst of the storm, too. I know it's raining in many spots that I'm calling out here. <laughs> this is a horrible looking storm. You see the red, you see the purple. That's very heavy rain that is falling out of this particular thunderstorm in the western part of Holmes County, and it's going to be moving off to the east. And then southern Sharkey County, or really western, excuse me, western Yazoo County, uh, that storm also bringing a lot of torrential rain in that area. And then the new development that just happened here in the last few minutes is we now, by the way, that tornado warning has gone. The, the white box, we can get that out of our hair. It's nice to, to feel better about the situation. But the flash flood warning is now in effect for southern sections of Sharkey as well as southern Issaquina County. Several inches of rain has fallen mm -hmm. in a very short period of time. And just a heads up, the storm that we were just talking about here in Holmes County, what's happening right now is is as drier air aloft is coming down on the back side of the storm. It is rushing down and then pushing that storm out. That's why you're getting that Boeing segment. That is a lot of wind that's moving towards Lexington. I'd go ahead and be prepared for the potential for damaging straight line winds in the city of Lexington here fairly soon. Again, it's just a severe thunderstorm warning, right? Quote unquote. Um, that's how many times that we've heard these things, but damaging winds can do just as much damage as a tornado. It mm -hmm. doesn't matter if the winds are going in a circle or if they're going straight at you. Wind is wind and wind Whatever you stinks. want to call it, that's fine. Yeah. But the reality is it can cause as much damage from straight line winds uh, as every bit of a, a tornado. And, you know, we've we've run into folks in the public. I know all of us have been in that situation. I'm thinking back to Grand Gulf. Uh, remember the Grand Gulf area had yeah. the straight line winds. Uh, it was a microburst. And I had a lot of folks that wanted to argue about whether it was a tornado or microburst, we, we can tell you the definitions and how they're different, but either way, it caused a lot of damage and it was a microburst. It doesn't make a difference. We want to alert you to whether it's a wind threat or a tornadic threat. And you know, this storm is a strong storm regardless. Again, a severe thunderstorm moving through central and western areas of Holmes County just, right now. It just a heads up on that. They are considering that it, they could go with a tornado warning on it. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm saying course of least regret in Lexington. That's the next major town in line. Even with that being said, I mean, this has got some very heavy rainfall, maybe some hail associated with it just to the east of Chula. But right here, dead ringer for Lexington. And let's pixel query, uh, let's put some wind speeds on this, Peyton, right here on the front end of that line, 60 mile per hour winds. And now, granted, we're looking at about 
uh, 3,500, 4,000 feet above our heads. Uh, but that can very well, with the very heavy rainfall, transfer down to the mm -hmm. surface. So that's why we are concerned about damaging winds just as much as we are talking about the potential for a tornado. That, again, heading directly for Lexington. And I wouldn't be surprised here. Again, we're going over some rural areas here, but as soon as we get over here to a major populated center of the city of Lexington, we could start to hear some reports of damage. Again, uh, they're, they're going to upgrade to a tornado warning. All right, so, County. All right, okay, so it makes sense. That with makes this sense. Particular storm, you know, and if you could maybe put a hail track on it real quick. I just uh, I'm curious to see if there is, in fact, some hail with the storm and there is. Uh, it's not ridiculously large. It's penny sized hail, but there is hail with the storm nonetheless. And they're going to go downstream with another warning um, for Yazoo, Yazoo City as well. Okay. The one that's coming up. Uh, about to approach uh, the, the to prisons. Uh, so that's going to be on the south side of Yazoo City where we have the uh, the, the prison complex. So let's re let's remove the radar returns just for a second and pull out a little bit so we can give folks a vantage point as to what's going to happen. They'll watch it happen live on their screen here as this warning changes into a tornado warning and a new tornado warning gets issued for Yazoo County. You're watching, by the way, overnight early morning storm coverage uh, live on WLBT Jackson and WDBD Jackson. A new tornado warning now in effect, including the city of Lexington. This also will impact the northwestern section of Atala County. A new tornado warning now being issued. Let me get you the information on that. Uh, this will go until 2 o'clock in the morning until 2 a.m. Uh, severe thunderstorm capable of producing a tornado located over Howard or eight miles northeast of Thornton. This is moving northeast at 40 miles an hour. So we told you a little while ago that the same cell was moving east at 35. Now it's taking on more of a northeastern trajectory at 40 miles an hour. A potential for a tornado and quarter size hail. Again, Doppler radar indicating uh, the potential of this tornado moving through Holmes County right now in the northwestern section. That also includes the community of West uh, as as well as Durant and over through Brosville and over by Holmes community and just northwest of uh, Kosciuszko, not quite including the Kosciuszko area. I misspoke, by the way. It doesn't quite capture uh, Holmes Community College, but it gets very close to Durant. That's pretty much the boundary of this. And uh, just to point out something, it looks like there's a new, well, what's happening, again, it goes back to that circulation wrapping around on itself. As you get that Boeing segment that's happening, that's what's happening here. You still have strong winds, strong damaging straight line winds heading directly for Lexington. So uh, I'd say within the next two or three minutes, you're probably going to have strong winds moving into Lexington. But the tornadic portion of the storm is now on the back end of the storm. It's wrapping into itself back here closer to 49 East near uh, Milestone and Chula. So th this is where you could have a tornado. You could have a brief spin up tornado or maybe even just damaging winds coming straight at Lexington. So this is a multifaceted storm mm -hmm. uh, with the fact that you have a circulation on the north end and then you've got a secondary uh, area new tornado of strong warning. Winds. There it is. Yeah, new tornado warning now for Yazoo City. This one will go also until two o'clock in the morning. Uh, this includes southeastern Holmes County. So I mentioned Holmes community a moment ago. Well, it looks like it now comes it is up, included in that. Uh, it comes Just up about. Ba about about to the back door. So yeah, right. yeah, it well, actually does. Yeah. It's in there. OK, and Durant too. Regardless, it's there. Pierce Crossroad, that area, the Benton community. This goes until two o'clock in the morning and and it is a severe thunderstorm capable of producing a tornado located over Yazoo City right now. This is moving northeast at 45 miles per hour. Again, these are Doppler radar indicated. Treat them as if they're right on top of you because there will not be advanced warning. These are not the type of things that spotters can see typically in advance. They typically see them when they're right on them. Yeah. In this type of environment because it's the middle of the night. So please take cover immediately in Yazoo City immediately. So if you're listening to my voice, go away from windows, get to a center room in whatever building you're in right now and protect yourself from flying debris. That could involve putting pillows over you. You could also be wearing a helmet. Uh, I have actual uh, my workers helmet, right? What do I call that? The my construction helmet. I can't think for a second. A little late at night, but that's the kind of helmet you want to have. A football helmet works, whatever it may be. And the reason we encourage people to wear helmets to protect themselves from flying debris. A bathroom is usually a good place for people to go. Sometimes there's windows there, but hopping in the bathtub uh, provides a little bit of some security and shelter should there be any structural damage to the building you're in and there be any flying debris. So this is Yazoo City right here. We're looking off to the northwest. There's a cell and I'm 
watching that little kink right there uh, that's pretty close just northwest of Yazoo County High School. Uh, this is going to come across Highway 49 in the next five minutes. It's really coming across it now. So I would say if you're down closer to like the, the prison complex here on the southwest side of town, uh, coming up into downtown Yazoo City. So before you come up the hill, coming out of Yazoo City up to 49, uh, where 49 and 16 come together, 149 and 16 come together uh, here, uh, up here by the double quick, these areas here. You need to go ahead and be your tornado safe place right now. Yazoo City, downtown Yazoo City, being a safe place right now, interior room, away from windows, lowest floor of your home at the very same rate. We've got another storm that's also wrapping up to the north. Again, I don't want to get off of these too long because, again, you've got two things going on at the same time. See how this little S curls going on? I just mentioned out towards Chula. We were looking at that back end of the storm starting to wrap up on itself. It looked like it's happening again. Strong, uh, severe damaging wind potential into the city of Lexington. Possible tornado on the back end of this. Uh, just to the east of Chula, about to come up the bluff, maybe about, an hour, uh, about a mile or two east of Chula along Highway 12. So, again, you've got two circulations. One is exiting out of Chula. One, you've got another system, uh, more so the damaging wind threat coming up across uh, portions of uh, uh, Lexington. Again, 60 plus mile per hour winds. And then down in Yazoo City, you've got another storm again circulating and heading into the city of Yazoo City. Take your tornado precautions right now. Uh, here's here where 49 East and West cross uh, split off from the municipal golf course uh, back over here towards the Hampton Inn and uh, the Walmart up here on the north end of town. Again, right in through here, you need to be in your safe place. Downtown Yazoo City, time to act is right now. Okay, and what I want to remind you is this is what I was talking about. My hard hat, good thing to have at the home. Uh, again, a football helmet works just the, just the same. And I've even talked to some folks that have used pots. Uh, from the kitchen. So I'm going to put my hat off to the side here, but I'm just letting you know that uh, that's what I've got in my storm kit. Of course, most of the time in these types of weather situations, I'm here at work, but just letting you know that those are great things to use in these types of situations. All right, let's pull the radar off the screen for a second. Let's show you where these warnings are and point out the towns that are in the actual tornado warning. So if you, you know, can pick out where you are in relation to this Ebenezer, Ebenezer Coxburg Road, which is what you're looking at here west of Holmes Community College going out to 433. The town of Benton, Pickens, you're now under this tornado warning along with Vaughn and Brosville as well. Uh, that's where this storm is currently coming out of uh, the Yazoo City. It's right over you. It's right over 49 and basically near Highway 16 where it comes on in. This storm is moving northeastward. So if you live anywhere in the northern part of Yazoo and really just about anywhere in Holmes County, let's go jump the line here and go into Holmes County. Uh, go ahead. Speaking of Holmes County, uh, uh, the National Weather Service is looking at a potential uh, tornado de debris signature. Uh, they're not 100% confident that uh, this is an observed tornado, but something they are watching where uh, we were watching on the that first the top side rotation uh, near Chula where we may have uh, a potential tornado on the ground. OK, so are nonetheless, we... you need to get in your tornado safe place, right? Absolutely. Regardless, uh, because you won't have much time to act um, again a little bit. Um, it's a little bit murky out here uh, what we're watching, but you can see there's definitely something going on with this particular cell uh, that is just north and west of Lexington. There is definitely something happening out here um, and it's something we're taking very seriously. We've been tracking this for I don't know how long at this point. Um, it is just outside of Lexington. If you have a Lexington address, you're probably being impacted by this storm right now anyway. Uh, but again, uh, this is a serious situation where we could have a large tornado out here in the northern part of Holmes County. We are on the fringes, uh, so to speak, with uh, seeing it from a, a debris signature perspective. But let's go back to debris signature and kind of see uh, what we've got here. I I'm watching, <clears throat> watching just west of Lexington. That may also be just the wind, right, because the wind was something that we were looking at that was pretty strong. It looks like if we were to have one, it would be right there right on over Highway 12. Highway 12 um, and that makes sense because right, it was near the Howard uh, community. So that makes sense, Howard Road there and the Howard community. But mm -hmm. let's come out a little bit and just see, and we'll roll it back maybe a couple frames and, and see if we've got anything out here um, that really just stands out. It's hard to say, hard to say, but you know, looks like something popped possibly right there uh, between 
um, Highway 17, let's just say, and in the Lexington area. All right, this is our new severe thunderstorm warning. And as I said, it's moving in now to parts of Claiborne County and Western Fayette counties. So this is the new severe thunderstorm warning. Western going on. Jefferson County. Did I say, I'm sorry to say that. Western <laughs> Fayette County. Yeah, Western Jefferson County. I was looking at the city of Fayette. And this puts you right close, close, but not quite over it. Alcorn State, just right there on the edge of it. Where you've got 61 here and the trace. So we're looking across. Is this a, a tornado possible tag? Yes. Peyton? Yes. Yeah. So that's the tornado possible tag right there. And that storm is actually located near Gretna and uh, over by Shady Grove in Louisiana. And it's moving off to the north and east. So as I've been saying, get ready. If you live Alcorn State, Port Gibson, up through Warren County, uh, that's where this storm is going to be. And that's what we see. The Windsor ruins included here. Alcorn State included in the severe thunderstorm warning and then across into Louisiana. So that new severe thunderstorm warning just being put out again for that storm that has looked tornadic for a time in the east central part of Louisiana. This and, will go until two o'clock in the morning. And the good thing is that the, the students are off campus at yeah, Alcorn. Right, so that, that's good news at that point. But you know, we still have obviously a lot of people in and around that area sure. uh, that we need to get uh, aware of what's going on. Uh, again, let's go back up to the northern storm uh, that's up here in Holmes County. I want to drop south out of that from the uh, other storm. But again, you've got circulation back here near Chula again, crossing Highway 12. Then you've got damaging winds ahead of that. So again, this is why we said multifaceted storm with this one coming out of Holmes County. This one's cross Highway 12 on the tornadic side. Again, the circulation here just to the east of Chula by about uh, two miles or so. Strong winds are crossing Highway 17 uh, near and north of Lexington, heading up towards Acona. And again, that will head up further north into southern sections of, uh, of Carroll County as well. So again, this is twofold here with circulation here, possible tornado, and then the possibility for damaging straight line winds ahead of it. So you might get a one two punch here if you're in the northern sections of uh, Holmes County here. But again, damaging wind threat going through Lexington presently, tornadic threat on the western side of that storm. Down south into Yazoo City, again, a storm system, again, circulation right over the city of, uh, of Yazoo City. Again, we told you be in your safe place now, interior room, away from windows, lowest floor of your home. That's going to continue its track off to the north and east. As Dave was mentioning, you, you can also see there's a little kink down here closer to Yazoo County High School just off of Highway 49. So again, this is the main concern secondary here. We're watching this as it crosses over 49, but the circulation is directly over Yazoo City right now. Again, downtown Yazoo City, safe place now, interior room away from windows, lowest floor of your home, north into downtown. You're starting to get up here near Walmart near the Hampton Inn. Uh, you know, got McDonald's out here. You, uh, out here by the municipal golf course and the chemical plant here just north of highway uh, just uh, north of the um, the um the junction they are 49 east and west so something else to be cognizant of that's going to continue its northeastward track looks like they just retired a warning on the back side of the system too so that's the story there uh, but again this uh, potential cell is right over yazoo city it's moving northeastward which unfortunately will put holmes county uh and the path of this potential cell as it moves northeastward. It's not my imagination, I don't think, guys, but I am definitely seeing a slowdown in the forward momentum of the activity in Holmes County. Uh, I've been watching it here through the, the past few scans. I'm not talking about that the actual system is weakening, but I'm just seeing that it seems to be slowing up in its forward movement. I don't know if you agree or disagree with that on Pey uh, with Peyton, but uh, you could see that farther southwest near Yazoo City, it's still maintaining a pretty good pace and it's moving from southwest to northeast, but it seems like there's a little bit of a slowing of the forward momentum, or maybe we've just been talking about <laughs> <laughs> that particular cell for a long period of time, but it doesn't feel like to me that it's moving nearly as fast as some of the other storms back behind it. And that would lend to more of a potential flash flooding situation uh, from this line of storms just raining over the same place over and over and over again. Because even if you're not getting severe weather at your house, you're getting some severe rain that's falling from the sky right now. And that's the question mark. You know, yesterday when we were having our morning meeting, I sat and looked over at Chris Fields, uh, who's a reporter here at WLBT and Fox 40, who lives up in Canton. I said, let's hope that it, you know, can't can't go through three floods in a year, right? right. Let's hope that that's not the case here, uh, because eventually, yes, Canton, you're 
one of the next major towns in line as this makes its way off to the east. Madison, Jackson, I think we're about an hour to two hours away as long as this continues its eastward moment, uh, movement uh, to get into the metro area. We mentioned this earlier. At some point, the forward motion of this line becomes zero and becomes an issue of flash flooding. And it could be several waves of heavy rainfall that will continue through the morning commute, through the morning time, and then a secondary severe weather threat for our eastern counties because guess what? You will still be in the warm sector for the entire day tomorrow. Yep. So, oh, well, today <laughs> because it's Wednesday now. But you get the idea here because places like McGee, Raleigh, Forest, we may be talking about tornado warnings for you guys at like 2 and 3 o'clock in the afternoon tomorrow. Mm -hmm. If you're in front of that line, yeah. absolutely. I do want to point out, just saw a little... Uh, part of the atmospheric sampling here in northern Louisiana. Behind the line, there's absolutely virtually no shear. Uh, the shear is completely gone. It's all along this line of storms and in front of it across central and south Mississippi. So to Patrick's point, uh, this thing slows up somewhere in the middle of the state. Again, if you're in front of the front, I know that sounds weird, but if you're on the front side of it, you're going to be looking at that threat of severe weather. But if you're on the back side of the system, uh, you're, you're in the clear as far as the severe threat goes, but you're still going to have some rain to deal with, but it's going to be a much different story for you as the day plays out. And I think it's safe to say at this point, I think it's safe to say that Humphreys County, Sharkey County, Issaquina counties, at least in our area, are probably uh, dealing with the worst of it right now or have been in the last couple of hours, but the rest of the day probably looks the best for you. Whereas the rest of the area, uh, not so much. And where this line stops will be key to see, who, to, to see who gets the worst of the weather as we go through the day today. So that's why this is a, a long event for many places. Some places may wind up with getting severe weather for quite some time out of it. Other spots, not so much. You had what you had over the past few hours. And I think in the lower delta, at least, it's just going to be rain going forward, not nearly as much as severe weather. But unfortunately, that's not the case in Yazoo and Holmes counties right now, or even in Warren counties, as we still have storms that are moving in from the southwest. And that goes back to the fact that it's like as this line moves eastward, yes, the back end of the line, you're going to go into a period where there's just nothing going on. Uh, for our friends in Issaquina, Sharkey, Humphreys County, you will get to a point to where there is your activity of weather is going to be almost nil to none. And as Dave was mentioning behind this line, you're basically done with the potential for severe weather as long as it makes for forward progress. Now, the problem is, is that, you know, just as we were on the air with you guys here late last uh, late last night into this morning, we're going to be on the air for our eastern counties during the afternoon hours tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's going to be a it's a long process here. This is not going to be just we're done here. Once it gets out of here, we would hope that it was like eight, nine o'clock in the morning. We're done with severe weather right. and everything moves on and we're all hunky door for the rest of Wednesday. Unfortunately, this is an all day event, right? You know, uh, you know, we, we said it's like probably the next 24 hours. Unfortunately, <laughs> and that was at six o'clock last night. Um, yeah, probably going to be dealing with this for at least the next I would say 14 hours mm -hmm. to 18 hours uh, before all this is all said and done. But for our friends out to the west, you're improving central areas. You're next in line. Eastern areas later on today. As long as you're on the back side of this system, OK, your weather is going to be much better than everyone else's. I'm not saying you're not going to have rain. You're probably going to have rain at least, but just letting you know it's going to be a much different experience for you. Let's take the radar off real quickly here again. Show folks where we have tornado warnings currently in effect. Most of Holmes County under a tornado warning right now. That includes Lexington and Durant and the community of West. Also Pickens and then back through Evans. And now Yazoo City, you have been cleared of the tornado warning. So good news to report the tornado warning has been cleared for your community. Yazoo City, but still if you're in Benton, Evans, Pickens, and up through Durant, West, and Lexington, you're going to be looking at this tornadic threat continuing through at least the next 30 to 40 minutes as this storm works its way on through. So that's the story there. Let's go farther southwest now. And again, watch that storm that's moving into the southwestern part of our state. There is a tornado with the cell farther southwest. This is a severe. Is that a regular severe thunderstorm or is that now? That's a uh, tornado that, possible. Okay, so severe thunderstorm warning with tornado possible. And again, this is just west of Port Gibson. You're not under any warnings right now in Port Gibson or Fayette. But uh, regardless that Alcorn State may be off right now, uh, Lorman, you are still included in this uh, severe thunderstorm warning, and we ask you to stay on alert for this storm as it moves on in. Uh, this will take you up close to the uh, 
uh, Grand Gulf nuclear power plant, which we were just talking about about a half hour ago. So uh, again, lots of rough weather moving in across central Mississippi. Uh, we're looking, let's look at the bigger picture. I want to see if there's any additional tornado warnings out there. And as far as right now goes, these are the only two in Mississippi that we've got going on right now. That's the only one in Louisiana. You know, this storm system, just so you know, has produced about 20 tornadoes that did some kind of damage. Again, it's all speculative until the, the crews get out there and confirm it. But 20 tornadoes today in Texas. This is the same system that did that. So let's hope that it doesn't try to pull off a repeat performance here. But I am a little bit concerned now about that cell. And I remember I was, we were talking about South Louisiana. We were looking between Baton Rouge and Lafayette a little while ago. But now we've got that cell that is sitting just south of Natchez. Let's go a little bit closer into the southwest corner of the state. And that's probably something we got to keep an eye on here because that's in the warm flow uh, and in the moisture. And it's out ahead of this cluster of storms. So if you're in Natchez, Start paying attention to the weather. That's what we're doing for you. But we want you to be on alert as these storms are starting to fire up out ahead of it. Yeah, let's go back up to the uh, northern storm again. The ones coming up through Holmes County. And again, uh, I don't like seeing that 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 kind of S shape back here. That is giving indication of circulation again within the storm. What we call a bookend vortice. Remember, you've got the winds coming at you straight at uh, Lexington. But on the north end of this, on the bookend, on the top end of the storm, See that circulation back here. That's what we're dealing with near the Acona area. So again, that's about to move over into Carroll County, but northern areas of Holmes County safe place now crossing Highway 17 near Acona. Now, if we've got any report, uh, I don't think we've gotten any reports out of Lexington of the damaging winds, but even along this line again, you can get these little embedded little circulations, but the one of note here is up near Acona. The one to the south, let's go to the Yazoo County storm. This one is approaching uh, Pierce Crossroad. This is going to be north of Benton, but again, you see one, two, let's say one, two main circulation here, secondary one coming down uh, Highway 16. See how Yazoo City is now outside of the warning. Okay, so we can get the all clear to Yazoo City. Now the Yazoo City, the proper of Yazoo City. If you got a Yazoo City address here along Highway 16, I'd stay in my safe place uh, for another minute or two, a couple minutes, uh, until this moves past the Benton community. But again, here's Benton, Highway 433 and through here, Highway 432, takes you back up towards uh, Holmes State Park and places like that, up through the Holmes, area, uh, Holmes County area. Again, you've got two circulations here, really one circulation and one that could form here near Benton. Take the course of least regret here near Benton, but the main circulation will be crossing Highway 430 33 here just north of the Benton community here in the next little bit. But as I mentioned, again, if you're over towards Yazoo City, we can give you the all clear. But if you're like have a Yazoo City address that's on the east side of town, uh, as you come along Highway 16, uh, that area, uh, we need you to stay in your safe place just a little bit longer until we can give you the all clear on that one. So we're continuing to provide you with severe weather coverage here during the early morning hours as storms move across central and south Mississippi. We have had reports of some damage so far tonight right from one home uh, that was in southern Sharkey Sharky. County. It's hard to know from which potential cell because again we've seen some of these storms repeating the performance if you will as they move across uh, the, the north central parts of Mississippi especially the lower delta north of the Big Black River. That's where we've been seeing the most amount of action so far this evening. Uh, beyond that, there haven't been a lot of reports. We've had a lot of reports of uh, by law enforcement or storm spotters actually seeing these storm cells, seeing tornadoes. Uh, but as far as getting other reports of damage, so far so good. We're doing pretty good on that regard. Uh, this is the main line of storms that is continuing to advance into the area. And again, um, you may have a few hours of a lull later this morning or over the next few hours ahead of that line of storms. But once the day gets going again and the atmosphere starts warming up, heating up ahead of the front, that's where we could have more instability and it could lead to more showers and storms and the potential for severe weather going forward. So we want to make sure that you're well aware that this is going to be a longer term type of situation than what we're normally uh, talking about here in relative terms to all the severe weather outbreaks and systems that we've been tracking for you on TV. But here we are in the middle of the night. 
and we're continuing to watch this line of storms advancing in. I uh, just saw a big smile come from Peyton's face. Uh, Yazoo County and Holmes County right now um, are seeing uh, the worst of this weather uh, moving in. We do have tornado warnings currently in effect. And again, we have not had any ground truth reports coming in from this area just yet. But again, the storms continue to fire up and we're doing a lot of play by play with you folks because nighttime tornadoes, as you know, are some of the hardest to spot in advance. You've got the nightfall that you're dealing with, so it makes it impossible to really see this stuff with the exception of having frequent lightning or when the storm is right on you. And so what we're trying to do is give you as much advance notice as possible for these storms that are out there. The orange color here, that's a severe thunderstorm warning, but the red boxes, that's where we have tornado warnings currently in effect. And as Patrick pointed out, there's was a pretty intense cell located just north of Lexington on Highway 17 near the Acona area. That's going to exit the county at some point, but I think it's going to be really close to the West community. It's north of Bowling Green, and it's just such a bad storm sitting over town anyway that uh, over the Lexington area northward uh, that this is something to watch for the wind, but the brunt of this particular cell should cross over here uh, into Carroll County here before long. So that should happen uh, within the next few minutes. We continue to watch it again. I feel like this is uh, and I don't need to harp on the same point, but I feel like this is taking on a slower forward momentum than before. But again, this could be because of the uh, the nature of the actual cell, the structure, as Patrick pointed out, the bookend potential for it. Go ahead, Patrick. Uh, I was going to say just to your point, you know, slowing down these storms. Last flood warning in effect, Catahoula Parish and Concordia Parish back in Louisiana, and that goes back to the point of yes, it, this eventually becomes a flood threat for a couple of hours, and that's what we are kind of harping on. Let's take max three behind me, and again, uh, you'll see this line of showers and thunderstorms here again, fairly well modeled here this morning. All right, so we'll step this forward. Notice four o'clock in the morning approaching Metro Jackson. One thing to note here is as this storm is still making progress off to the east, we're still going to have these little wind surges. OK, these little embedded circulations will still be possible. So we're not out of the woods on the tornado warnings yet. OK, we will have a kind of a double fold here as we go through the coming hours. Now again, four o'clock in the morning, very active for the morning commute across Metro Jackson. So the question mark is where does this front slow down? That's seven o'clock in the morning. The front has worked this way between between, uh, I'd say like Wilkinson County, a Mick County back up towards uh, Meadville, Brookhaven, uh, back over towards Eastern Rankin County out towards Forest. Notice how the line really doesn't move all that much over that uh, course of about uh, four to five hours, dumping copious amounts of rain during that same time frame. That's lunchtime on Wednesday, and then the front starts to get the push off to the east, and we'll probably have another emerging severe weather threat during the afternoon hours as the front moves into the warm sector once again. Even with that being said, we're probably going to have sporadic warnings of severe thunderstorm or tornado warnings, even as that line just kind of hanging out during the day today. So it, that's why we keep saying marathon, not a sprint on this one. Four yeah. o'clock in the afternoon, front's moving down towards the Pine Belt, and we'll start to see the clearing process happening as we head through the overnight period of Wednesday. I cannot wait until Thursday gets here. Oh, me too. And I hope we're not still here talking about it when it gets here. But anyway, you can see right now we've got the tornado warnings in effect for Holmes County and for northern sections of Yazoo County. I was going to ask Peyton if you can look at uh, that flash flood warning that's popped. Uh, for parts of uh, Issaquina and also Sharkey. I don't know if you can pull it up, but I wonder how much rain they've actually tracked in this particular cell um, during the past uh, hour or so. It looks like two to four inches of rain that mm -hmm. has fallen this evening, right? Um, yeah. Evening overnight, but we could see there but 3.3 inches of rain. Again, a lot of that fell in an hour, two hours time, right? So that's going to cause some problems. So that's the kind of rainfall that we're seeing out there. And so one, I said earlier, one to two inches, one to three inches of rain falling per hour. Yeah, that looks pretty accurate based on uh, just that estimate alone. So this is the bigger picture here. Uh, by the way, you're starting to get some rain around Carthage, watching a line of showers starting to fire up in Simpson County right now. That's a uh, close to Delo, not quite to McGee, uh, but it stretches back down to about the Prentice area. There's a storm straggling the river there south of Natchez. That's going to wind up in Natchez here before long. You're already starting to get some rain in the city, uh, but you're going to be looking at heavier rain moving in over time. And um, as I look here, Kosciuszko, not much has happened so far tonight. Brookhaven, you had a few showers earlier. Copiah County, we haven't been ignoring it. There's just nothing going on there. 
um, and that's the way it's been. But again, these tornado warnings continue right here for Holmes and Yazoo counties as these storms get a little bit farther north, a little bit farther east from where they were tracking just a little while ago. Again, there's a northeastward movement to these storms uh, that continues out there, and we haven't had any additional reports so far. Um, that's where the worst part of the storm, it looks like now, is almost over the border. It's not completely over the border in Carroll County, but it's almost there. Still sitting there in the northern part of Holmes County. This has just been a storm that's been taking its time, in my opinion, uh, moving out of the area. Kosciuszko, not under any warnings right now. Pickens, you are under the tornado warning from that cell that's sitting off to the west. Bentonia, you are not. Port Gibson, you're on the edge of it. And then now we have a new severe thunderstorm warning, don't we? Yep, for uh, Adams County. Yeah, so Adams the same County. Storm. And uh, that one uh, right there for the Natchez community. And that's from that storm that I've been talking about. And it does have a tornado possible. Yeah, tag. yeah, I thought so. Uh, that's right there coming out of the Slocum and Shaw communities in East Central Louisiana. Let me get you the information on this. And um, this goes until 2.15 a.m., 2.15. We have a severe thunderstorm warning now in effect for the city of Natchez and much of Adams County. Uh, this goes till, like I said, 2.15. 60 mile an hour wind gusts are possible. Uh, right now there could be some damage as a result of the storm as it moves in, so just be aware of that. Severe thunderstorm near Blackhawk, 18 miles south of Monterey, moving northeast at 45 miles per hour, so 45 miles per hour, and that's going to put it up into Adams County here um, in the next hour or so. So we continue to see more storms firing up, and I think that uh, this particular cell is something to watch as it gets closer to the city of Natchez over the course of the next half hour. Uh, probably that's about how long it's going to take to get there. Can we storm track it real quick? Mm -hmm. um, just give folks uh, this is by the St. Catherine Creek National Wildlife Refuge. Um, that's right in front of it there, but then you start getting up on 61 here and you start finding more population um, in this area. So uh, right now there's Slocum and Shaw and then we push it out and you can see that it's going to be very close to Natchez by about uh, 206, so about a half hour, 30 minutes is what I was saying uh, just a little while ago. And that's about how long it's going to take uh, to get its way up there. So uh, a noisy night in Adams County tonight with a pretty intense thunderstorm moving in. Again, the potential for a tornado, but it is not at this point in time a tornado warning. So that's an important distinction to make. Rest of the area. You can see the line is moving further east, but there's not nearly as much activity taking place in the Metro Jackson area right now. Probably still going to be another hour, maybe two uh, before this works its way in. And then we do have the severe thunderstorm warnings that are for the southwest part of Mississippi. I am happy to report that tornadic cell that was in Louisiana. They have dropped the tornado warning on it, so that's good news. Um, we didn't want to see a lot of activity picking up up there. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, these are the only two, two tornado warnings going on right now um, with this particular storm system. So got a lot of flash flood warnings popping out there, that's for sure, uh, with one to three inches of rain falling in usually an hour, two hours worth of time. And as this front continues to move in and kind of just becomes like a sloth, uh, we're going to continue to see um, heavy rain impacting a large portion of the area and flash flooding becomes a concern. So Holmes County, Yazoo County right now seeing the worst of the weather. Patrick, you getting any reports of anything at this point? I haven't seen anything coming through just yet. That's, you know, sometimes good news is, you know, uh, no news is good news. Yeah. So let's let's hope that continues to be the case. But sometimes delayed reports come in and it does take a little bit of time for that to happen as uh, the EMA officials start to get out there. The sheriff's office starts to get out there after the storms have uh, passed through. So again, uh, we've got two tornado warnings, one that's moving out of um, are moving through eastern portions of Holmes County. Again, you've got the bookend vortice here. That's where we've got the circulation that's now moved up into southern portions of Carroll County. So again, circulation moving up out of Carroll County, but still strong wind potential moving through uh, eastern portions of Holmes County, heading out towards the west community. I wouldn't advise anybody driving along I-55 from Durant all the way up to Baden right now. So again, between the Durant exit all the way up to the Baden exit, probably don't want anybody driving along that. But even with that being said, you've got the circulation back here. See how there's a little kinks along that line, you know, as it works its way down. So even with the main circulation up here north and east of Vocona nearing Blackhawk uh, up into Carroll County, then you've got these little embedded little circulations trying to form. See right there, right there. 
moving closer to I-55 between Vaden and West. So again, West, go ahead and be in your safe place now. Interior room away from windows. Maybe we got some folks who are, who can get us up in Vaden as well. Go ahead and take the course of least regret. Get to your safe place as well. Durant, strong wind potential heading in your direction as it blows eastward towards I-55 and Highway 51 between West and Durant. So again, multifaceted storm, tornadic potential in these little circulations here along the line between the Carroll and North uh, Southern Carroll, Northern Holmes County, uh, all the way to again near West and then farther south. That's a strong wind damaging wind threat coming down Highway 12 approaching Durant presently high 55 here and highway 51 between West and Durant. Let's go further south again. The other warning that we've been uh, talking about a little bit more diffused on this one as it's coming out of Yazoo County into Southern Holmes County right now. Again, this was the storm that we were talking about just north of Benton uh, that's moving across highway 433 here again. It's moving up into some rural lands as well, heading up into the home state park here soon enough. But again, uh, coming up near Ziegler,ville Brazville and eventually making its way over highway 17 uh, soon enough uh, as well. Well, but uh, again, general track here will take it out towards Goodman and Holmes Community College here over the next little bit if it stays on the same track. But keep in mind, again, this one looks a little bit weaker as well. It goes back to the fact of what we were just talking about a couple of minutes ago. Let's just go wide scale on this a regular radar. And again, how this line of storms is kind of leaning itself into the wind and as it's leaning itself into the wind. It's slowing itself down. So gradually we're going to transition from this from tornadic potential. Notice how that line of storms really hasn't moved all that much. This is, you know, this is why I put my arm out there yesterday and I was just like, huh, look at me. Um, it's like I, I need an oil can. Uh, but here's the situation that we got going on here. That's what's going to slow things down and cause the flood threat to emerge. OK, we've got two severe thunderstorm warnings on the back end of this uh, line. OK, so when we will start to transition from flood uh, from tornadic threat north. We'll try to go into flash flood threat for fairly quickly. The southern end of the line becomes the more dominant thing as we head through the overnight period tonight into the early hours of tomorrow. So, uh, well, I say overnight hours like it's not overnight night right now. We're almost at 140 in the morning. So again, we are in the overnight hours going into the very early hours of your Wednesday. But again, keep in mind again, southern areas may get a little bit more active while the northern areas may start to taper off on the severe side of things. But but flood threat becomes more the uh, more prevalent thing. So right now it's coming up on 138 139 in the morning and uh, you can still see we are monitoring uh, two tornado warnings that are in effect for Yazoo County and Holmes County southwest part of the state. There are severe thunderstorm warnings right now. You got some heavy rain moving in and by the way, we haven't forgotten you in Vicksburg, uh, but the worst of the weather traveled north of you. Now it looks like the worst of the weather is coming in uh, to the south of you, but you are dealing with some heavy, <coughs> excuse me, heavy rain right now in Warren County uh, right over the Vicksburg area. Let's zoom into Vicksburg, show you what's going on and you can see heavy rain over the city at this point and that stretches off to the southwest. Uh, just so you know, in Sharkey County, uh, Highway 61 is closed in both directions. Uh, this is going to be because of the down power lines along Highway 61 between Sandy Road and Dorsey Road. Okay. Sandy Road and Dorsey Road. Uh, that's because of um, the situation that's ongoing right now with the uh, with the with the storm that rolled through there earlier this evening. So again, that would be up on Highway 61 between um, Sandy Road and Dorsey Road uh, because of the power lines that fell earlier this morning. That roadway, Highway 61, is shut down in both directions until they clear that up. And so uh, I just want to show you the extent of heavy rain that's falling out there right now. I mean, it's just really something else. You know, uh, Jackson, I've been watching our tower cam uh, slightly. There's been a lot of lightning in the distance um, that's been showing up in the skies out there, uh, probably from the storms off to the north and to the west of the Jackson area. But you know what? Yazoo County still dealing with that tornado warning and also in Holmes County as well. It, this is what's so frustrating about this kind of weather in the middle of the night is we just don't have a lot of reports coming in. We don't have a lot of folks that tell us when there's damage. The Highway 61 thing, uh, we might have been fortunate on that because there are storm spotters that were out there, so they kind of witnessed the damage that was taking place. Uh, but this is what we're seeing right now. Heavy rain that continues to fall out there, and the heaviest of the weather uh, during the course of this evening has fallen in the lower delta. And that's why we do have a flash flood warning in effect for Issaquina County and for Southern Sharkey County, which, by the way, Peyton, if you can, give us a little update um, 
So tell us what you're seeing as far as power outages go, because these storms have been progressing uh, eastward during the course of the night. And um, I know Sharkey County had about, you were telling us earlier, 70 percent of the population. Yeah, so on poweroutage.us, mm -hmm. uh, they are only reporting, I don't know if the entire county is covered by Entergy, but uh, if this is uh, correct, um, that the entire county is currently without power. Okay, so, what, so whatever it's measuring is saying, you know, yes. yeah. Or all Entergy customers that they uh, measure out there are currently without power. And that's 1,900, almost 2,000 customers without power, uh, where we did see uh, observed tornadoes pass through, especially the southern part of the state, where Highway 61 uh, is closed that Patrick just mentioned. Right. And how about any other counties that are seeing uh, power outages so far uh, from the overnight? Uh, it's really just uh, Sharkey if we are talking about solely central Mississippi. Yeah, and that makes yeah. sense. If all those power lines are down around uh, Highway 61, that would be the main thoroughfare to, to have power. And uh, just so you know, what we've got it up on Traffic Tracker, uh, so take Max through behind me, and uh, again, kind of give you uh, kind of a show where this is located at. Again, it's in the far southern sections of Sharkey County here. Again, near the Kelso community, the areas that we were talking about earlier, uh, there, uh, there's Dorsey Road right there. That's where we were just talking about where the power lines are all across the lot of the uh, roadway. And as Dave was just mentioning, more than likely because of the fact that that's going to be your main roadway into the South Delta, uh, you know, a lot of the power lines and main and transmission lines for a lot of the towns up along Highway 61 are going to follow that main line. So that's why uh, that's going to be an issue. Uh, they should, uh, in theory, have it. Uh, well, they won't have it fixed or at least cleared until eight o'clock this morning. OK, that's what in that's theory. Reporting. And there that well, it, that's the thing It's uh, yeah. as long as uh, NDOT can get out there, of course, they got to get energy out there as mm -hmm. well uh, to to help clear those uh, uh, the roadway. But it's probably going to take longer for the power to come back. But the, to clear the roadway is probably going to be until about eight o'clock this morning. So I'm starting to notice an uptick in activity right now on some of the storms in the central, really east central part of Mississippi. And, and Dave, I'm Go. becoming right. a little bit more concerned on the storm um, that's going to be moving into Adams County. It is uh, we are a decent ways out from the radar mm -hmm. site, uh, but it is showing some signs of broad rotation. So uh, just a heads up for Adams County. Can we look at it from the Slidell perspective maybe and, and kind of that's and it's still, it's, it, OK, so we're right on the edge. Actually, I think there. that's Jackson. That's Jackson. Oh, that's but Jackson. That's Slidell. Um, oh, that's no, actually that, Polk County. Yeah, there you go. That's Slidell. There we go. All right. So, yeah, we're on the fringes there, but yeah, we have to keep an eye on that storm that's headed for Natchez from the south. There it is. That's a better way of looking at it right there, uh, right on the Mississippi River. Um, to the south of Natchez. So that's moving from south to north. We've got to keep an eye on that particular storm. Good call, Peyton. Um, there it is. Um, and then I'm watching what's going on here. Look at this in eastern Itala County. These storms are really starting to fire up too. Uh, they weren't doing too much a little while ago when they were over Lee County, but now uh, east of Kosciuszko, those storms are starting to fire up a little bit more. And I'm seeing a lot more activity in the Pine Belt and uh, closer to Meridian. So the showers that are in Simpson County, I wonder if they start moving northeastward again. Just paying attention here, some of our eastern counties that haven't seen much activity so far. Can we zoom into it, like the McCool area of uh, Itala County and just get a better vantage point. You can see those, those storms are starting to pick up in intensity, are they not? Yeah, and and that's the thing is that the storm, any storms that can flare up in mm -hmm. the environment that we're in right now, yeah. ahead of that main line, uh, definitely still have an opportunity to be able to They can rotate. take advantage of this yeah. atmosphere, and there's definitely rotation in the atmosphere anyway, so yeah. it's not like it's hard for them to tap into. The question is, will they become uh, surface-based in the sense, will they actually have a chance to really uh, connect? Uh, but right now, these cells are definitely popping up out there, and uh, eastern Itala County, we're just keeping an eye on what's going on with those storms there. The tornado threat continues uh, in Holmes County as well as the eastern section of Yazoo County and northwestern sections of Itala County, which includes the community of West. And also we're looking at Pickens and Lexington and Durant and Goodman. So those are the areas right now that still are under a tornado warning. We go back to the bigger view here and the bigger view shows you where the most intense weather is taking place. When you see red on the screen, that's heavy rain. Uh, when you see start seeing purple, that's intense. And then we're monitoring what's going on down here uh, in Adams County because that could be the next place where we have a tornadic threat. So we want you to be on alert if you're in Natchez because there is a cell hugging the river right now, the Mississippi River, that is moving from south to northeast. The same is true um, in the northern part of Adams County as well. So a tornadic threat continues. By the way, a tornado watch is in effect 
for our entire area, just about. There's two counties that are not included right now. Jefferson, Davis, and Walthall counties are not included in our viewing area in this particular warning, but a tornado in this particular watch, but a tornado watch is in effect until six o'clock this morning for much of the area as this front moves on in. There could be additional watches later today. Um, we expect that and I would not be surprised to see some counties in the lower delta deleted or removed from uh, the watch that's in effect. We do have a tornado watch that goes until 2 a.m. Uh, for some of those counties. So let's see what happens here in about the next 14, 13 minutes or so. I wouldn't be surprised if they, if they, because they're in that original watch. Yeah. Um, you see that, uh, well, it's kind of hard to see. On, it's right on here. There. It's There's th a thicker line yeah, there. Yeah, right in there. And that's the, that's the original watch that was out until two o'clock this morning. That includes Humphreys, yeah. Holmes, uh, Humphreys, as well as uh, Sharkey and Issaquina. Based off of what we're seeing right now, mm -hmm. I would not be surprised if that one's allowed to drop and doesn't come back. Well, yeah, I mean, it makes sense. Uh, they have taken out mm -hmm. the Washington County and they've yeah. taken out uh, those areas of the lower Delta. So um, I, I would not be surprised and we'll know for sure here in about uh, 13 minutes or so. But again, the rest of the area tornado watch, which means there's a potential for tornadoes to happen uh, in the atmosphere that we're dealing with. And that's before 6 a.m. And there will probably be another revision coming our way um, when it comes time for 6 a.m. to get around here. Um, let's go back to radar, show you what's happening with that. And again, the uh, most significant damage we've had reported so far this evening has been in Southern Sharkey County, Highway 61, where uh, power lines are down. And that's where Peyton noticed earlier that that's where we have the biggest uh, concentration of folks without power. Uh, Entergy customers, every single one of them, according to the latest report in Sharkey County, is currently without power. And Patrick mentioned there could be a restoration closer to 8 o'clock this morning. That's just to get the power lines off the road. Right. That's oh, not to get even, the power lines off the road. That's not, not to, even to get yeah. the power back on. Well, that's a totally different story. Yeah. yeah, I mean, who knows how long that could take. So, thank you for the clarification yeah. there. But you could still see heavy rain in the eastern part of Holmes, heavy rain in eastern Yazoo, and then we've got some pretty heavy rain moving into the southwest corner of Claiborne and Northwestern Jefferson counties right now. Let's go into Adams County and uh, pull up the storm here uh, that we're watching. And this is headed uh, right along 61 just about, and it's probably gonna come right over Natchez before long. There's a heavy downpour uh, just about over downtown right now, but that's not associated with what's going on farther south over the St. Catherine Creek National Wildlife Refuge. That's where that particular cell is going to be moving northeastward. So if you and live, go ahead. They're, they're going to be coming out with a new warning for Adams County. Tornado. tornado. Yes. Okay, so let's get ready for that. A new tornado warning is going to be coming for Adams County. We want you to be on alert. Uh, this is the storm we've been watching. And uh, Let's see, we'll have that out in a second. Uh, we are seeing some inflow outflow uh, right along the Mississippi River. This is just south southwest of Natchez right now, and it's moving in. Um, and so we are just waiting to get the details on that, but we should have a tornado warning being issued for Adams County. Uh, any seconds so and just... unfortunately our our camera in Natchez is down right oh, now. So great. I, I'm working on getting the MDOT cameras All right. worked into the system. Well, so. we're going to we're, we're with you here, folks, and we're going to stay on this and continue to uh, watch this storm. Just waiting for the tornado warning to get issued so you can and see we it just live. got an email in about uh, potential damage out of Sharkey County uh, near Anguilla where they're saying a trailer park is damaged. OK, that so. would have been uh, probably the first storm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 That looked the strongest as it was moving through earlier this evening. At least the one in Sharkey County. That, that was the one that had the had the debris signature, right? Mm -hmm. OK. All right. So here we are 149 about 150 just waiting for this new tornado warning to get issued. We want you to see it live on the air as it gets issued to give you the very first information on this. Your first alert on this particular storm cell that is now just south of Natchez and it's a ferocious looking cell. I uh, remember we're looking at it from a little bit of a distance here, uh, but again showing up with vibrant red on the screen, which indicates very heavy rainfall and it is moving from south to north. Just curious if we've got any hail uh, with that storm, if there's a way of you um, tapping that. OK, um, OK, this is a new severe thunderstorm warning they just put out for Atala County, and that's interesting. That may have to do with what I was pointing out before. Not much hail with this, by the way, uh, just some small hail, penny size hail at this point with that storm. But uh, again, there we go. New tornado warning now in effect. This also will be in effect for parts of uh, Jefferson counties. All right. So now I want you to pay attention if you're in Natchez 
And if you're in Fayette, this is a brand new tornado warning uh, being issued for southwestern Jefferson County and Adams counties. Uh, this will be uh, for a storm that's located 14 miles southeast of Monterey. This is moving northeast at 30 miles an hour, so it's a slower moving storm. Severe thunderstorm capable of producing a tornado. This warning goes until 2 45 AM. It includes Fayette and the city of Natchez. All right, a tornado warning is in effect now for Western Jefferson County and much of Adams County, including Natchez and the city of Fayette. If you live in the Washington community outside of Natchez, you're covered by this tornado warning. So this is a brand new tornado warning that's been issued. Let's go before we go back to this. Let's go up to uh, Atala real quick. Just want to see. It looks uh, like that's going to be the, the extension of the tornado warning. OK, so that's the extension of the tornado warning, just covering the northern reaches of the county. That's a severe thunderstorm warning, as you mentioned. So uh, we're going to have some changes here in the warnings that we've got on the screen here before long. Um, but you could see that uh, that's a new severe thunderstorm warning that's in effect. That's probably to take care of, as Patrick said, the line that's moving in. And also I pointed out there were some showers firing, some pretty good storms firing in the eastern part of Itala County as well. All right, zooming out now, you can see where the worst of the weather is taking place, uh, but in the southwest corner of our state, now starting to get in on the severe weather threat that is developing out there, and we'll hopefully get a cam up that we can see. Even though it's the middle of the night, we'll try to see what we can see, but these storms are um, merging in over Natchez. I will say it's a little bit messy right now, uh, messier than what I've been looking at with numerous cells kind of scattered around. The actual cell that's uh, causing this tornado warning is right now over the St. Catherine Creek National Wildlife Refuge. It's going to be moving northward over uh, up Highway 61 before long. So this is going to be very close to Natchez. Can we track it to give a time span as to when it will be in Natchez? Yes, let's just see this what the time moving at 30 miles, right? Hour. It's going 30 miles an hour. So it's a little slower, bit slower, slower than, than the last yeah, one. Yeah, so there's a slower motion now being noted in all this and um, we're going to track it for you so you can get an idea and we'll take it into the southwest part of Jefferson County as well. 219 arriving in Natchez and about Fayette. It's probably going to be about an hour almost. Let's see what the storm looks like by the time it gets there. This particular cell is what we're talking about. Patrick, I know you have the uh, tower cam or one of the M dot cams mm -hmm. popped up that we can see maybe some lightning. Yeah, let's go uh, over to uh, Max three. We've got that up on Max three with the uh, M dot camera that's uh, at uh, it's actually looking across the Mississippi River. This is actually over in Vidalia. So we're looking across the bridge structure. You see the lightning popping off here. The storm would be over here. This would be on the uh, looking. Uh, we're looking west uh, eastbound, so this would be south. Of course, lots of lightning with that storm, and you don't want to see lightning in that type of situation as uh, more than likely lightning will lend itself to a strengthening storm. A lot of lightning, at least. Uh, it's going to parallel Highway 61, though, so that's the big issue that we're going to be running into here in the next couple of minutes is uh, as the storm makes its way off to the north and east, it's going to run across Highway 61. I'm going to try to switch this over really quickly and um, just give me a second because y'all 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 take it for a second because I got I got to okay. get the thing. No, I, I got the thing pulled up over here. And it just it, it you're talking. To go you're complete. talking techno speak. Yeah. We got gotcha. you. OK, <laughs> all right. He wants us to do the thing over here. All right. Thing. So uh, Peyton, point out what you were just talking to me about right here yeah, in Southern Adams County. It looks County. like we have another donut hole yeah. on our hands in Southern Adams County yep. where we could uh, see that potential tornado form really at any point in time as this drifts to uh, the north and east will likely cross over Highway 61 over the coming minutes. So if you live uh, anywhere within this warning box out towards Natchez, uh, Jeanette, uh, near the St. Catherine Creek uh, area where we have that rotation uh, right overhead. And this warning extends as far north as Churchill and Fayette. Make sure you get in your tornado safe place. Anyone watching know that knows anyone uh, out this way, make sure you call them and tell them to also get in their uh, tornado safe place. We are monitoring a storm that is capable of producing a tornado. So, you know, here's the situation, folks, with trying to verify something like this. We've got a signature on the radar. All right, this is a prime spot to have a tornado going on right now. But who can see it, where it is right now? Well, anybody who's in the St. Catherine Creek National Wildlife Refuge, and chances are they got four legs. So you've got that, or you've got maybe a tugboat, a boat that's traveling right now on the Mississippi River. So it's really going to be hard to verify this right now until it's literally 
right on Natchez on the south end of town. So we want you to take this seriously. And that's why, as Peyton just said, get on the phone, um, let your friends in Natchez or family know that the storm's coming in. And uh, Patrick, uh, I'm going to throw it back over to you because you've got some additional information. On. I was just uh, going to pull up the uh, the other MDOT camera. This is yeah. a look at 61 and 84 uh, on uh, Max 3. So this would be on the north end of town. And again, you see the very heavy rainfall coming down, lots of lightning. So we're looking southbound now. We're looking back towards the city of Natchez uh, from here. Behind you would be where 84 and 61 come together right there at the curve right before you get to the gas station. Uh, but again, uh, as you're looking here again, you see the lights off in the distance. That's just uh, some of the businesses there along 61 and some of the cars traveling along 61. Uh, but what we will be looking for would be back over here on this side of the screen this time uh, as the storm is making its way up that way. I, I would say that the storm is probably going to parallel Highway 61. So if, we, if we're going to see it, it's probably on this camera uh, once it gets a little closer to us and probably backlit uh, from the lightning as it's making its way through. Uh, take the course of least regret right now. There, you know, if you're going down Highway 61, there's a hill on the south side of town that you come into Natchez on uh, that would be approaching the circulation we're approaching. Let's go back over to Max 1 really quickly uh, and uh, show you the radar perspective of this. And then we'll take another tour of the uh, of the radar here in a second. But again, as Peyton uh, point out, pointed out, uh, the donut hole, that circulation, kind of the sink drain going into that storm. There is a hill right here as you go into the city of Natchez, going into it, uh, coming from uh, coming from the south and again that circulation would come somewhere in that general vicinity. It may be just south of downtown Natchez, but uh, if you got Natchez address and you live on the south side of town, this is a warning for you. More than likely a lot of folks who live south of along 61 have Natchez addresses because that's the major town uh, that's involved here. So again, if you live south of Highway 84 right now, uh, you need to go ahead and be in a safe place. Interior room away from windows, lowest floor of your home. We got some businesses, some homes there along Highway 61, but the circulation Circulation as it stands right now, again, very messy as we were just mentioning because it's in a very peculiar spot between three radar sites. Uh, so that's why you take the 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 extra information that uh, that course of least regret and take your precautions as soon as possible. But the general track here would take it up here in this general vicinity. And again, there's Highway 84 and Highway 61. As I was just mentioned, we got an MDOT camera sitting right there. So if we're going to see it, probably from that camera's perspective as it makes its way on the east side of Natchez. Uh, further to the north, again, you've got another to the tornado warning is extended up into uh, Jefferson County as well. Then we have a severe thunderstorm warning, Port Gibson. Of course, we've been talking about, uh, you know, we've been kind of hitting all of these other spots. Port Gibson, uh, it's time to act now with strong wind potential heading in your direction as well as the Grand Gulf area uh, as that line approaches Highway 61. We mentioned Alcorn State. Of course, thankfully, uh, school's out right now, so I think the uh, the residence halls are also closed, so I don't think anybody's on campus, but Lorman, uh, Alcorn State, up towards Port Gibson. Uh, again, that's where we have a call to action right now for the damaging wind threat moving in your direction. Guess where that's going to be heading here soon enough? And that's a new severe thunderstorm yep. warning uh, for Port Gibson. Yes, and so guess where that's heading over the next hour? Yep. Kapaya Hines. Let's go further to the north. That we still have a tornado warning up to the north as that storm is now exiting out of Holmes County. Uh, but uh, and also the storm that's coming up out of southern uh, northern portions of uh, Yazoo County into southern Holmes. Let's go over to uh, Velocity because I know we lost it for a while. That looks very straight line right there. They will allow that one to expire. Okay, so perfect. Uh, so this storm will be allowed to expire. And not only that, not only does it look straight line, it also looks a lot weaker mm -hmm. than the ones that we saw earlier. The one that went through Lex Lexington, uh, that thing was bowing at 60 mile per hour winds, 70, uh, 70 mile per hour yeah. winds at the times. So again, that storm was much more robust than the ones that you see here that are moving down highways uh, 17 and uh, highway 12, uh, highway 16 here over the last little bit. Also highway 17 uh, again to the north and east. The storm that uh, we were watching coming out there goes the, the warning, the, the drop yeah. the two warnings there in Holmes and Yazoo. So you're out of the warnings now. The storm that was continued, that's for Montgomery County, uh, as well as Webster County and Choctaw County, far northern sections of Atala County. It does not include Kosciuszko, uh, but that storm itself has some strong winds associated with it and could put, produce a tornado. Uh, but we are at this time frame now that uh, we're getting to a point where the line's slowing down yep. even further. We yep. go back to this point of this storm going 30 miles per hour. The last storm was 35. 
it's going to get to a point to where it's almost zero. Yeah, and it was 50 miles an hour when I was on earlier this evening. By the way, you're watching continuous storm coverage right now on WLBT Jackson and WDBD Jackson. Uh, we just want to let you know that we're going to continue to give you updates on severe weather throughout the morning overnight and morning as this storm system continues to work its way through the area. We've had numerous tornado warnings in effect. We've had some damage reported in Sharkey County earlier this evening, but now we have the storm that is just on the doorstep of Natchez coming in from the south on Highway 61, and this will continue to really uh, put the Natchez area and over through Fayette in jeopardy for about the next half hour or so. That's where we have this tornado threat uh, going on. It's a severe thunderstorm with the potential of producing a uh, tornado and quite a bit of lightning happening in the Natchez area as we've been showing you. The core of this storm is on Highway 61. It is just south of town. It just advanced a little bit closer into Natchez. So we're now a few minutes away from it actually being in Natchez. But want to let you know uh, that this is a storm you have to take seriously because the storm is moving in from the south and will continue to overspread the city of Natchez before long. And even though it's nighttime and the signature is there, it could take just a few seconds for an actual tornado to drop out of the cell and move across the area. So one thing I want to point out, let's zoom out a little bit more and um, you can just stay on me here for a second in front of this, but I want to point this out to Peyton. I see it getting messy in this area. I see other cells kind of interacting and that could um, that could maybe uh, hinder this particular storm or if we see them merge together, that could be an additional concern, couldn't it? I mean, that's what you get when you have multiple cells kind of interacting with each other. It's kind of hard to see how this is going to play out, but we're going to find out pretty clearly in the next few minutes as the storm gets closer to Natchez. We've been talking about the donut hole um, that we saw earlier on uh, with this storm and not nearly as pronounced now, but of course um, we are on the edge of three different radars here. So we've got a lot of data coming in, but the problem is we're on the edge of these radars. And so we're seeing uh, this from different vantage points, but this is where the cell is and it's just south of Natchez now moving in from the south. Uh, we do have a tornado warning currently in effect uh, for the city of Natchez and it extends all the way out here to Fayette. We'll see what the storm looks like by the time it gets over to Fayette. You've got a little more time as we indicated. You probably have about 45 minutes before this cell is a threat to your area. You've got other storms around you at this point in time. Lots of lightning out there. That's for sure. If we can pull up max three real quick, I can show you that lightning. Uh, you can go full screen and put it behind me, whatever you prefer. And you can see that we've got a lot of lightning that is taking place right now in the sky over Natchez. This is US 61. We're looking south of Highway 84, and this is almost, we're almost over to continuous lightning at this point in time. Um, so that's when you know you've got a storm uh, that's really churning up. The energy is increasing, and uh, that could be because it's tornadic, could be because it's a severe thunderstorm, but the bottom line is, look how quick and how much lightning is being generated by this storm right now in Natchez. So safe to say, uh, if you're in Natchez, Mother Nature's got your attention, and hopefully you're watching us to get the latest uh, weather information for you. You're under a tornado warning at this point in time uh, from that particular cell that is just south of town. It is going to be on you very soon. So if you live in Natchez, a lot of folks living in the Natchez area in Adams County. Please take cover immediately. You still have a couple minutes, not much time, but you've got a couple minutes to get ready. Go to the lowest floor of your home, away from all windows, okay, and cover yourself to protect yourself from flying debris. I showed this a little earlier. I've got my hard hat. This is a great thing to have. Football helmet, great thing for the kids, for you. Um, and I've even seen some people rave about pots. Uh, you wouldn't want to use the pots in my house. <laughs> They're a little too small at least for my head, but you definitely want to use those kinds of things, okay, to protect yourself because when it comes to a tornado, the flying debris aspect is the most dangerous part of the storm. And so you can see that we are just looking south of Natchez here. Here's Natchez. Can we see how far that range is, how far the distance is from the donut or the donut hole? And again, about 10 miles. yeah, you're about 10 miles south of town. So Cloverdale's a community on the south end of town. There's Washington on the east side of Natchez. You're under that tornado warning too. Don't want to make sure, want to make sure that you are, are aware of that. But this storm is going to move very close to the downtown area. There's a Walgreens right there. And it's uh, about to cross Highway 61. Yeah, it looks like there it looks like there's an eastward jog to it, isn't there? Mm 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, this could get interesting if this really accelerates northeastward. Uh, the main part of the tornado might actually wind up being east of Natchez and not over Natchez. So it was moving more south to north when we started picking it up, and now it's been going more northeasterly. So we'll continue to watch this storm and see how it plays. Um, as it moves up 61, but for now it looks like it's going to almost parallel 61 as it moves farther northward. Back to max three right now. Let's show you that lightning. It's pretty intense. I'm watching it off the corner of my screen, and uh, you can see that we've got a lot of lightning out there right now. Uh, from this is our from our M dot traffic cam, US 61 south of Highway 84, and uh, looking due south. And again, that's just almost continuous lightning. I've seen these storms here in Mississippi where it's just more lightning than it is darkness where it just feels like it's staying light and it flashes dark every once in a while. So we've seen some kind of crazy storms here in Mississippi. And uh, that storm, the donut hole, is an area where it indicates a little bit of a funnel potential. Now, here's the thing. So we, we could be seeing a funnel um, on radar. Um, the donut hole, if you will, but we're still several thousand feet up in the air when we're looking at it from a radar perspective. The question is, is it on the ground or is it something that could easily touch the ground in a moment's notice? That's the real question mark there. So uh, this storm is continuing to move from southwest to northeast. It's going about 30, 35 miles an hour right now. And uh, tornado warning in effect because it's a storm capable of producing a tornado. Again, we're very close to the city of Natchez, uh, less than 10 miles now south of it. That was some lightning right there. Did you see that? That wake you up? Yeah, that woke me up. Um, and um, okay, they just trimmed it back. So they just trimmed the tornado back, the tornado warning back a little bit um, to, you know, basically take into account where it's actually located. You can see it here on the radar. The back edge of it now is about 10 miles south of Natchez, and this is going to continue moving north and eastward. And again, this could be more of an issue if you live east of Natchez, say on Highway 98. That could be more of an issue for you, depending on where this storm winds up going. So. Uh, just something to keep in mind here as this keeps moving up to the north and eastward right now. Natchez State Park is there uh, to the east of town. The Jeanette area is also there. So right now, very, very close to 61, whereas a while ago, this thing was right on the Mississippi River. And you see the purple there. Well, we know it's a bad storm. Um, hail trackers on. And the hail tracker is indicating that we're somewhere between a penny and quarter size hail on this storm that's moving in right now from the south. So I'm telling you that it looks more of a risk for 554 and 98 east of Natchez. And then we got to watch out for Fayette eventually, say in about 45 minutes, should the storm structure hold and the storm continue moving in that direction. So that's what Hell Tracker suggests. And uh, zooming out here, just want to show you what it looks like on regular radar. And again, it looks like that storm cell is going to move more eastward of Natchez. And then we got to watch the one across the river that's near Bedelia. And that one is interacting to some extent, and that could be pushing over as well. So it's an active evening here, but I'm happy to say we don't have any tornado warnings. Keep my fingers crossed uh, in Holmes or Yazoo or Sharkey counties or Issaquina counties for that matter right now. And that's certainly something welcome. This is a current look at the radar. Not much happening right now in the metro. That will change in the next one or two hours as these storms start to push in. I do want to Go. note that it looks like maybe some broad rotation uh, north of Port Gibson. Mm -hmm. on the western side of Cleveland County. Just something to watch. This is uh, where we have a severe thunderstorm warning currently in effect, but it does have that tornado possible tag. Yep. So uh, all of these storms that we are tracking do have that capability of uh, spinning up a tornado very, very fast. And to let you know that this particular storm cell that Peyton's pointing out is going to be more of an issue, say, in the southern part of Warren County. Uh, just above or north of the Big Black River. So if you live in southern Warren County, especially close to Highway 61, which is where most folks in southern Warren County live, uh, this is something you really need to pay attention to um, as the storm is going to be moving in and eventually along Highway 27, uh, which is in the southeastern part of Warren County. Good catch on that, Peyton. So uh, looking right now at the weather in Adams County, that storm that was just south of Natchez looks like it's a little bit more east, southeast of Natchez. So it looks like that's going to bypass downtown. But across the river, we'll check it out. Across the river, Peyton, we've got another storm out there that's uh, just south of St. Genevieve and very close to, um, this would be very close to Vidalia, one? right here. <laughs> yeah, right, which one? There's really two in there. Um, and we need to keep an eye on that because uh, they could um, possibly go tornadic as well. There it is. 
a uh, pretty good definition, I would say, on the radar of inflow and outflow. Uh, so something worth keeping an eye on. Patrick, we've been uh, watching the radar here for you. We've also uh, got your uh, traffic cam up in the mm -hmm. background. A lot of lightning coming out of this thing right now. But it looks like the cell is just moving towards the eastern side of town, maybe getting as close as where the Walgreens is mm -hmm. um, in Natchez, but more to the eastern part of the city. Yeah, heading out towards like Cranfield and, mm -hmm. uh, and that area out here in the eastern portions of Adams County. You see, uh, is that a new tornado it warning? It just popped up. Yeah, new tornado warning coming out for uh, parts of Louisiana. That's going to be... I guess like what now not even point coopy wait was that boils <laughs> one, one of those one of those uh, it's, parishes it's down far there. enough away where you're not going to get yeah, any emails yeah. or phone calls let, let, let's hope that uh, but uh, it's something to watch there's a circulation right there as that moves off to the north and east let's go back up here to the other warning uh, again uh, as we continue with this storm tornado warning storm that's coming up out of uh, Natchez a again we've got the camera there let's take it uh, from the MDOT perspective uh, again that camera sits right about here so it's just on the south side of the storm but circulation again coming up here that will cross Highway 84 heading up to Natchez State Park, uh, Highway 553, uh, takes you back up towards Church Hill, uh, and eventually, again, just kind of paralleling and hop sketch, uh, hot. Uh, scotching around Highway 61 and the Natchez Trace Parkway here. Let's take that MDOT camera on Max 3. And again, you see the massive amounts of lightning that's going along with it here this morning um, as we are starting off the day uh and of course a very frequent lightning again a tornado warned storm here uh just to the south of this location uh so again if you're in the city of natchez oh, go ahead and be in your safe place even though the circulation may pass just to your south and east so at least downtown there's a lot of people who have a natchez address who do not live directly in the city of Natchez. Uh, let's go back over to the radar. And again, you, we're, we're gonna go kind of back and forth here. There's your circulation here. Just cross over Highway 61 here. And again, just close to that hill I was talking about a couple of minutes ago, maybe about a mile or two to the south of that hill that comes into downtown Natchez. That's gonna continue north and eastward. That will cross over. There's some uh, construction here along Highway 84 uh, down here into eastern portions of Adams County, western Franklin County. This storm starting to get a little bit more active. Uh, looks a little tighter on the rotation within the last uh, couple of scans here as it's been making its way off to the uh, north and east. Again, up here uh, as it's uh, kind of working its way northward. Interesting look there to say the least, but of course we're still looking at this at maybe about 4,500 to 5,000 feet up. So we're looking at the, the center of the storm uh, as it's moving in here, but still uh, decent circulation nonetheless uh, that could very well try to put down tornado as it's just crossed Highway 61. Uh, we'll probably find out something soon enough down there. Yeah, I mean, um, there's enough population yeah. where it's starting to encounter. And then even if you get east of town on Highway 84, uh, 98, mm -hmm. um, you're going to start finding there's still a decent sized population. You got the Washington community that also sits just east of uh, Natchez. A lot of folks living there. So we Stanton should know very well. soon. Yep, we mm -hmm. should know very soon. Um, you know, with uh, we'll, we'll check in with Adams County Emergency Management as well. And they're usually pretty good about yeah. uh, keeping up with everything. All right, peace size hell from Jeanette. Okay. okay. All right, so what we're doing right now, we're just kind of uh, resetting everything uh, this morning. Uh, we've got Brandon Walker here as well uh, to help uh, get us into the uh, the morning hours. But of course, you've got the circulation here uh, down into Adams County this morning, making its way again on the east side of Natchez. Take your tornado precautions right now. Interior room away from windows, lowest floor of your home. Here's Highway 84 right here. Here we're Highway 61. So the circulation is just crossed across Highway 61 uh, as this makes its way off to the north and east. Natchez State Park, Jeanette, as uh, Peyton was just mentioning again, uh, we've had some reports of some small hail uh, with the storm as it's made its way across this area here. Of course, when you look at the radar perspective here, it, it, there is a little small hail core that's gone along with it. It's not huge hail, but hail nonetheless. So that means that it's got a fairly decent updraft that's keeping that suspended in the atmosphere here this morning. So that's why, you know, there's something that is turning, something that is twisting, something that's trying to push things up. Uh, the tornado warning, they just uh, kind of adjusted it here. Again, tornado warning continues for Adams County as well as uh, Jefferson County. That's going to go until 245 this morning. Time right now, right at 215 on this uh, two, uh, Wednesday morning, a very early Wednesday morning. It looks a little broader, but still, again, that's a decent circulation there. So no matter what, we need you to be in your tornado safe place 
place. If you're in the city of Natchez, I would just go ahead and take the course of least regret as we continue with this. Uh, that's the bypass that goes over here uh, when you come off of Devereaux Street and then coming up towards um, as you're coming up uh, back over towards like the Roses and then eventually over here by uh, where 84 and 61 split off. Uh, this is about I'd say about four or five miles to the south and east of you, uh, heading up to the north and east, crossing over Highway 84 here fairly soon. Let's take that MDOT camera once again and um, get you a check of uh, what's going on down there with that. Uh, and when it comes down to it again, you see the frequent lightning going along with it. Again, the storm would be to the south and east of you uh, as that storm is moving into this area, but it's going to be a very close call on where this line is going to be moving across here over the next little bit. So again, uh, take your tornado precautions, interior room away from windows, lowest floor of your home as that storm is making its way off to the north and east at about 30 miles per hour and still the possibility for some hail uh, there in Adams and Jefferson County. So they did go ahead and take uh, Concordia Parish out of that warning. So good news for our friends over in Vidalia. Uh, the warning has been allowed to expire, uh, but uh, again, this is going to be out near Kingston Road uh, heading down towards the south. Uh, and east uh, portions of Adams County this morning. Patrick, I'm going to turn over coverage to you and Brandon Walker now as it comes up on 216. I'm going to do a little work behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. So if anything uh, gets out of control, I will certainly jump back in. But again, we are continuing to do severe weather coverage for you through the overnight hours here, and it's going to go on throughout the day as there's severe weather uh, affecting parts of our area. We will be on the air to tell you all about it, of course. So our coverage continues. If you lose power wherever you are, where you're watching us, you want to continue to watch us. As long as there are tornado warnings on the air, uh, we're going to be on the air and you can watch us on the free first alert weather app, or you can watch us on Facebook on uh, the WLBT Facebook page or the WLBT weather Facebook page. So just want to let you know about that. That's a pretty intense storm, though, that's sitting right now over Adams County. And to the guys in the back, just want to let you know that Brandon is on Peyton's equipment now is where you are swapped out the equipment for you. So just so you know where to find him. He's uh, currently running the radar, but you've been here for a little bit with us, Brandon. What are you seeing so far in the storm? Okay, <laughs> there we go. You're off to a great start. <laughs> Let me turn the mic on just a little bit. There has been a little bit of a strengthening for this one that's in Adams County. That's moving just near the uh, the southeast of Natchez, moving towards, that's going to be Natchez State Park. And so, again, like we've been talking about, you know, hey, downstream from you, if you've been tuned in, you're in Adams County, you're probably getting a lot of that wind profile from a lot of these storms that are moving in Adams. And so this just continues to track towards the north and east. Hey, you just want to make sure you're finding that safe zone. I'll go ahead and put a track on it downstream just to go ahead and call out a few people. What we have next is going to be Fenwick at 223. Natchez State Park just called you out. Again, most folks may be living in, in or around the park. You need to go ahead and make sure you just, hey, finding the safe safe zone for sure. Cadillac at 244, Fayette at 254, Melton at 302, Dennis Crossroads at 307, 317 for Blue Hill and McBride at 325. And so, again, as we continue to watch these storms, we're going to get where we're seeing some of them starting to see just a little bit of a strengthening happening. That's going to happen with many of, of the, more of these storms, more so south and west for us right now as they continue to get into an environment that has that atmosphere for them to produce. And that's kind of what we're seeing right now for this storm that's moving in portions of uh, Nat in Adams County. We'll put things back on velocity right now just to give folks a different profile of what we're seeing just so we can kind of see some of the tightening up happening for us. We'll take it back to velocity. And there's that, again, there's kind of the key component that we're watching right there. When we start to get these different color changes, that gives us the indication of there's some circulation crossing over a few roads. Let's go in just a little bit tighter. And again, I'm still getting used to some of these uh, roads out here. We got Liberty Road, several communities that are living along Liberty Road, Springfield Road, Prospect Road, and this will continue to push towards the northeast you need to make, certainly make sure you have your safe zone right now. We've already got the indicator that there is some hail out there with this particular cell as it continues to track north and east. And so nothing new yet from the National Weather Service. Continue to keep an eye on that. But they, there is a, a severe thunderstorm warning now 
they're going to continue that for Claiborne, Jefferson, and Warren. Are you seeing anything on that, Patrick? I, I was just going to say, let's take that NDOT camera again yeah. uh, from Max 3's perspective. And again, uh, you're starting to see that storm moving in there. Again, if you're near Highway 61, Highway 84, we're talking up towards uh, Washington, uh, Anna, as well as uh, Stanton up on the north end of town. Uh, that's what you're looking at. I'd advise no travel on Highway mm. 84, Highway 61 presently. That's what it looks like uh, there on uh, the northeast side of downtown Natchez. Again, you're looking towards Natchez. Natchez would be down the road here. You come to the uh, the the fork in the road where you go down Devereux towards Devereux Street and then fork off to keep going down 61 to uh, continue to uh, you know get down there by the hospital. Uh, but again, the circulation uh, is going to cross 84 probably just behind this camera. Um, and uh, maybe crossing 84 here fairly soon, maybe about two or three miles east of uh, the juncture of 84 and 61 there on the east side of Natchez. So Cranfield, safe place now. Natchez State Park, safe place now. Interior room away from windows. Lowest floor of your home as that storm, again, you're seeing it live perspective there uh, with the MDOT traffic camera. Uh, they're just south of Highway 84, the juncture of Highway 84 and Highway 61. The road that's in front of you is Highway 61 and you're looking towards the city of Natchez uh, off in the distance by about four miles or so, three or four miles. Let's go back over to the radar. And again, we'll show you where we are presently on that. Again, crossing Highway uh, 84 here. Again, here's the Cranfield community, Natchez State Park. 553 takes you up towards Church Hill here into Jefferson County. Here's Highway 61 in the beginning of the Natchez Trace Parkway. This will continue to kind of parallel this general area. Uh, the Hamburg communities out here. Here's Highway 33 here in the Fayette, uh, just south of Fayette. Uh, so the general consensus here, if that stays on the same track, we'll take it from there up towards a point uh, very close to Fayette. So again, next major town in line would be Fayette. Uh, that would be somewhere around 254. Right now it's 222 in the morning. Uh, and then you see a place like Blue Hill that's out near Union Church uh, in that general vicinity over in the eastern portions of Jefferson County uh, by the time we get towards about 3, 315 this morning. Uh, let's go broad scale uh, on this, Brandon. Uh, and we'll come back to this warning again. If you are anywhere near Highway 84 and Highway 61 down here in Adams County, I need you to be in your safe place now. Interior room away from windows downstream of that Cranfield and the Natchez State Park area in that northeastern corner of the uh, county. On the broader scale, I know we got some showers and thunderstorms ongoing over here into Scott County, Smith County. These are non severe, but heavy downpours nonetheless as they're moving through here. See all the green boxes that are happening back out here to the west. Those are flash flood warnings. We mentioned earlier. Earlier, two to four inches of rainfall have already fallen and these locations and two to four inches of rain is going to be kind of shunting, uh, working its way further to the east and moving into Metro Jackson here soon enough. Well, we've already started working on getting the plan together for the morning show uh, this morning to get folks out there. We're going to have Ashley Garner uh, in the storm tracker here and we'll have uh, Carmen Poe. Uh, she's heading up to Canton this morning. So again, we're going to have some uh, folks out and about and, uh, and so uh, you know, we've got some uh, situations ongoing this morning could be a very active morning, but that's the radar over the last hour and I want to reemphasize this to you. Notice how the band of rain has really sluggishly started to get to a point to where it's not really moving very quickly. Uh, if we were to go back a couple more hours, this thing was trucking at like 40, 50 miles per hour. This thing is getting to a point to where it's almost a crawl, but it is still moving. There is a point where this will become a crawl. You see a new tornado warning coming out down yep. to the south and east of us. That's going to be uh, down here, um, that's going to be close to the Fort Adams area, uh, but not in Fort Adams. Uh, so again, that's a, uh, I think that's a tornado warning that's going to be in fact there. Or is that a severe thunderstorm warning? No, tornado warning. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm looking at it differently here. Uh, but needless to say, again, that's the next storm that we've got to keep an eye on. Uh, but let's go back over to the tornado warning storm that we are currently dealing with. 224 in the morning here on this Wednesday morning and alert day. It's going to be a long day, my friends, uh, as we are starting off here. Meteorologist Patrick Ellis here with Brandon Walker. Uh, we had to send Dave and Peyton home at some point <laughs> because the thing is, is that they've got to be back here for the afternoon stuff. So right. it's going to be a long day for all of us here. Hopefully uh, we'll have a little bit of a, of a break, but unfortunately 
it's a multifaceted thing that we're dealing with here today uh, with not only the uh, strong wind potential, the tornado potential, but the heavy rain aspect as well. That's going to have some big impacts on that morning commute for somebody. All right, again, crossing Highway 84 near Cranfield, safe place now. Natchez State Park, safe place now. Let's zoom out just a little bit. I want to show you uh, up into Jefferson County. Technically, Fayette is inside that tornado warned polygon. It is going to come very close to the northwestern corner of Franklin County. This will say north of Roxy, by the way, mm. uh, though you're getting to, you know, if you live north of uh, Roxy up near Hamburg, uh, again, you're probably getting some very heavy rainfall, but the circulation is back to your west along Highway 84. Uh, but this thing is paralleling 61 now by about two or three miles east of Highway 61 out here near Natchez State Park, Cranfield, safe place now. We can give the all clear to downtown Natchez, but I, I don't want you to think that you're completely out of the woods just yet. Let's go over to velocity really quickly, Brandon, and I want to show everybody again. You've got the one here. See this one down here to the south training over the same area. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't be surprised if you know if it starts to strengthen a little bit. That may be the next one coming over the same area. Remember, we've already dealt with this once this morning uh, and la late last night where we had training supercell thunderstorms going over the same area multiple times. Uh, we had uh, the one storm that went over the Kelso area. Actually, there was another one that was a couple miles north up in Anguilla. There was another one that was went over Valley Park. That whole area, we're working on getting more information on what's happened up that way, but still that gives you an indication of how these storms are kind of tracking uh, this evening uh, the, and this morning. Let's go back down to the south. The other tornado warn storm that is going to be here north of Simsport, Louisiana. The reason why I point this out because probably the next warning that would come out would probably be for Wilkinson or Adams County if it were to come out uh, for this area. So that's something that we're going to be watching for if it holds together. Remember, same train track that we're on here. Let's go back uh, uh, and go back to the warning uh, that's coming up out of Natchez. And again, uh, again, the circulation here. Here's Highway 61, Highway 84. Again, downtown Natchez is here, so we can give the all clear to downtown Natchez. Uh, but again, this is going to be up near the Washington area. Uh, you know, here's Anna and a station back over here closer to Cranfield and up around Stanton as well. This general area here where you have the circulation moving up to the north and east uh, up here near Natchez State Park. That is the beginning of the Natchez Trace in that general area. So that's where we're starting uh, with this. So it's very close to where the Natchez Trace begins here on the north side of town. Highway 553 that goes up towards the Church Hill community in western Jefferson County uh, uh, in that general vicinity. Not Church Hill necessarily where the circulation is, uh, but uh, definitely basically paralleling Highway 61 at this point in time. Uh, Brandon, do you see anything over with the Weather Service uh, on this morning or uh, any anything else that's happening right now? Because there's just a lot that has already gone on and uh, where we're going to be going over the next few hours. Yeah, nothing new coming out from the National Weather Service. Uh, the big thing is, you know, these storms are going to continue. You got a good point there, Patrick. Again, those cells right behind one another almost, they're going to continue to feed off of each other. So we're going to have to watch that downstream and to see, you know, who is going to get impacted. Because if you're getting impacted right now, especially for these southwestern uh, counties um, that we're talking about, like Adams County, Wilkinson, you still have that potential behind you to see more storms. So again, we'll go ahead and kind of talk an hour or two ahead. If you get out of this one, this cell that's moving through Adams County, just near Natchez State Park, the next hour or so, you could potentially see another system roll in that also could be tornado warned. And so for those folks that are southwestern counties, go ahead and make sure you are in that safe place right now for Adams County, but you may want to go ahead and just hang out there for a little bit longer because you could have more cells that will impact you downstream. A little bit different setup, I will say, for the southwestern counties compared to what we're seeing north for our north counties like Holmes, uh, Sharkey, Humphreys, and Issaquina, they're getting into a situation. There's that little bit of a transition right now, if you will, where they're going to be getting into more of a rain component. We've been talking about this line kind of doing a little bit of a stalling, and that's what we're kind of seeing right now. We'll take things just a bigger picture right now. Let's take it back to the radar to kind of show you what's happening out there with this, these lines of storms. Again, we still have that severe thunderstorm warning for portions of Itala County. The big thing is that's starting to push out of our viewing area, right? Right? And so we're having to watch this line of storms. We'll put this in motion just to give folks an idea of what we've been kind of seeing. We'll kind of slow this down just a little bit because I don't want it to be too fast on everybody. But just to kind of show you, 
a little bit of a slowdown happening here. You can actually see that north of our viewing area where this is kind of becoming more of a rain component where I wouldn't be surprised in the next couple of hours if this continues to stay stalled, we get more of these flash flood warnings to happen again outside of our viewing area. Already seeing a few right now for portions of Issaquina, Sharkey County. That's just going to kind of be the trend for us as we continue in the next hour or so. If you're still ahead of the line of storms, let me get, make this a little bit bigger. You still have a situation downstream for portions of Hines County. If you're turned in right now, Rankin, Kapaya, even uh, portions of uh, just go ahead and throw Lincoln in there. Eventually, Lincoln County, you could potentially be on the cusp of a few storms just kind of creeping in just uh, just near Brookhaven and Lincoln County. So something to be you know uh, cautious of if you're not being impacted currently right now. Hines, Rankin, uh, portions of uh, Scott County, Smith County, y'all are seeing a few storms, but none of those have been severe in a sense. You still have to be prepared for what's to come downstream. So we have to watch these storms as we continue into the uh, early, later in the hours, I should say, going into the morning because we're going to be here for well, quite some time. Yeah, yeah it's like uh, by the time we get to the morning show, <laughs> it's, right. just gonna, it's just going to keep rolling. Uh, they're going to keep that warning going yep. for, uh, for Adams and Jefferson County. Uh, to your point, let's go back over to the radar behind me. And again, uh, what we're seeing here, the, see how the line of storms here over into uh, Scott, Leak, and, and um and Itala County down towards uh, Smith County. See how they were initially going in one direction. They started to turn a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, that is an indicator that uh, we're starting to see some turning in the winds more parallel and more than likely that's the slowing down process of all of this. Now, not to say that we're out of the woods completely. We still have the tornado watch for much of the area until 6 a.m. this morning, uh, right now 2.31. Uh, so we've got a long way to go on that. Then we also have the potential for heavy rainfall and then a secondary risk for heavy rainfall uh, and strong storms later on today. I do want to go to the storm that's coming mm -hmm. out of, uh, that's a, uh, coming out of Claiborne County uh, down here, Passport Gibson coming down Highway 18. Next warning to come down the pipeline, Hines County. So we're getting to that point in time in the morning uh, that uh, Hines County is going to get a warning here soon enough if this continues to be uh, the going trend here. But that's got some strong wind associated with it here as it's cross Highway 61 here near Port Gibson heading up towards uh, uh, heading up towards the Carlisle area. Here's the Natchez Trace Parkway, Highway 18 right here. So the general track here will take it out towards uh, Hines County, far northwestern Kapaya County, out here near Utica, Hines Community College, uh, the campus there in southwestern Hines County. Uh, Brandon just put a track on that. Uh, and again, if that stays on the same path and timing, okay, mm -hmm. we're talking about getting into the metro area sometime around four o'clock. And that goes along with our hour by hour forecast, has been basically on, right. on deck with this for the last day or so, uh, on showing that this line gets into the metro area between two and four o'clock in the morning. Right now, 232, we should have uh, some of the storms moving into the western sides of the metro at about three o'clock in the morning. 4 o'clock downtown, 417 at the uh, at the Mega, uh, Jackson Mega Wiley Evers International Airport, Madison at 424. You can probably ascertain at the same time that's like Brandon. OK, mm -hmm. so, uh, you know, by the time we get to the beginning of the 430 show, we'll probably have the storms over the metro area. The question mark is, uh, is is this going to slow down? Uh, and we do expect it to slow down. The question mark is. Where does it slow down right. and when does it slow down? Because that will have a detrimental effect on the morning commute for you guys as you're starting off your day. Let's hope that we can get some movement and keep it moving. Uh, but most of the indications show this line either stopping and backing up or stopping and just parking and barking for uh, several hours later on uh, through the morning hours. Uh, that's going to cause its own set of issues. Tornado warning continues for Adams County as well as Jefferson County. Again, the circulation about to come out of Adams past Stanton, past the Natchez uh, State Park, basically right on top of Highway 61 presently. So again, here's Highway 61. There's the circulation right here. Again, coming up here right along Highway 61. Fayette, safe place now. Interior room away from windows. Lowest floor of your home. If you're in the city of Natchez, we can give you the all clear on this. Let's go over to that MDOT camera again. I want to show you the difference of where we were about 10 minutes ago versus where we are right now. And again, the storm is north and east of this area now. And notice how it's a lot calmer than it was uh, about uh, 10 minutes ago. Still coming down on the rain side of things. And you're probably still going to see some flashes of light. Actually, that might be frozen. Hold on for a second. Yeah. I think I might actually, it might have 
froze up, so give me a second here on, on that because i got to reset it. No, that's what it is. Hold on. Frozen a <laughs> hold, little bit. Hold anyway. on. I just realized that I didn't have it pulled up on Max 3. Give it a second, and uh, <laughs> it'll it'll – there it goes. Uh, but you see the lightning popping off there. It's not as intense as it was with the rain that was coming mm -hmm. down uh, not terribly long ago. So, again, some improvement there, but still not the best situation. You see that lightning popping off. It's almost constant there in Adams County. Back to the radar, and again, you see the uh, storm system lifting off to the north. It did have some uh, some small hail down near mm -hmm. Jeanette uh, in Kingston Road area. But, uh, again, not the, uh, this is not a hail risk t day today necessarily. Uh, let's just worry about where we are on the circulations and the heavy rain aspect, because that's really where we're going to be at uh, as we go through the coming hours. Circulation right now, again, uh, coming up past Cannonsburg and Highway 61. Uh, again, safe place now, interior room, away from windows, lowest floor of your home. That's 553 again, up towards Church Hill. That's the Natchez Trace Parkway right here. And here's Highway 61. It's now past Cranfield, so we can go ahead and give you the all clear in the Cranfield community. Uh, but if you're in central and southern portions of Jefferson County, Go ahead and take the course of least regret with that circulation coming up here. Let's go over to velocity, show you the which way the winds are blowing mode. And again, when you look at this, it's a lot broader than it was a couple of minutes ago. Let's step it back a little bit, Brandon. So just step it back a couple of frames and just see where we were about, uh, about five, 10 minutes ago. See how it was a lot stronger when it was crossing Highway 61 to where it is, you know, even when it was crossing 61 down closer to uh, the south side of Natchez to where it was at 84. So step it forward now to where it is now. So the storm has weakened a little bit, but it may be in a cycling process. We've seen mm. that happen a time or two already this morning. A little broader, but still some wind action going on here. Whether it's blowing straight at you, it's coming down from a microburst, doesn't matter. It's wind and wind is no fun when it's uh, when it's causing damage. Let's hope that that wasn't the case. Uh, we'll hope to get some uh, some information from Adams County. Usually they're pretty good about uh, getting information out uh, quickly. Um, but uh, we'll see how that all plays out. But again, the circulation will be crossing Highway 61 here uh, right now. Uh, so again, safe place now if you're along 61 north and east of Natchez. But in Natchez, we can give you the all clear on that storm. Let's go back up to the other storm. Um, it looks like they just issued yep. a new severe thunderstorm warning. I, it's going to be for this. I think it's the storm that's coming up out of Louisiana. Yeah. It is so the one that we had a tornado warning on down to the south and west of us. Uh, so they're going to go ahead with this and add Concordia, Adams, Jefferson, um, and they will allow this warning to expire at 245. So that's yeah. good news. All right, so 245, that warning will allow it to expire. But they issued a new severe thunderstorm warning for the storm that's coming out of southern Louisiana, uh, southeastern Louisiana. That was the storm that was previously tornado warned that's coming across um, the um, uh, the old river uh, structure uh, down here. Again, no one lives out there, <laughs> oddly enough, but that is a very big critical um, thing, uh, uh, infrastructure point, uh, the old river structure down here uh, in Concordia Parish. That uh, area there, that's where the old Mississippi River it diverts. It would have diverted. Uh, so uh, went down the Chafalaya Basin. Instead, it keeps it going down towards New Orleans, Baton Rouge. Um, so again, that's what uh, where that is currently located, or very close to it at least. Uh, and then uh, off to the north and east again, St. Catherine uh, Creek National, Wef or National Wildlife Refuge. As Dave mentioned earlier, probably not many folks out there outside if, if you have four legs. Um, but yeah. the Highway 61 corridor here, again, you start to get into some businesses. You start to get into some houses out here as you start getting closer to Natchez. So again, that new severe thunderstorm warning includes Roxy over in the Franklin County as well. Uh, and the severe thunderstorm warning continues for, uh, will be extended northward into Fayette. The other severe thunderstorm warning that we have is for Claiborne County. I wouldn't be surprised if here soon enough, if that holds, if we get a severe thunderstorm warning that would go over into Hines and Capaya counties. Mm -hmm. So we'll just hold here, you know, what are y'all going to watch at 3 o'clock in the morning? Right. What, what's on at 3 o'clock in the <laughs> morning? Uh, you know, infomercials. I, I know that there's one thing that's supposed to be on at 3, but uh, but that's that's over on Fox, but uh, on LBT. What are you going to watch? You going to watch the early today show? Would you rather watch us? Uh, <laughs> here's a look at what we got. You know, Let's go broad scale on this again. Yeah. Uh, while we have that tornado worn storm, the circulation looks a lot broader than it was about 15 minutes ago. So that's, again, improving situations, okay? I think we're about to get to a point here in the next uh, couple of hours where we transition out of 
the storm threat to the flood threat. Mm -hmm. That's the concern that I have now uh, as we go through the next few hours. We've kind of figured that there will be some type of lull in the activity at some point in time. The question mark is when and when does that front ultimately slow down? Uh, let's take max three behind me and uh, put uh, the hour by hour forecast up there. I, I just want, you know, while we have a couple warnings out here, we've got one that's weakening again, highway 61 safe place until that uh, warning expires again, give it another five minutes uh, and we'll be out of that warning. Uh, but uh, we still got very heavy rainfall. So let's go over to the hour by hour forecast model. And I want to show you where we are headed for today because today's going to be an active day across the area. If you could take a uh, max three behind me guys, um, but uh, the fact is, is that we're going to probably end up with this band of rain at some point in time slowing down to a crawl, if not completely stalling out. When that happens, that is going to cause the flood concerns. You already see multiple flash flood warnings behind this as the line slowly works its way north and east. All the cells are moving kind of north and east. The line itself has been very slow mm. to move past the Big Black River this morning <laughs> and is now starting to get to the metro area on the back, uh, on the top end. So like up towards Kearney Park, Flora, Canton, we're starting to see some rain now beginning to move into that area. We've heard some rumbles of thunder here in downtown and you also see again, still some ongoing strong and severe thunderstorms. There we go with the uh, with the look at the hour by hour forecast. Well, I take you forward here. This is 330 in the morning. Take it about seven o'clock in the morning. The general consensus here is at some point in time between like four and six o'clock this morning, there will be a point where this front just kind of puts the brakes on. OK, when the brakes get put on, that's when the heavy rain aspect becomes even more of an issue. Even though we're already going to be dealing with localized flooding concerns, that will be more of a localized sense. This may be a little bit more prolific because guess what? That band of rain just kind of trains over the same areas over and over again through about lunchtime. And then once the front finally starts to get the push from the west, then we get storms to start flaring up again once we start to get some forcing. Once the forcing starts to happen again, once we get the front to start to make some moves again, that's when we'll get the front to start to move eastward. And again, we'll probably have another severe weather threat. If you are underneath the tornado watch right now, which is a good chunk of the area right now uh, until uh, 6 a.m., this is a look at the rainfall estimates, by the way. And these rainfall estimates that we've got going on here this morning up here in the South Delta you got one and uh, 1.6 inches. I'm just you know randomly hitting some some points here, uh, but a couple spots here have been like two and four inches already this morning. This is not even where the line stalled out. So you know we've got still a long way to go on, on that uh, aspect uh, because this line is eventually going to stall out as it's making its way off to the north and east. Uh, go over to the watches and again there's your tornado watch i mentioned this earlier uh you know the original tornado watch that we had for issaquina sharkey and humphreys county that went until two o'clock that was allowed to expire you probably will not get another tornado watch today okay because you're behind the line now and your severe weather threat has come to an end now central areas that is not the case I think that we could not only have to deal with the fact of the tornado watch that goes until 6 a.m., we probably get another one for more sections of the area later on today. So if you live east of I-55, think about this afternoon. Tala, Leak, uh, as well as Scott, Simpson, uh, Scott, uh, Smith County, Covington, Jeff Davis, Walthall counties. These two counties aren't even in the watch right now. I I'd expect that you probably do get in the watch at some point in time. So this is why we continue to say long duration event on this one. Uh, let's go over to Max 1. Let's go over to the radar and show you where we are presently. Back to the tornado warned storm that's coming out of Adams County into Jefferson County. Uh, of course, that circulation much broader now as it's moving up towards Fayette, but Fayette take the course of least regret, even though the warning technically will expire here in about a minute's time. I don't think that they, I don't think they will go downstream on that based off of what we're seeing. Yeah, I don't think so either, Patrick. Nothing new has come out of the National Weather Service either. So at 245, what we'll do is we'll hold here for an extra five minutes. Just make sure everything is all copacetic. We'll do a, a real quick rundown on what to expect moving forward because I don't want you to think for a second we're done with this. I wish that we were, 
for mm -hmm. all of our sakes, but today is a long day. Um, but this warning is about to expire. That's the only tornado warning that we have going on right now. We've been on the air since about 915 uh, this uh, this after this late last night. Uh, so this has already been a long duration event in of itself. And guess where the line is? Zoom out, Brandon. Let's see where the line is currently located at. It hadn't even got to Jackson yet. So again, this is a long term event that we're talking about here. Uh, we do have a severe thunderstorm warning with a tornado possible tag that's coming out of Louisiana. That storm is still in Louisiana presently. Uh, that's coming up past the old river structure, very close to the old river structure. Uh, and then um, we'll be working its way through southern portions of Adams County. Training along the same line as the first storm that we just had the tornado warning expire on. Yeah, okay? they just expired. That so line. that warning is expired. Okay, we're gonna hold here a couple more minutes. I just want to get you set for where we're going here over the next couple of hours, because guess what? The storms are not going to be done anytime soon. So let's go over to Max Three behind me, guys. Um, and I just want to step through here. Now, this is going to say Thursday. I got to fix that because, you know, I was building graphics for yesterday. And, you know, this is where we're at. But I want to point out a couple of things here. When you look at Impact Tracker today, this is for today, not Thursday. This is for Wednesday. I've already updated that part, this part here. This is how the day goes. A significant risk for somebody in central Mississippi to be seen where exactly, where that front stalls out. But somebody in central Mississippi is going to have a flood risk later on this morning through mid morning and then we get a secondary storm threat, severe th thunderstorm threat in the elevated category through the afternoon hours. OK, so I'd say maybe after about 10 or 11 o'clock this morning through about four o'clock in the afternoon. So there's a secondary severe weather window that will come into play. Not to say that between now and then we won't see severe weather because we're still underneath that tornado watch until 6 a.m. But giving you an indication that we're going to make a transition out of severe weather for a couple of hours to a flood risk and that flood risk could be significant wherever it just happens to set up. Then a secondary severe weather risk will come into play during the late morning, early afternoon. And then by the time we head towards about six, seven o'clock this evening, we'll have exiting showers. That will be very nice for all of us, right? But it's going to take a long time. This is a long duration event. We've already had uh, at least one uh, school closure. Um, uh, we already have one school closure. That's going to be the Macomb School District. I wouldn't be surprised if somebody else delays or, you know, you know, I know we're at the end of the, uh, of the school semester and, you know, exams are going on. So there, there's some thought processes there. Mm -hmm. Again, we do not make those decisions. That is up to the districts. So, you know, I, the first thing that people always ask whenever we have severe weather, we put the red banner up there is when will schools close? Are they going to be delayed? Are they going to? I don't make those calls. Brandon doesn't make those calls. Dave doesn't make those calls. That is up to the districts themselves. But hour by hour forecast, again, you see the line of showers and thunderstorms. That's 7 o'clock in the morning. Uh, we will probably here in the metro area have the storms ongoing, okay, ongoing uh, through the morning commute, through the morning commute and into the uh, start of school. Again, I don't know if JPS or Rankin County or Madison County, uh, Clinton Public Schools, High Hines County School, I don't know if they're, what, they're, what their plans are uh, with this. We'll find out when you find out. And usually, a lot of times, the parents find out before we do because of the fact that they send out the, the text messages nowadays. You know, we didn't have text messages back in the day. You had to wait until the <laughs> scroll came across the, the bottom of the screen. Right. Uh, but again, we do have, again, that line of showers and thunderstorms that's going to continue to make its way down to the south and east. And eventually it does become to a point that it stalls out. When it stalls out, that's the flood threat. Secondary threat of severe weather will come in here later on. I do want to go down the line really quickly. I want to give everybody an update of where they are presently and where we are going uh, moving forward. Let's start in Itala County. And again, we still have some gusty winds up here. Northern Itala County north of Kosciuszko, past Possum Neck and Hesterville, and west, that's moving out to the east, heading out towards French Camp in the southern portions of uh, Montgomery County, also out towards Ethel and McCool up along Highway 12. Again, no severe weather active here, but there is some strong wind potential here, uh, some gusty winds at around 40 miles per hour, not out of the realm of possibility. Goodman, Durant, as well as Pickens, heavy downpours moving into your area, and very soon crossing the Big Black River into northern portions of Madison County. You see Canton here uh, ongoing with some fairly heavy rainfall. Um, let's do this really quickly. Let me pull this up on the thing. Um, let's take Max three behind me once it pulls up. Give it just a second. OK, let's take Max three behind me really quickly. I'm going to show you this. Uh, uh, a look at some of the MDOT cameras across the network. Of course, metro area right now, 
That's Sidewell County line. You're fine right now. But uh, heavy rain is starting to move towards Canton. That's a look at 22 and I-55 up at Canton. Heavy rain is about to move across the Big Black River. 20 at Pearson, 20 at the split, 20 at Norrell. Everything's fine right now, but things are going to change fairly quickly. Okay, this is a look at Lakeland, Lakeland at, uh, at Treetops, Lakeland Commons, Airport. Everything's quiet now, but very soon things are going to change. Back over to uh, the radar on Max 1, and let's go back down the line. Again, as I just meant, mentioned, you saw the lightning popping up in Canton. That's soon to be in your neck of the woods with some very heavy rainfall crossing the Big Black River. It's already in Flora. It's approaching uh, Livingston. Be up towards uh, also around Kearney Park, Bentonia, and the southern portions of um, of uh, Yazoo County back over towards Nod and Scotland uh, as well. Again, metro area, I wouldn't be surprised here within the next hour, you're inundated with very heavy rainfall. Let's go down to the other warning. Uh, uh, they may have allowed it to expire. Actually, they did allow it to mm -hmm. expire. The warning that we were talking about coming out of uh, southern Warren County into eastern Claiborne County, that storm has been allowed to expire. But uh, I caution you with this. Let's go over to the velocity product really quickly because you see that Boeing segment there that is uh, working its way through there. Um, I'm not overly in uh, enthralled with that because it, it looks like it could try to try to spin up. So that's why we're, we're trying to get you a heads up here. Far southwestern portions of Hines County, we're talking like Utica, Learned, Raymond. Okay, Utica, Learned, Raymond. Back over to traditional radar, how hard it's raining mode. And um, let's uh, step back up north uh, to the to the Claiborne County storm. Again, that storm, as, as it tracks north and eastward, it should approach the metro area here within the next 30 minutes and probably into downtown by about four o'clock. We're approaching three o'clock in the morning. Uh, so that's again, something that we'll be watching further south. Let's go to the other severe thunderstorm warning uh, that was issued again. The one tornado warning that we did have that was allowed to expire. That was for Fayette down south and west of that. We do have a severe thunderstorm warning that's ongoing. The actual storm that is prompting that is coming out of Louisiana. That was a, a tornado worn storm there. Uh, let's look at the velocity product in this. I, I don't want to uh, you know, don't want to sleep on this because it does have a, a tornado possible tag on it. And uh, let's see if it'll pop in there. Ah, it's just messy. Mm -hmm. uh, that's for coming from Fort, Fort Polk. Try to get it from New Orleans. If we can, uh, you might have to slide a little further south uh, to get New Orleans. Further south. See if it pop in from New Orleans. Uh, well, I know New Orleans is having some. Okay, there we go. Um, there it is right there uh, from the New Orleans perspective. You kind of see it right there. Let's try to zoom in a little bit on it, uh, Brandon, um, before it tries to pop over to, yeah, see, it tries to pop so over far. to, yeah. yeah. I don't know why it's doing that, but right there, there's some circulation. That's why I, 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 I'm pausing here because mm -hmm. I'm wondering what the next move is and see if that is uh, the next storm to watch. Okay, yeah, they just issued, yeah, they just a, issued a tornado, tornado warning. warning. Yep, so there it is. Yep. All right, <laughs> well, there you go. And it's actually not for that storm. But so we, yeah, the we second, saw this one earlier too, though. Yeah, this was the one that was ahead of it. Uh, this is the one that is, you know, training ahead of it uh, this morning. So that one's going to go until 345. So we ain't done yet, y'all. A uh, new tornado warning just coming out for Adams, Jefferson, and Franklin counties. That rotation is strengthening up again. I'm going to try to pull up that other MDOT camera. Brandon, you take it for a second. Yes, yeah, certainly. Um, you know, that this is going to be kind of the setup for just quite some time. And again, we're also having to watch that one downstream that's still in Louisiana. We were just kind of pinpointing, having to use the uh, New Orleans radar. We're having to use these various radars, especially when we start to get into where well, we're seeing storms downstream in Louisiana to get a vantage point because Jackson's where our tower is in Brandon is too far to really get the best depiction of how some of those storms are looking in Louisiana. So we'll continue to keep an eye on what's happening again for portions of Adams and this is leading into uh, Franklin and portions of Jefferson. This tornado warning is going to go until what are we looking at at 251 till 345. And so again, still seeing some rotation here on this particular cell. Again, there is that wind component that we're watching. It's going to be going over. It's going to be going near Cranfield, Cranfield, Fenwick, Natchez State Park is still downstream. I will say folks that are in Natchez, you have kind of had a, a navy low for a little bit, but you're outside of the tornado warning polygon, if you will, but still in portions of uh, Adams County, 
Selma, you're going to also potentially be impacted by this. Now, if you're not necessarily getting the uh, tornado profile, potentially, we know there is some circulation. Certainly a decent amount of wind potentially for Selma, but Fenwick, Cranefield, Leesdale. Let's put a cone on this just to kind of take it downstream further. Who will be impacted? And some things that we're going to continue to watch are sales surrounding this one because there's still that potential for others to begin to develop as well. So Fenwick, 302, Natchez State Park, 309, just called that out. Cadillac, you're becoming impacted multiple times. You were just impacted. Now looks to potentially be impacted again, if not by a, the tornado profile, potentially. We haven't gotten any uh, indicators that there's a tornado on the ground, but this is more uh, radar indicators for us. Fayette. Dennis Crossroads, Blue Hill at 356, Port Gibson at 405, Hermanville. I got family in both Port Gibson and in Hermanville. So certainly downstream, making sure you're finding a safe zone if they take it into, if they take this downstream. Certainly something to just be thought, uh, courteous of Port Gibson, Hermanville, those that are in uh, portions of, uh, it's going to be Claiborne County. And so, um, again, if they take that downstream is what we're going to have to watch. Let's put it back into radar just to get a, a vantage point on it. Again, there is a little bit of a little bit of tightening there, something that we're going to continue to watch over the next couple of minutes that we can see downstream. You noticing anything, Patrick? I, I was just going to pass this along uh, just for the folks who are with us this morning. 2.55 in the morning, you see the uh, MDOT camera there, very close to the same location. Again, training over the same areas right. there, Highway 61 and uh, Highway 84. I just got this. Uh, uh, there are going to be some school districts that are closed today. Brookhaven School District, Kapai County School District, Lawrence County School District, uh, Lincoln County Schools, uh, the Macomb School District, and the Holmes Consolidated District will have a delayed start. A delayed start for the homes consolidated. Uh, so again, uh, we're, we're starting to get the, uh, you know, I, I say this, it's like a domino effect. One goes and everybody goes. Right. Uh, so that's what we're dealing with this morning. Again, Brookhaven, Kapai County, Lawrence County, Lincoln County, uh, Macomb, not, we have not heard from North or South Pike. Again, there, there are different districts there. Haven't heard from Hazelhurst either. Uh, so for the folks who are listening in, in the back, uh, start working on uh, getting that information too. Uh, Macomb's out, uh, and then uh, as I mentioned, the Holmes County Consolidated District is on a delayed start. Let's go again. Let, let's um, let's keep let's if we can try to double box that mm -hmm. that M dot camera with 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 this with this radar image. Let's right. try to let's try to work on that if you can, guys. And I greatly appreciate it. But where uh, where we got that circulation? It looks like it is ramped up pretty quickly as it's about to cross Highway 84. Again, uh, what you're seeing there, again, the circulation crossing Highway 84, that is what you're seeing from the MDOT perspective. That is a couple of miles, maybe about two or three miles away from where the circulation is currently located at. So let's keep that going, mm -hmm. keep us in the boxes, and we'll work from here. Let's go over to the circuit. Uh, let's go over to a debris tracker really quickly. I just want to see if we see anything associated with that. Now, this is going to be messy when, once we get down here, and I just don't think that we're going to be able to see it, at least from that perspective, from uh, Brandon. See if we can see it from New Orleans or, or, or Fort, Fort Polk, but I, I doubt that we will just because of just where the radar is located at, and I, I just yeah. don't see it from there. Uh, okay, let's go back over to something useful. Let's go over to, again, the which way the winds are blowing mode, okay, the, the velocity mode. Again, circulation right here that's approaching Highway 84 near the Cranfield community, same area that we called out uh, about 30 minutes ago. This morning is going to go until 245, guys, uh, 345 rather, uh, this morning. So a long duration event, uh, as we've been mentioning, and it's not going to stop anytime soon, unfortunately. That circulation, again, crossing over uh, Highway 84 uh, between Washington and the Cranfield community. I can't see what the road name is right there, Brandon. You're gonna have to call it out because it's, <laughs> it's like I'm, I'm looking far yeah, away. That's North Palestine Road. North Palestine Road. Okay, so again, circulation coming across that area right now, the Fenwick area uh, community. Uh, again, this area here uh, is generally you know, just the highway out here, but we know that there's some some folks who have some houses out here. Right. You need to be in your safe place, interior room, away from windows. As Dave mentioned, he left his he left yeah. his hat uh, down there, uh, his hard hat. Uh, I have a friend of mine uh, who is famous on TikTok because of his of his bicycle helmet. So again, um, you know, those are you know, it may seem silly, yeah. but that is one way to keep yourself safe 
in this event. Make sure that you have hard sole, sole shoes on in these types of situations because you never know if you've got to make your way out of a situation. Let's hope that's not the case right now. No indication saying such, mm -hmm. but Take it as what it is. Again, a tornado warned storm could produce a tornado at any point in time. The circulation is there. You should take your precautions. Interior room away from windows, lowest floor of your home. Again, if you're in downtown Natchez, I would give you the all clear, but I know we've got folks who have Natchez addresses east mm -hmm. side of town, east of Highway six, uh, 61 out here on 84. You need to be in your safe place now. Interior room away from windows, lowest floor of your home. And even if you're not getting the wind circulating, uh, there's still some wind that's coming down pretty good uh, that could cause some straight line wind damage. As I mentioned before, it doesn't matter if it's twisting about in a circle or if it's coming straight at you, it's wind and wind can do a whole bunch of damage. Uh, so again, you know, no, no need to argue about that. It's just what it is. You need to be prepared for it. So even if it's not putting down a tornado, it's got some wind with it. Things are starting to slacken up a little bit on that camera, but uh, still very active on the lightning side of things uh, as that storm is making its way off to the north and east Brandon. Yeah, and certainly there, there has been that strengthening component as well, too. You can kind of just take this a few scans back and you can see where there has been just that rotation has begun to tighten a little bit more as it's gotten closer to the Natchez State Park. And so that's something that we have to continue to keep an eye on because, of course, this is radar indicated. We haven't gotten anything from the National Weather Service or any storm spotters. Um, and hopefully in a situation like this, hopefully nobody's really trying to get too close to see if this is a tornado on the ground because many of these are rain wrapped. We know how that looks for uh, Mississippi. We may have that uh, rotation on the ground, but most of them, the visibility just isn't there. And of course, the, uh, the tree line uh, that we have in the state of Mississippi, because we have some of these rural areas that have, uh, they're pretty dense with uh, trees. And so certainly that's the situation we're dealing with, especially in Adams County. But again, Again, Patrick, I mean, this is certainly a little bit better rotation tightening, if you will, as this gets closer to Fenwick. Over Fenwick right now, folks, if I know that's a small little community there, isn't that right, Patrick? Certainly, uh, for those that are living there, this is right on top of you right now. There's yeah. that component. The rotation is there, and this is kind of getting a little bit stronger as this continues to make its way towards Natchez, uh, Natchez State Park. I'm just going to put a little bit of a cone in it, and I'm watching what's downstream. Don't you see that, Patrick? Just, I was just looking at yeah. that down down behind it, the one that we were talking about that was yeah. coming out of Louisiana. Uh, you know, this thing is just wrapping up on the backside of this. Yeah. You know, so you got you got two, one up north, one in the middle, and one down south. Right. Uh, so there's really three that are tracking across this area. The two of note right. Right now, uh, the main one is the one that's crossing near Cranfield presently. And again, you still see the M dot camera there uh, in the uh, big uh uh, in the big screen there showing the frequent lightning again we're trying to we're showing you multiple ways of getting that information right now trying to give you some uh, other perspectives that's one way up north the one north of Fayette that was the original warning right it's trying to strengthen again uh, so again you know while we were talking about cycling these storms will go through uh, life cycle. Sometimes they will go through a cycle that's like 45 minutes to an hour and then they pulse down. When they pulse down, they, they, the severe thunderstorms uh, aspect goes away and the next thing you know, they pulse right back up and next thing you know, they're trying to produce a tornado again. I think the northern street, uh, the northern one is trying to do it again. The one that we're watching presently is the one that's uh, crossing 84 near Natchez State Park, near Washington right now. Uh, again, just the east of Washington, uh, near Cranfield, heading up to Natchez State Park. Park, crossing Highway 61 here uh, fairly soon up near the Cannonsburg area, which is uh, where you cross over to go up 553 up towards Church Hill and at the beginning of the Nat uh, Natchez Trace Parkway. Put a cone on this real quick. Yeah, Patrick. go ahead and do that. Yes, yeah, certainly downstream Natchez State Park. Again, small communities, not a whole lot of uh, residential areas out there, but small communities uh, near the Natchez State Park. Again, if, if find that safe zone. It's one of those situations. This is more radar indicated. Haven't seen any just reports yet coming out from the National Weather Service. But again, downstream, if this continues to go in that north uh, east Eastern fashion, there has been that tightening within this particular sale that we're watching. So certainly take this with all seriousness. Cadillac, you were just getting impacted just moments ago by that sale that's it, that's further north of it, northeast. That is doing a little bit of uh, cycling, if you will. Fayette, Melton at 341, Dennis Crossroads at 346, Russell at 355. 
Gordon at 359 and Patterson at 405. If this continues downstream and by the looks of it, folks, I think it will because there's still that rotation that's continuing to tighten. We'll take this just a few slides back. But you can see that there is that circulation within that cell getting a little bit tighter. Right there. Right, right there. Yeah. As it as it gets closer to the Natchez State uh, Natchez State Park. And so certainly want to keep an eye on this one, Patrick, over the next couple of scans just because of what it's doing currently right now. Yeah, I was just looking at the debris tracker and trying to see if I could see anything. It's just so far away uh, that we're not able to see it right now. Uh, but, you know, take the course of least regret, my friends. That is uh, probably one of the stronger circulations so far at this, at this late hour that right. we've seen. Um, at any rate, take your tornado precautions. If it's not putting down a tornado, it's definitely putting down some wind. We've seen that from the MDOT camera. Uh, so again, uh, that's crossing for, uh, 84 presently, just to the east of Washington, up near um, uh, approaching Cannonsburg there along the uh, Jefferson and Adams County line. Now, technically, this does clip a the far northern portion of Franklin County. Uh, let's zoom out really quickly. Mm -hmm. And actually, let's take the radar full. Let's take the radar full. Um, and what we'll do here is go back. I want to show you that, you know, if you're if you're down here near Edison, Meadville, uh, Bude, even Roxy, uh, the, the, the tornado portion of this storm is going to clip the far, and I really mean the far northwestern corner of Franklin County. So if you're in Roxy, if you're in Meadville, Bude, Edison, McCall Creek, and those areas, and you may be hearing the warning uh, sirens going off, this is not a warning for you guys, okay? This is for the far northwestern corner of Franklin County, the Hamburg community, Highway 33, north of Roxy. So if you're in Roxy, I know we have a lot of folks who watch us in Roxy, uh, if you're in Roxy, this will stay just north of you, but barely. Uh, circulation right now just coming up and new flash flood warning coming out. It goes back to the slowing down aspect of this. We'll get to that here in a second. But again, circulation right here crossing Highway 84 near Natchez State Park. And moving off to the north and east, let's go back over to Velocity and show you. Oh, wow. Yeah. It, it got messy there. Um, but again, right over the Natchez State Park mm -hmm. right now, Cannonsburg. Four Forks, 33s so right here, 61. So again, in this general vicinity, you need to be in your tornado safe place. Again, northeastern Adams County, southern areas of Jefferson County. It's going to clip the far northwestern corner of, uh, of Franklin County, but I want to reemphasize if you're in Bude, if you're in Meadville, if you're in Edison, McCall Creek, if you are even in Roxy, uh, that storm is going to be north and west of you, but you're still getting, uh, in Roxy at least, you're definitely getting the heavy rainfall aspect of it, uh, and even maybe some small hail not out of the realm of possibility. But this is where we are watching very closely as that storm moves off to the north and east. Um, let's zoom out really quickly. I just mm -hmm. want to get a broad overview. Again, that's your one tornado warning that we've got going on right now. We've got another broad circulation. That's the original warning that we had about 20 minutes ago that was allowed to expire south of Fayette. It has tried to re-strengthen again up here near the Blue Hill area in the northern portions of Jefferson County, about to make its way into southern portions of Claiborne County, out near the Pattison community, uh, along Highway 547. So uh, in this general vicinity here, I need folks in that area to kind of start thinking about, hey, what would happen if I had a tornado warning happening here uh, soon enough? These are not fun, my friends. Uh, unfortunately, they're in a line too, and it looks like we had another tornado warning yep. come out behind me uh, in that very same line of storms. Siri. Siri. And <laughs> just to add to that one that's going into yep. uh, the Adams County now that's in Franklin and also portions of a Jefferson, they're going to continue that for 345. So that one we've been talking about, Patrick, they're mm -hmm. going to continue that until 345. Okay. And just a reminder, again, one, two, three now in the same line. This is <laughs> oddly reminiscent of what we dealt with two weeks ago. Right. Uh, so again, you've got in the same cluster, in the same line, which just happens to be the leading edge of this band of rain, one circulation that is trying to re-strengthen, one that is pretty strong moving through far northwestern areas of Adams County, 
And the second, uh, third one that is developing east of I-49 back in Louisiana. We'll get there when we get there. And let's hope it falls apart before it gets here. But the main two that we're watching presently, they've uh, shored up the warning a little bit. Circulation remains again right over the Natchez Strait State Park. Again, far northwestern Franklin near the Hamburg community, but it stays north of Roxy. There's Roxy right there. You're probably still going to get some wind here in Roxy. My friends here in Roxy. Uh, just be prepared for the wind, mm -hmm. but the tornadic circulation stays to the north, but still strong wind potential coming through here at Roxy Highway 33 and Highway 84. This continues northeast Fayette. Next call to action, my friends in Fayette, go ahead and be in a safe place. Interior room, away from windows, lowest floor of your home. And uh, of course, uh, as this makes its way up to the north and east uh, this morning, uh, time right now coming up close to 310 here on a uh, Wednesday morning. It's an alert day uh, to say the <laughs> least. And unfortunately, uh, we've already had uh, just kind of reviewing where we've been over the last couple of hours. We've already had some reports of uh, and let's just go broad scale on this uh, yeah. really quickly and we'll, we'll we'll circle back to all of this really quickly as well. Um, We've already had reports of a tornado that crossed the Mississippi River, actually two of them at least. Uh, one that was in southern Issaquina into southern Sharkey, another one that was up in the central and northern portions of Sharkey County. Um, so that's where we are right now, um, at least to start off. Unfortunately, this is such a long duration event that this is going to be a situation that will go through this morning commute today. That's why I, I mentioned a couple of minutes ago, we've got several school districts that are out or delaying, and I wouldn't be surprised if more follow the domino mm -hmm. effect here. Brookhaven School District, Kapai School District, Kapai County School District, Lawrence County School District, Lincoln County School District, Macomb School District, and the Holmes County Consolidated School District. Uh, the Holmes County Consolidated will be on a delay, but everybody else is closed today. The ones I just called, Brookhaven, Kapai County, Lawrence County, Lincoln County, Macomb are out today. Hines, uh, Holmes County on a delay. But this goes back to the fact of this slowing down process of this whole storm system as it's moving in here this morning. We're getting close to the rain moving into Metro Jackson. I know maybe folks are getting the rumbles of thunder. They're probably like, OK, what's going on? You told me it's an alert day. What's going on in my backyard? We'll work our way down the line yet again, but we'll start down here with the tornado warned storm. Actually, we'll work our way up the line. Tornado warned storm again, circulation right at the corner uh, where three counties come together. Franklin coming up from the south and east, north, that's Jefferson, south and west, that is Adams County. Circulation coming right over Natchez State Park. Moving north and eastward, that general path will take it up to the south side of Fayette, okay, where you uh, get on to Highway 33 out here, okay. Uh, the elementary schools here, um, you know, as you're, uh, you're coming down Highway uh, 33, coming to Highway 28, um, uh, you've got the subway out there. So again, kind of give you some, some landmarks here uh, <laughs> of where this is going to be heading here. And it will parallel 61. I don't want anybody on Highway 61 from Fayette down to J uh, Natchez right now uh, because this thing is going to be uh, kind of buffeting right along 61. The other storm that we were looking at that was the original tornado warning that was allowed to expire 245. That storm still has some circulation with it. No warning active for uh, Claiborne County, but for our friends in Patterson, I would go ahead and just kind of be thinking, all right, maybe I'll, uh, you know, this thing has had a history. And with that history, let me just go ahead and take that course of least regret. Go ahead and be in that safe place just for a couple of minutes. I know this is, uh, you know, an inopportune time. It's 3 o'clock in the morning. I usually wouldn't have my alarm go off until 3.15. Uh, so I feel you this morning. I, I understand these. Uh, this is not fun for anybody. But we're here to keep you and your family safe in these situations. That's what we are doing. That's our jobs, uh, you know, in these, uh, in these uh, rough goes of things. And let's hope that it's not a rough go for anybody. Uh, but we do have reports of uh, at least one structure damage up in Sharkey County. Uh, it may be, uh, I can't remember, is it either Sharkey or if it's a Queen County? Yeah, I think it's Sharkey, yeah. Uh, so uh, it, it was all in the same uh, general time frame, and of course we're, we're working and efforting getting some more information on that this morning. But again, that is going to continue its northward track again into uh, Jefferson County. So again, Jefferson County, time to action now. If you're along 61 or Highway 33, south of Fayette, Cadillac, um, you know, north of Hamburg, be in a safe place, interior room, away from windows, lowest floor of your home. If you've got a storm shelter, get there, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, I know uh, the Adams County, um, uh, the Adams County has a, um, 
a, a safe room uh, that was probably open whenever the, the original tornado watch was issued. They're really good about that down there. Uh, and really, I, I know Rankin County has theirs. They open whenever they have a tornado right. watch that's issued. So, uh, you know, if you don't feel safe, if I, right now in Adams County, I think you're just, you're stuck where you are right now. Mm -hmm. If you don't feel safe in Rankin County, for instance, and you need to go to a safe room, that's open. Uh, they, again, they open those whenever we have the tornado watches and the storms are, are working their way towards uh, Rankin and, and, and throughout the metro area. So just something to, you know, uh, to ponder, to say the least. All right. So again, two circulations that we're watching. Again, the w main one that issued the tornado warning is coming up into Jefferson County. Secondary one. The weaker one, but still something to watch coming up into uh, southern portions of Claiborne County. Let's go over to the how hard it's raining mode, Brandon, and uh, we'll work our way back up the line. OK, so let's go up north and uh, let's look at uh, storms coming into southwestern Hines County. You see Utica here, Highway 27, Highway 18, some very heavy rainfall from Utica all the way up to about Vicksburg this morning, crossing the Big Black River, coming up the Natchez Trace Parkway. That's going across Heinz Community College, the Utica campus. Uh, that's going to eventually make its way out here near Learned, Raymond, Rebel Academy, uh, out here near Drago Road. Um, uh, thinking about uh, Seven Springs area as well uh, here in central Hines County. Again, this is all shifting north and eastward. Let's put a storm track on that. I mm -hmm. think it's moving about 30 miles per hour. So let's just put um, the, the squall track on that out towards the metro and just kind of get us an idea of where that's coming from uh, with that. Um, and, um, well, well, ain't, well, uh, well, there's two two ways that you can get rain at this point. Let's let's work on this one right here. Yeah, there you go. Uh, so, Learned 327, Raymond 344, Clinton 4 o'clock, Bolton 345, 350-ish, uh, uh, Poindexter Park. That's in downtown, so in, in the Poindexter Park area, um, uh, uh, around JSU in that general vicinity, about 410 this morning. East over Northeast Jackson, 420, Ridgeland, 425. So that gives you some, some points here. So again, you see Poindexter Park here, say that's downtown Jackson, that would be about 410 this morning, Clinton, four o'clock. And of course, we've got multiple cameras to watch along that track as it's moving through here. So let's uh, clear that out. But we've got this one storm coming in this direction, but we also have these storms that are kind of laying themselves across the area coming from northwest to south and east. This is non-severe now. Of course, uh, that's where the activity was originally. Uh, but crossing the Big Black River right now, a fairly heavy band of rain from Bentonia all the way up to Pickens, Durant, Goodman, up to Kosciuszko presently. My friends, Yazoo City, Rolling Fork, Anguilla, back over towards Myersville, Eagle Lake, your area right now, I would tell you that you're done. Belzona as well, you're done with severe weather, okay? Tornado watch has been canceled. You are not probably going to get severe weather from here on out. Flooding rains are a possibility, but severe weather turning unlikely at this point mm -hmm. as you're behind the line of storms. As that line of storms moves past your area, your severe weather threat goes to zero. OK, so the question mark is where does that line of storms ultimately stop? And what will flare up out ahead of those that line of storms going through the coming hours to be seen at this point. But again, a very active day is on the way. Now, again, very heavy rainfall continues uh, in those locations that I just mentioned. But I would say if you live in Yazoo City, Rolling Fork, uh, Myersville, back up towards uh, Belzona, Chula, Lexington, this area here in the South Delta, Eagle Lake included, and I would I'll, I'll keep Vicksburg in there for now. Uh, but in that general vicinity, again, north and west of uh, the bluff, you're done with severe weather. Heavy rain, yes. Uh, that's why we had the flash flood warning ongoing right now. Southern Issaquina back and into northern Warren over into southern Sharkey. Uh, but again, heavy rain aspect there. The severe weather potential will stay along the initial line as it's moving through here. But again, that northwestern corner of our area, the south delta, I would give the all clear for severe weather. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... Uh, you can go on about your business this morning, but uh, the heavy rain aspect, you still need to be weather aware too. Let's go back down south to our tornado worn storm. Again, circulation again nearing the Cadillac community, approaching Fayette. Fayette, I need you in your safe place. All right, uh, as you're uh, moving up to the, uh, the north. Here's Highway 33. Let's zoom in a little bit closer, Brandon. Appreciate you. Um, 
and see if we can. Uh, it's, it's just not <laughs> there ain't a lot out there, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, as you're as you're getting down here and to some of these rural sections of uh, of uh, the county. Both Stampley Road, I uh, see uh, Murdoch Taylor Road, uh, Gibbs Road here, Stampley Road, and uh, McNair Road. Uh, all this area here, moving off to the north and east. Uh, you know, crossing Highway 33, very close to Highway 28, where 28 takes you back out towards Hazelhurst uh, and uh, Kapai County communities. Uh, this again is going to be where it's headed towards. So again, safe place now in southern portions of, uh, of Jefferson County. Let's go zoom out a little bit from here. I want to show you that it's firmly into Jefferson County now. So Adams County, I'll give you the all clear. I would say, I would say hold on for a little bit in the Hamburg community. The reasoning why you still got strong winds that are blowing mm. through here, maybe 50 to 60 miles per hour. So uh, again, the circulation may be just to the, your north, but you still got some strong winds moving through there. And that includes Roxy, by the way, you're underneath the severe thunderstorm warning, but the tornadic portion of the storm is to your north. This is strong wind potential here that could be gusting anywhere from uh, 40 to 50, maybe 60 miles per hour uh, in these instances right along Highway 33. That's a lot of trees out there in that part of the world. Uh, so again, uh, this general vicinity here, you need to be in your safe place from the wind perspective. Circulation right here, heading up towards Fayette. So again, let's put a, a quick storm track on that just mm -hmm. to get it up into Fayette. And we're keeping an eye on the other one, too, uh, for that matter, the one that's uh, moving up towards the Patterson community. Uh, Fayette 331, uh, right now it is 320. So 320. Uh, you got 10 minutes. I would say if you've got a Fayette address and you live closer to Highway 28 or south of Highway 28, time to action is now. Don't wait till 331, okay? You need to be in your safe place now, okay? Uh, Patterson Community, 403. That's over in the southern portions of Claiborne County. Uh, Dennis Crossroads there, 345 or so. Uh, so again, at, uh, subtract five minutes from this, and that's when you need to be in your safe place. But I would say if you have a Fayette address and you live south of Highway 28, you need to be there now because it's coming up on the back side of, uh, on the south side of Fayette right now. Um, I don't know if we have, do we have a producer in the back? Um, guys, just get in my ear. I'm on, I don't even know which microphone I'm on at this point. Uh, but just let me know if we have a producer back there uh, so we can uh, communicate with them directly uh, because we're going to need to get some you know, get some uh, some stuff going. I know they're trying to get ready for this uh, this little television program that we got going yeah. on from 4:30 till 7 o'clock on WLBT and Fox 40 from 7 to 9. So we're going to be here no matter what uh, here this morning. This morning goes again until 3:45 this mm -hmm. morning. Um, so again, that warning again, Fayette safe place now. Let's zoom back out, go back over to the how hard it's raining mode. Okay, so again, this is your traditional radar mode. And again, you see the very heavy rainfall. No matter what at this point, you're getting heavy rain and some gusty wind action. Even in Natchez, uh, or just south and east of Natchez with this next storm coming down the pipeline. But remember, it's like three storms here. One here, one here, one here, and a new one that's kind of formed down here as well. So there's really like four storms in this line that we're having to keep a close eye on. The original one, the new one, another one that's coming up behind it, and then yet again, a fourth one that's coming up out of Louisiana, uh, south and west of uh, Alexandria. Uh, thank you. Is that Alex? Yeah, that's Alex. Okay, just want to make sure. All right, so it's like I could only hear like a muffle, and I didn't know exactly who it was, but uh, okay. Uh, so let's just work work our way back down the line, and, and um, we'll work on getting some uh, cameras up here as well as these uh, storms start to make their way into the metro area. Actually, I'll work on that. Um, Actually, I forgot I'm going to go get my laptop because that's charging. Uh, so, Brandon, you take it over for a yeah. second while I go handle yeah, that certainly. business. Yeah, we'll go back through the top of this again just to kind of show folks the, the different vantage points so far. Of course, we know what we're dealing with still further southwest. Adams, moved, that's moved into portions of Jefferson County. But, again, not necessarily all clear for our counties like Atala. We go into leak portions of Madison but you're still dealing with the uh, heavy rain, also some wind component ahead of the line itself. As this continues to track towards the east, we'll still be dealing with some wind component for these counties. So going into portions of uh, Madison, I know that's near Canton. Well, Canton has Madison County. Well, Canton is in Madison County, but Nissan plant just over here on, uh, we got I-55, Nissan plant. You're starting to get into some of that, uh, the rain profiles getting a little bit heavier near you to where you start to see some of those yellows going, coming into uh, Canton, 
you'll start to see some heavier rains pushing in for you. Also, potential wind profile there, too, as this line of storms reaches into your area. Those that are still under the yellows and reds, you're just dealing with red. You're just dealing with heavier rain now for portions of Yazoo County, Yazoo City, Satarsha, Bentonia, uh, Berryville in Yazoo County. Those communities up and down 49, also up and down uh, th uh, that's going to be Highway 3 uh, or 433, heavy rain profile. So this is the, the, the whole thing about this. When we start getting into the commuting hours, folks that are further, just say north of I-20, you're probably not going to be seeing the uh, severe storms just yet until we get, if we have that potential for them to redevelop as we get into the afternoon. We're going to have that second um, if you will, kind of uh, the, 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 the not, not explosion, I wouldn't say that being the word, but kind of upcoming in the storms where we start getting back into a uh, heating potential. That's expected to happen again for us during the afternoon hours, which could be the potential again for a few of our northern counties just along the I-20 corridor. Continuing further down south, going into portions of uh, Hines County at the moment. You're seeing a few more rain chances pushing in for you. Some of this is getting a little bit heavier. We just talked about this near Learned. That's going to potentially move into portions of Clinton. Clinton, things are kind of quiet near you on 20. Bolton, uh, 20 going into Clinton. Kind of quiet right now. Rain starting to push in for you. Not dealing with so much at the moment, but we still have to watch this. This is moving near Learned. Some heavier rain chances pushing in for you. Downhill will be Raymond, 342. Raymond John Bell Williams at 346, McRaven at 355, Robinson Hell Stadium at 356, Clinton at 358. So if you're tuned in right now and you're in Clinton, 358 will be you for this heavier wind. We'll have to watch for uh, so to see if some storms develop out of this or not. But again, rain becoming a little bit heavier for you in Clinton. And I know we're not necessarily talking about the uh, the storm just yet, but we're just want, wanting to go downstream to get folks, if you're tuned in right now, to get you prepared for what's to come. Haven't got anything new yet. Well, they just canceled the uh, tornado warning for Adams and Franklin. So that's actually some good news right there. Let's circle back down there rather quickly to see what that looks like currently for us right now. Canceling the, uh, here it is right now. They just canceled it for Adams and Franklin, but they're continuing this for portions of uh, Jefferson County. So here's the, uh, the, 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 there's that area of rotation, circulation, if you will, just moving near Cadillac right now. Fayette downstream, Dennis Crossroads downstream from this particular circulation. Again, haven't gotten any, indi any indicators of a uh, tornado on ground yet. The only thing we've been seeing is just being uh, as far as radar indicator. And so they're gonna continue this until 345, of course, was, this was located a couple scans back. And so, again, just some, some of the stats from the National Weather Service, a, a severe thunderstorm capable of producing a tornado was located over McNair or 20 miles east of Natchez, moving northeast at 30 miles per hour. And so they're still keeping that, that 30 miles per hour component. Uh, Patrick, that's mm -hmm. something I've been watching as well. There has, these have slowed down just a little bit. That's probably something you've heard us talk about. And we may still see a little bit of that in these storms, just a little bit of a slowdown as they continue to track towards the northeast. And the line itself, there, there is going to be that slowdown component that we are still expecting to see which will then things turning over to more of a rain component where some folks get into flash flood series and something that we will have to watch as well because that will also impact. Not only will you see uh, the storms potentially for some of these communities more southwest as we go into the commuting hours, but there could be some heavy rain component there that could impact you as well as by the time you're getting ready to go to work around 6 or 7 a.m. And so that's something that we're going to have to watch. We'll take things back up right now. Still going to keep an eye on that in Jefferson, folks. Again, safe zone for you. Let's just put a cone on this just to kind of cover those that will be impacted downstream. Um, Harrison at 336. Stonington at 341. Dennis Crossroads at 345. Red Lick at 347, Tillman at 359. Downstream, again, not necessarily have gotten that this is a tornado on ground, but radar indicated. Take, do not take this lightly right now with this rotation. Make sure you're finding your, your, make sure you're finding your safe zone. Again, we've talked to you about what that kind of looks like. Center of your home, away from windows, rather that be in, in a, uh, maybe a closet that's in the center of your home, 
a bathtub where you can get a mattress over you. Um, if you have helmets or something that can be of a uh, head protection, make sure you're finding that safe zone. This will be downstream if we continue with this, which is again, there's still that rotation, a little bit more broader, I will say, um, not as tight as, as it has been. There is still a little bit of a wind component there reaching into portions of uh, that's going to be uh, portions of Franklin County. Still a little bit of a wind component, but the rotation's not as tight as I will say. We'll take it a few scans back. Again, a little bit more tighter earlier, but it's just gotten closer to Cadillac. But again, rotation's still there, and that's something we have to keep an eye on. We'll take this back out just a little bit further. Again, from where we were talking downstream from out of Hines County, some of that's starting to push in. Jackson's still rather quiet. If you're watching, you're tuned in, you're just like, hey, what is it happening for Jackson? Jackson in Jackson, still really quiet right now. You're probably hearing some, uh, some, some we've heard a couple of uh, thunder, uh, lightning, we've seen, heard some thunder already. So certainly having to get prepared for what's, ha what's going to come downstream. But again, quiet in Jackson, Byram, you're also seeing just some rain chances. Still rather quiet for you, for you, but the rain component is on the way. Storms are on the way, and that's something that we want you to continue to get prepared for, although there's no severe warnings for you, but we still have the tornado watch that will go in a effect until 6 a.m. going into the morning. Uh, further downstream, what we're watching right now into portions of uh, Kapaya County. Crystal Springs is quiet for you. Hazelhurst, quiet for you, but just off towards your west, Rain is going to push in and some of it's going to be heavy. Also uh, associated with the front itself, some straight line winds to also impact your area. Going into uh, portions of, uh, that'll be uh, Lincoln next uh, for uh, portions of Brookhaven. Haven't heard anything yet for Lincoln County because you're, as of right now, all clear. But just off towards your west, if these storms continue to shift towards the east, you'll begin to be impacted eventually. So just something to look forward to downstream. And they actually just canceled. They just lifted the uh, tornado warning, um, the, the thunderstorm warning, I should say. They just lifted the thunderstorm warning for uh, several of those counties. So they've taken that off of Adams. Also, Franklin has lost that tornado, that thunderstorm warning, the severe thunderstorm warning, and portions of uh, uh, Jefferson have lost that severe thunderstorm warning. So what they're keeping right now is just the tornado warning on this, uh, this, this circulation that's still kind of, uh, again, not the prettiest, it isn't the tightest. This, again, we're starting to lose some of that rotation here just between Cadillac, Fayette, and McNair. So again, not tight. As far as on the uh, as far as on the scan, but they're they're probably going to keep that tornado warning just of a concern because there's still that circulation. So still in these communities on 61, also for 28, if you're living out near there, we'll kind of go in just a little bit tighter. Still making sure you have a plan in place. Hopefully, if you've been tuned in, you're in your safe zone already. Just a few of the roads out there. I know this is some of these smaller populations like this. Not a whole lot of people living out here, but Gravel Hill Road, Owens Road. Again, you're still going to be in that circulation area, making sure you have a, making sure you found your safe zone on 28 going into Greater Faith Road. Again, safe zone. Make sure you have it. Moore Street, safe zone. You're still in the realm of circulation. Uh, Kamak Street, still in that realm, 553 going into Fayette. Again, small community there, but still want you to make sure you're in your safe zone. Although they have lifted the uh, severe thunderstorm warning, mm -hmm. still want to make sure that with this particular cell that we're watching in Jefferson, they're probably just keeping that tornado warning until this dies, dies down a little bit. Patrick, I'd say probably not as tight on that component anymore, is it? Yeah, it definitely has uh, kind of fizzled out. On the left-hand side, you see a bunch of the MDOT cameras across the network this morning. Of course, we're waiting and seeing the uh, metro effects of the showers and thunderstorms as they move in here. Uh, 332 here on a, uh, a long day ahead for all of right. us here. Uh, you, you see another, uh, this was the uh, tornado warning we were watching back over uh, south and west of the Natchez area. Does not look nearly as impressive. So, you know, we're getting to the point in time where, uh, you know, we are losing the daytime heating from yesterday. Yeah, I, we're, we're on the backslide of that. And so, you know, things have kind of plateaued, as Dave said earlier, kind of plateaued. But the southern areas were relatively untapped. And so that's why we saw the uptick in severe weather uh, down here over the last few hours. And more than likely, let's go back over to just traditional radar, mm -hmm. wide view. Uh, again, Fayette, safe place now. Stay in your safe place uh, while that's uh, rolling through there. But see, there's not a warning north of I-20. Only warning that's out right now, tornado warning in effect for uh, Jefferson County. 
Okay, so no warnings active right now across the northern areas. Remember earlier it was Issaquina, Sharkey, right. Humphreys, Yazoo, Hol uh, Holmes, Itala counties. Central areas have been relatively unscathed, okay, with the exception of right near the Natural Strikes Parkway. That's where we're seeing the next batches of storms. There are really, I, I'd say, three storms to watch. One that's moving into Hines County, one that's moving out of Claiborne County into far western Capaya, and the tornado warning storm that's currently in effect. Okay, uh, so what we're going to do here uh, is three, four, uh, this morning goes up until 345. We'll just run this till 4 o'clock. Okay, uh, just for the folks in the back, we'll just run it at 4 o'clock because the next thing that comes on is the news anyway, so you might as well. Uh, we've got, again, this line of storms that it will become more of a flash flood threat. We, we mentioned that, uh, you know, while we may not have severe weather consistently, your traditional severe weather. Um, and they just issued a tornado warning for uh, Claiborne, Capaya, and Jefferson. And, and that's going to go until 4.30. Mm -hmm. 4.30. There you go. So never mind, uh, I lied. We're not going to get off at 4 o'clock. We'll be here until 4.30, until the news starts. So there we go. Uh, new tornado warning coming out for that storm that's coming past Fayette uh, this morning. Uh, that's going to need to include the far eastern areas of Jefferson County, far southwestern area of uh, southeastern areas of Claiborne County, and far western Capaya County. And again, if you are hearing the sirens going off, Crystal Springs, Hazelhurst, Wesson, Beauregard, um, Gallman, uh, back over towards Hope, uh, Hopewell and Georgetown. Th uh, this is a storm that's way out here near Smyrna, okay? Like way away from you guys. Uh, but this would be like, uh, like closer, um, I would say almost to Camp Kamasa, but on the backs, uh, like not far from it, uh, where Camp Kamasa is being built out in the, the central uh, portions of uh, uh, Kapai County. That's where the warning basically ends. So again, right here, new tornado warning coming out. Again, Fayette, safe place, stay there right now. Circulation is just to your east, moving into some very rural areas. But I know uh, I've been out here on Highway 28 a time or two and know that there's uh, plenty of folks who live along Highway 28. You need to be in a safe place now, interior room away from windows, lowest for your home. Let's go back over to the Velocity product brand. And and, um, and again, it's kind of more diffused than it was about about 10 minutes ago. Uh, let's back up really quickly. I just want to back out um, a couple steps here and then back up the radar. Um, and you see how it's transformed over time, okay? Get you to about, let's stop there, about uh, 315 or so. Storm was coming up out of Adams County. Now let's start stepping it forward. Notice how it stayed on this trek. Got a little stronger as so it's moving across the county line. It got to a point to where it started to broaden out a little bit and then has kind of diffused itself. Uh, so while we have this warning until, this new warning until 340, uh, 430, it wouldn't be surprising if that maybe gets canceled before that based off of what we're seeing, but this mm -hmm. could cycle. Again, that goes back to the idea of these storms going through their uh, life cycles, uh, just kind of going up and down here in the last uh, couple of hours. Um, let's really quickly uh, um, circle back. Again, we've got this going on here, Jefferson County, safe place now, Fayette eastward, okay, going out towards uh, Union Church. Um, uh, and, and eventually making its way up towards the Patterson community in the far western sections of, of uh, Kapai County. The, uh, the initial storm here, again, it technically falls inside this new warning, but this will probably not get warned on. But I do want to go on to the traditional radar view of this because it does look peculiar when you look at it on that, on that look there because you can see that kind of curly Q shape here. Now we've got the, the, the the beam that goes through from the uh, the uh, Brandon water tower, uh, but that storm is intact here. Okay, so it's not like there's just a gap here. That storm is intact, and it, it comes to a point right here where it kind of has a little bit of a circulation. That's what we've been watching uh, over the last little bit. So you know we're watching that one closely because that's going to end up ultimately in Hines County. I do want to go up into Hines County briefly here to Raymond. Of course, very heavy rainfall here uh, right along the trace. Uh, Highway 18 approaching Raymond High School, uh, Hines Community College this morning uh, out here near Central Hines Academy. Um, you know, in this general vicinity here. Again, you need to be uh, looking at that and saying, all right, well, that's not fun. Uh, not severe. Uh, let's look at velocity really quickly. I just want to pique my interest here. And, um, and don't, well, I don't see anything of note right now, but I would say that we're going to watch this because it does have some surging winds. It's not as strong, but there's some surging winds here uh, moving towards Raymond and eventually will be moving out towards Clinton and the west sides of Jackson, probably 
uh, by the time we get to four o'clock, as we mentioned, probably about four o'clock in the morning into the uh, Jackson city limits, okay, uh, into the city limits by about four o'clock this morning. We're 338 presently. Uh, so again, just kind of piquing my interest here uh, with the, the shape of the storm, not necessarily what's happening right now, but still something uh, to note. No severe weather active right now in Hines County, but something we're just going to keep an eye on. Let's go down south uh, to the tornado warn storm again. And uh, there you go. It, it looks messy. Uh, so this morning here, will go until uh, this warning go until 340, uh, 345, but the new warning polygon here is going to go until 430 this morning. So again, tornado warning ongoing for this storm here that's coming out of uh, Jefferson County and it's heading towards southeastern areas of Claiborne County, heading into western sections of uh, Kapai County. You see some of the towns here again now near Patterson, Highway 547 here, uh, and then eventually out towards the Smyrna community as well as you're moving into central uh, portions of, um, of Kapai County. So again, just uh, the general consensus here is where that's headed. It's just north and east of uh, a Fayette. I'd say if you've got a Fayette address and you live north of town, you need to be in a safe place still as the storm is moving past you. If you're closer to like Highway 33 south of town, uh, I would give you the all clear right now. Uh, and anybody along Highway 61, all clear. Cannonsburg, back up near the Cadillac community, um, those areas give you the all clear on that storm. But now it's the eastern part of the county that we're underneath that tornado warning all the way into Capaya and uh, Capaya and <laughs> Capaya and Claiborne counties uh, this morning. Let's go broad scale here quickly, uh, just uh, giving everybody an overview. Uh, now, there have been some uh, conversations of, uh, let's go back radar uh, and just kind of point out some things here. I want to go, re uh, yeah, let's go out here to notice these storms down here, well ahead of the line, little, um, what we call mini spinnies. Uh, trying to do its thing coming in off the Gulf of Mexico. That's the moisture train coming in off the Gulf of Mexico this morning. That's going right up I-59. But some of these cells have occasionally had a little bit of rotation with it. Let's go over to the velocity product really quickly. I want to go down here along 59. And the reason why I point this out is because of the fact that Again, these are well out ahead of the main line. These may be the ones that ultimately we have to watch for later on today uh, as we kind of transition from the flash flood threat uh, back over to the severe weather threat. Uh, so that's from New Orleans' perspective. And you can, from, okay, from Jackson, you can see it a little better. Here's one. Uh, it's near Highway 11. That's, I think it's near Poplarville. Uh, so that's going to be near Poplarville. There's a little bit of rotation with that one. There's a little bit of rotation <coughs> with this one that's near uh, Somerville uh, back over uh, into far northwestern Jones County, southern Smith County. You see right there? Uh, so again, these cells out ahead of the main line got to be watched as well. These are not going to be your traditional looking ones that we've seen uh, earlier, uh, but these are going to be more low top supercells. Okay, these are storms that they're spinning on their own, but they're more of a tropical variety storm. Okay, they're coming directly off the Gulf of Mexico, feeding off that moisture, but they're also tapping in to that um, into that spin in the atmosphere. Go ahead, Brandon. So yeah, Alex, uh, you, you just wanted to confirm that scanner traffic, a tornado 20 miles east of, uh, 25 miles east of Natchez on scanner traffic. Tornado 25 miles east of Natchez. That's wildly specific. Yeah. Wildly specific. Um, but uh, I would say that that would be, uh, that would put it, if it, was it Highway 61? No confirmed okay. location. Okay, so uh, we'll work on that. Yeah. Um, again, that's uh, uh, that, that, that's not the best situation. Um, we'll work on trying to work to get that information. If you could, uh, Alex, work on that as well. Mm -hmm. uh, th that would probably be Jefferson County, uh, just based off of uh, where it's located at right now and where we are. So just call Jefferson County, see what we got going on. Uh, all right, thank you, sir. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and treat this again. We, 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 we're in the tornado warning. Again, doesn't matter. We've already been there uh, and we've been mentioning to you, Fayette needs to be in a safe place, interior room, away from windows, lowest floor of your home. Uh, again, this is moving out towards Blue Hill, Union Church, and these locations out in the eastern parts of the county. Eventually, Patterson, out towards Smyrna. These areas over into Capaya County, 
exciting. As I mentioned, uh, you're probably hearing the sirens going off in Port Gibson. The storm is south and east of you. If you're hearing the sirens going off over in Capaya County in Crystal Springs or Gallman or Georgetown or Strong Hope or, uh, or Beauregard or Dentonville, I mean, these areas here, nowhere near the warning, but in the county, you've got an active warning. So again, you need to be cognizant of these things. It may be very loud and the sirens are going off, but I'm telling you right now, based off of where we are presently, you still got another uh, 40 minutes if it even gets to I-55 as it stands presently. So again, it would be another 40-ish minutes before it even gets to I-55, if that. Um, but again, that would be for folks in Crystal Springs, Gallman, Hazelhurst, down towards Wesson uh, as the storm moves off towards the east. Uh, still very heavy band of showers and thunderstorms that continue south and west of that uh, through Roxy uh, back into western Franklin County. These are you know, nothing to sniff at, uh, nothing to look past, but uh, they're not severe. So that's the positive thing with that. I do want to go back over to velocity really quickly because we did have a couple of cells that were further south and west. I just want to check in on that. Again, you've got the one in far northwestern Capaya that does not have a warning on it, but that was the original warning that issued for high uh, for portions of uh, Adams County. This one is the one that we're checking in on right now. We still have a severe. Uh, well, they just uh, issued one. They issued a severe thunderstorm warning for that area that I was just talking about. Mm -hmm. It was like it was looking kind of suspicious on the on the on the radar. So new severe thunderstorm warning that is in effect for Franklin County. That's going to go until. That's going to be until 4.45 a.m. 4.45 this morning. Mm -hmm. So, again, that's going to include Roxy, Butte, Meadville uh, this morning. So, again, uh, from the standpoint of strong wind potential, that is a standard severe thunderstorm warning, okay? Mm -hmm. That does not include the tag of tornado possible. Uh, but in this environment that we're in, could it, is it possible? You can't rule it out, but as it stands right now, the storm is not producing the and the, uh, the ingredients for that or the uh, elements for that. Just more so the strong damaging wind potential. But again, as I mentioned earlier, it doesn't matter if it's twisting about in a circle or it's going straight at you. Wind is wind and wind makes causes issues. So um, so the first warning just dropped off. The continuation of the warning continues here for uh, Jefferson County. Tornado warning uh, for Jefferson County, Claiborne County. Capaya County until 4:30 this morning. The war, the, the the circulation does not look as great uh, as it did probably about I don't know 20 minutes ago, and that's why uh, that's why I'm, I'm I'm apprehensive to talk about what, what we got from the scanner traffic. Right, right. And Alex, you just had mentioned something else. Now, was that the Jefferson County Sheriff's Department, Alex? that said that they had they had gotten reports okay. but they didn't have a confirmed tornado on the ground alex just back me up on that if i had that correct okay he'll get back with me but okay. what we can do is i want to i want to take this back just a little bit on debris just to see maybe if there was anything that we picked up on that particular yeah on that particular system and again it's just not it's, it's certainly it's messy it's messy uh it just isn't giving you see us that right there. I mean, it is possible when I mean, it's co-located with where the where the rotation was at that point or very close to it. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't I wouldn't bank on it. But I mean, we're, we're, like, that's what I'm saying that we're, we're working on getting that information it may take a little right. time for us to get. Uh, we're, we're trying to get the most accurate information uh, mm -hmm. to you. So, again, that's what we're uh, we're efforting right now. That's why I call. I told them and said, hey, make sure you call Adams and right. Jefferson counties to try to figure out what's going on with that. But again, severe thunderstorm warning that's going to go for. Um, and just so you know, uh, yeah, there hasn't been any reports of damage necessarily. It's just there may have been a sighting at least briefly. That's the that's the thing. And they're trying to figure all those things out. It takes a long time sometimes to get from some of these more rural counties right. uh, the information because it does take some time for them to get out there to the county. That's the thing. You got one main t city in the entire county, Fayette, and then you've got to go drive down, you know, 20 miles away to get to anything. So it takes a little time for that to happen. So give us some time. We'll work on it and uh, we'll get you updated. But still tornado warning until 430 this morning. Uh, that does include this storm that has had some uh, at times, some peculiar looking things associated with it. It's been making its way across uh, uh, Jefferson County as well as uh, now about to get close to far southeastern 
Claiborne County and western portions of Kapai County. I do want to go back to this new severe thunderstorm mm -hmm. warning. Again, this does include uh, Meadville and, and Butte and Roxy. Again, damaging wind potential here damaging wind potential here, but again, you're moving through a very wooded area as well. But again, we do have some population centers here of Roxy, Bude, Meadville, out towards Edison and McCall Creek here along Highway 84, Highway 98, Highway 556, all this area out and through here, so and Highway 33 too. So again, while it's not a tornado warning, uh, it's still treat it as you are dealing with strong winds moving into your area. And it could be absolutely nothing, but, you know, take the couple of minutes to just kind of hunker down, it, you know, uh, during this while this is all moving through and just hope for the best. But again, just uh, take those courses uh, to minimize any impact to you and your family in that type of situation. Still have the tornado warning up to just north of here uh, into Jefferson County this morning. That's moving off to the north and east. And again, we're going to continue with that as well. Uh, let's go over to the velocity product really quick. Again, this is the which way the winds are blowing mode. And it looks even worse, you know, from that perspective. Now that, yeah, that's from Brandon. So not the best looking uh, from that perspective. That's good. Yeah, that's a good thing. That's good. We love to see that, okay? Uh, but it's broadening out uh, a good bit. We might be able to cancel the warning before we get to 430. That's what I was mentioning. It's like the based off of what we were seeing, it is possible that we could do that. But these storms have been cycling. They've been going through their, their, their paces over the last little bit. So it is still possible that the storm could try to get its act together yet again. So that's why we still want you to be in a safe place in places like Patterson. And we still want you to be in a safe place in Union Church. We still want you to be in a safe place in Smyrna uh, just to make sure in, in the event that that does happen. Still watching this, this storm just north. That one starting to, it, it, it continues to look peculiar. It's been there as the original warning for the day uh, for the storm that was coming out of Adams County. It fell apart and maybe trying to recycle again. So that's the, that's the thing that we're kind of going back and forth on, on that. Further north, uh, the storm that I was watching near Raymond, not as intense, but still some strong wind potential going past Raymond, heading out towards Clinton here uh, soon enough. Let's go over to which way, the, uh, the, how hard the rain's uh, raining, coming down. And again, you, you're starting to see the backfill of all this. You mm -hmm. see the tornado warnings first, and severe thunderstorm warnings first, and then it gets backfilled by flash flood warnings. That's the issue that we're going to run into. But I think that instead of just plain old flash flood warnings, you know, once this gets to the point to where it slows down and, and comes to a complete halt, I think that's when you're going to have the issue of, yes, this will rain for several hours. It will be heavy rain at, for several hours and could lead up to more issues than what you're seeing back here to the west. While these are flash flood warnings, you need to heed those warnings. Don't cross over uh, flooded roadways. Uh, if, you, if you see water, make sure you turn around, don't drown. I think that at some point later on this morning, that potential gets worse while the severe weather potential may go down a little bit. Uh, but, the, but the heavy rain aspect is not going anywhere anytime soon as we get a resurge of moisture off the Gulf of Mexico. You got something, Brandon? No, I was just saying that one that is uh, northwestern Capaya County, the one that we've been kind of talking about, mm -hmm. they are just making a note that they have been uh, watching the circulation. It has a little bit more depth to it, just like you were mentioning, Patrick. So we're going to have to watch that downstream. That's a potential, and we'll take things back to velocity now just to kind of show you exactly what we were talking about. That particular cell, the National Weather Service, is noting there has been some, <clears throat> excuse me, some recirculation there. And so, again, downstream from this, we're then crossing over into Hines County. We'll take a bigger shot of what we're seeing downstream from it. Again, Hines, well, that would be Claiborne, excuse me, my bad, Claiborne um, County. We'll start to see that move over into uh, the Claiborne County area. And so, uh, no, that, that's, that's, that, that, that's, yeah, that, that, yeah, that's Capaya. And moving into Hines County, correct? Yes. That's right. Excuse me, getting my counties mixed up. It's 3.51 in the morning. We're trying to make it happen around here. So moving into Hines County, if they're noting this continued circulation, That'll be something of interest. Let's just put a cone on it. Again, I know a lot of folks are tuned in right now, and a lot of people will stay tuned in throughout the duration of this because they want to be in the know. Mm -hmm. This is another circulation area that's just uh, south and the east of Carpenter, Dent Dentville, just north and west of you. Downstream, Bear, uh, Bear Creek at 408, Chapel Hill at 413, Raymond, 435, 
South Jackson, if this is something that, again, National Weather Service is just noting, we're going to have to keep an eye on the circulation. There's the potential for it to wrap back up. South Jackson at 452, 459, Jackson, Eastover at 506. And so that's just something we want to keep an eye on. Again, those that are downstream, if you're downstream from any of these storms tonight that we're talking about, right now is a good time. Hey, let's just make sure we got everything, you know, get that safe plan for your family. We've talked about the helmet or any type of uh, any type of headwear that you can put on. That's something we're going to have to watch over the next couple of uh, minutes to the next hour. So I will say this one that is in portions of uh, that's going to be uh, Jefferson County. That's just north and east of Fayette, just moving near Dennis Crossroads. Again, very messy, not as uh, not as tight of a rotation as we've seen. Um, we'll be watching to see what they do with this uh, tornado warning in the next couple of minutes because I feel like with that rotation not as tight as it was just a few minutes ago, they potentially may drop this. But again, a few scans back, we can kind of see how it's beginning to lose a little bit a little bit of that tight rotation, just the, the, just the signatures aren't there as it was moving uh, just south of Fayette. You get a little bit more of that tightening rotation, just moving uh, south of Fayette, moves more so east of, Fayette, east of Fayette, begins a little bit more broader and very messy with the signature right now. Although I will say, as it has gotten a little bit closer to Dennis Crossroads, a little bit of a trying, to do, trying to do something, trying to do something. And so we'll just have to continue to keep an eye on it. Again, we have to throw these scans back sometimes to get an indicator. It loses a little bit of the strength, then it strengthens back up a little bit. Again, we're still in an atmosphere that still has that instability for a lot of these storms to continue to kind of do something. And if, if they're able to take off in the atmosphere that we're having out there right now, they'll continue to uh, circul have that circulation and that tight gradient around them. And that's kind of what we've been seeing with this one. But again, back up to the one that's in uh, portions of uh, that's going to be Kapaya again having to watch this one. Let's go ahead and put this back in radar just to kind of see what that one's there doing. There it is. Tornado. Uh, wait, uh, that's uh, okay. That's they're just continuing way. them. They're one for, continuing. Yeah. That, yeah, they're going to continue the one for Claiborne, Kapaya, and Jefferson. So maybe they're they may be noting noting that maybe that recirculation yeah. trying to potential. Um, but I'm still kind of more you know this one that's northwestern portions of Kapaya still having to keep an eye on that. I'm really more curious about that one right now because of the direction. If it continues, it'll be right in the metro right at 430. Right. And yeah. so we have to watch that, folks. But going back to this one, they're going to continue this one downstream again, just messy component with this one. But there has been a little bit of a restrengthening as it's been moving near Dennis Crossroads. Let's put a track on this again, folks. If you're in this com in, in the Dennis Roads community, you're watching right now near 582 near 552 Blue Hill. Again, make sure you're finding that safe zone. Again, very, this is a rural population a little bit out here in portions of Jefferson, not a whole lot of communities, um, but we'll put a track on this just to give folks an idea of what's gonna be happening downstream. Again, downstream, they're gonna continue with this uh, tornado warning. And you really only have Violet at 406 and Peyton at 412. So just not a whole lot of communities out here, but there's, there's small pockets, I would say, more of a dense area, but there may be some small pockets, folks living on some, uh, you know, rural roads in these communities. I know you're tuned in right now. We're watching this for you. We want to make sure we're taking care of you. Again, find that safe zone, if you will. We'll kind of close in on it. And very messy, uh, Patrick, not just a whole lot of component there, but of course, National Weather Service, Service is seeing this of some note. And so they're going to keep, they're going to keep this tornado warning downstream. And so... Uh, just not a whole lot about there. Dennis Cross Crossroads is really all we have, and it's really east of it, northeast of it right now as it continues on this track, just kind of keeping an eye on it. And, um, just, and just to circle back to the Jefferson County stuff, mm -hmm. uh, it, that uh, Jefferson County Sheriff's Office, they've gotten reports right. of a tornado, but have not been able to Confirm. verify it. So they're, so they're probably out there working it right now, trying to figure out where things have happened you know so we're, we're, we're working with them and of course trying to keep you guys updated as well as we uh, continue here it's uh coming up on four o'clock in the morning hard to believe <coughs> right uh as we start off here uh as we get closer to your uh uh, to your Wednesday morning commute. Uh, again, as I mentioned earlier, it's probably going to be an active one in some instances across uh, central and southwest Mississippi. Um, let me try to pull that up again. 
and um, get this again. We're keeping an eye on that storm. Uh, as uh, Brandon was mentioning, it, it's had a persistent circulation with it the entire time as it's been making its way off to the north and east. The one that we've been talking about in the far northwestern Kapaya County, if if it were to hold together, OK, it would come somewhere near the metro area. I would say, uh, you know, probably south metro uh, somewhere around 415 and then downtown like 430. But it's riding right along the front edge of that line. So, I mean, it, it, it's going to get undercut at some point. Right. Uh, so that's the question mark is when does it happen? Uh, because eventually it's going to get undercut. Let's go back over to uh, traditional radar. I want to show you that because, again, you've got what's going on here with that circulation right here. But notice all of this back up here. That's stable air. That's going to try to undercut that storm. So that's what I'm talking about that hopefully it does happen and that keeps it keeps that uh, mesocyclone that circulation from forming and then dropping down to the ground. Let's hope that that continues to be the mm -hmm. case uh, right now. Again, it's there. Something to watch. Uh, just kind of keeping you abreast of those things. All right, we do have a flash flood warning that came out. That's going to be until 645 this morning. That's going to include uh, Claiborne County, Jefferson County, Adams County, I think Franklin too. Um, again, until 645. This goes back to the slowdown perspective of the of the whole situation. Go ahead, Brandon. And just uh, some information coming out from the National Weather Service um, and just kind of location here. Report mm -hmm. of uh, report of small debris on Liberty Road and eight residents are trapped inside home on 24 Nations Road. And so that's going to be in the Cranefield area in Adams County. So that's Adams County. Okay. So yeah, first responders, they're just wanting to make a note, first responders are en route to assist. And so again, these reports, when they come out, we just want to let folks know we're, of course, in some of these areas where we've seen. Yeah. yeah. Let's go, let's, let's jump back down there really quick. I want to right. pinpoint where that's at. Um, so let's go down here to, to Cranfield. So where uh, Brandon's talking about, this would be in the Cranfield community here in Adams County, uh, based off of what we're getting. So zoom in a little bit closer and we'll try to get the roads to pop in there. Um, just remind me what they were. 24 Nations Road. And you might have to zoom out a little bit just to kind of go around that really quickly. I'm trying to look myself. Um, I'm, I, it's like I'm, I'm good on, on major roadways and, and things like that, but I start getting out here in these rural roads, and I, I don't know where I'm going at, at that point. But, you know, I try to get out here to see every if we can place. get in there tighter to see. Uh, at any rate, Cranfield community, um, based off of what we've gotten uh, from Adams County, coming from the National Weather Service. Right. All right. Um, it does seem that there has been some, some uh, impact down there. Uh, that goes along with, um, and that comes from the emergency management. Uh, so that's... Uh, and Liberty Road yeah. as well. There's the small debris on Liberty Road. Okay, so yeah, so small debris on Liberty Road, but eight res residents are trapped inside of a home on 24 Nations here's Road. Here's Nations, Cranfield. yeah, Nations Road is right here. That's okay. just going to be south of uh, Cranefield. Okay, so in this area here. Um, let's do something really quickly. I want to back up really quickly. I want to zoom out just really quickly. Um, and I want you to back up the radar, back up the radar to where the storm came across Cranfield. I got my hand there. Um, it would have been the, the, this one right here, probably the second one. Yeah. So this is when, this was a storm that we were just watching. That's going, that's up past Fayette right now. Okay. So more than likely that this was the storm and you might be able to roll it back, uh, just, uh, pull down the, the, uh, the pull down tab and roll it back two hours instead of just mm -hmm. one. And we'll be able to go back an extra hour. Okay, so let's, uh, let's go forward. So there was one storm that we were watching. I don't think this is the one. I think this is the, sec so it's the second one that came up here. It was this one as it came up right and through there. So at some point here, I think that we, we had a tornado touchdown possibly mm -hmm. in Northeastern uh, Adams County. Again, we're gonna effort getting some more information about that, but that came from the emergency manager himself. Right. Okay, yep. I just saw it. So, uh, so uh, you know, if y'all wanna get him on the phone or try to get him on the phone, guys, uh, from Adams County, um, that would be great. Um, so again, uh, getting some word that, uh, eight residents trapped in a home yep. from the emergency manager that comes straight straight from him um, of uh, in the Cranfield community uh, from that storm more than likely it was this one that came through about three o'clock this morning we were tracking it as it was came came across that that was the second warning that came out 
let's go forward. Let's get to current time. Okay, let's get to current time. Where are we right now? Well, the rain's still ongoing over here in Cranfield, but the issues are now north and east of you. And of course, the circulation not nearly as great, but it doesn't take but you know one storm obviously to cause issues uh, right. very quickly in, in that sort sort of uh, scenario. So, uh, just a reminder: uh, it's 4:02 here on a uh, Wednesday morning. It's an alert day. You're joined by myself, meteorologist Patrick Ellis, and Brandon Walker. Uh, we are on WLBT Fox 40 WD. Here in Jackson, keeping you updated on uh, active severe weather across the area. We have one tornado warning that goes until 430 this morning that includes portions of Jefferson as well as uh, Claiborne and <laughs> the thunder's rolling here at the station. Mm -hmm. Jefferson, Claiborne and uh, Kapaya counties. That storm looks like it, it it's kind of gone through its cycle or at least tried to. So let's go over to the velocity product really quickly. How, which way the winds are blowing mode and see it's I think it's trying to it's trying to reform a new mesocyclone at this point because it's kind of jumped. Um, oh, that's what it was. It was in the wrong spot. But it looked like it kind of jumped a little bit. So, again, uh, that's where the circulation is uh, approaching, again, the far southeastern portions of uh, Claiborne County here soon enough. So Claiborne County, safe place. Now, if you're in Port Gibson, this is not a problem for you. This is well south and east of you. But I'd say if you're you know, just south and east of Patterson, uh, you need to go ahead and be in that uh, tornado safe place, Barland, uh, around the Peyton community there along four, uh, 547. Again, the general track will take it up towards Dentville here in the western portions of Kapaya County. Here, there's Smyrna. Um, and then this looks like it's kind of broadening out and just becoming a wind issue mm -hmm. going up into southern Hines County. <clears throat> highway 18, here's Highway 27 right here. That will take you from Utica back over towards Crystal Springs. This is becoming more of a wind issue as it's lifting northward. Um, I'll work on, uh, on getting the, uh, the Raymond Tower camera up okay. uh, because that would have a pretty good perspective of it. Right. Just give me a second. Yeah, yeah, certainly. But we'll continue to, to recycle what we're seeing right now mm -hmm. for that that's in Jefferson County. Again, still finding your safe zone, currently finding your safe zone if you're going to be in that polygon. Of course, those that are in that polygon, Blue Hill. Um, I know McBride, this is further, uh, this is kind of off towards, a little bit towards your north and then west just a little bit, but still even in the McBride community, making sure you're probably going to be dealing with a wind component. Let's trust, try to go ahead and find a safe zone, if you will. Blue Hill community, certainly uh, dealing with some wind component. And again, this is more so right now in Jefferson County. Haven't gotten any reports of this being on ground, but this is still radar indicated rotation as this continues forward. Uh, Violet and Peyton, these are small communities out here, especially that crosses over into uh, portions of uh, Claiborne County. Not a whole lot of, uh, not a, just not a, it's more, you got more tree line than you got houses in some of these places. Um, but again, there's still people in these communities and we still want to make sure that we're giving them the latest information. Um, just to kind of take this down track and uh, you get Peyton, that's all you got. Again, you start to get into a situation where this is becoming more of a, a tree line situation. Um, as it, if it was to cross over into a uh, Kapaya County in the next couple of minutes or the next uh, hour or so. And so uh, if this rotation really isn't the, the best rotation on this particular cell, we'll take it back just a few scan, scans. We know that this certainly has that wind profile there because we're getting just a little bit of a bow that's happening. Um, just a just a little bit of a bow there. So we know that it's dealing with some wind speeds up to upwards, potentially 50 miles per hour, or even greater in uh, some areas areas. And so continuing it downstream, if this keeps going, it's going into portions of uh, it's going to be south and then east Claiborne County continues downstream a little bit more. It'll move into uh, northwestern portions of uh, a Kapaya County. And so, and yeah, well, I will uh, definitely agree with you on this one, uh, Patrick, that's moving into portions mm -hmm. of uh, Hines County, definitely more of a wind profile. If this continues downstream, it'll be impacting somebody. Um, and so again, there's that bow on this one. No, there's no warnings on this one. No warnings on this one, but downstream, if this continues like it is, Chapel Hill, um, it'll be costing really close to the, it'll actually Dabney Crossroads, you'll get some of that wind profile from this particular cell. Bear Creek, certainly already seeing some of the winds near you. Definitely want to keep that a note because again, that could be messy for some people that are potentially around 430, expected to get to the, the, the Jackson Metro area. 
again, just having to keep an eye on Jackson mm. because a lot of people, a lot of residents that are living here. 453 near Jackson, South Jackson, 5 o'clock in, in Jackson, 505 for Flowood, um, Jackson uh, International Airport by 511, Ridgeland by 516. Again, this is, could be a messy situation for several people that are potentially going to be getting on the road around that time to go to work. Just something to take a precaution. If you're in the Jackson metro area and you're tuned in right now, could have a situation where we get some decent amount of winds rolling in here and could cause a situation for us. So again, no tornado warning on that particular uh, circulation that we're watching, but we're noting that because that's getting closer to Jackson Metro. And we all know how many people live in the city of Jackson, something we want to take a note of. Um, where we're back at right now, we'll go back further towards the north over the one that we're following right now. And that, this the only, the only tornado warning that we have currently in the area. We do have the severe thunderstorm warning. We'll circle back to that real quick um, for portions of uh, that's going to be uh, Roxy. Um, that's going to be, what is that? Uh, what are we counting? That's uh, Franklin County, correct? Yes, yes. Franklin County. Uh, still seeing that severe thunderstorm warning. Roxy, even more of a wind profile uh, that's going to be making its way near Meadfield. And so we start to get some of these blues like this, these bright colors showing us some decent amount of winds near Meadville. But a bood, is it bood continuing to make its way towards you. So certainly something that we have to continue to make a, keep an eye on. Uh, Bunkley Road, Southwest, certainly wind profile over you. Gloucester Road making its way towards you. We start to get these blue indicators on, uh, again, where we're watching the uh, velocity uh, profile decent amount of winds and that's the reason why it has that severe thunderstorm warning in portions of uh, Franklin County just something that we want to take a note of you're not dealing with a, uh, a circu the, the circulation of a tornado warning that we're continuing to watch towards your north but they have it you have a severe thunderstorm warning for Franklin County just south and then uh, west of uh, Meadville because of the wind profile that we're seeing. And so certainly that's going to be something to note of. Roxy, uh, Hamburg, you're okay. You're dealing with some winds potentially just because heavier rain chances for you. Also some wind. Hamburg, you're really just on the outskirts of it just a little bit for that severe thunderstorm warning, but definitely seeing some decent amount of rain. Let's take things over to the rain profile throughout some of these areas and going into portions of Franklin County. You can actually see we get some of these reds pushing in here. Heavy rainfall. And you also have portions. Now, there's the flash flood warning going in for portions of uh, f that's going to be Jefferson County and Adams County seeing uh, portions of a uh, flash flood warning. But I wouldn't be uh, I, I wouldn't take it out of the consideration of you at some point get a flash flood warning just because of how much rain is falling over your area right now. You mm -hmm. seen anything new, Patrick? I, I was just going to point out something. Of course, uh, right now, 410 here on your uh, your Wednesday morning. That's a look at our uh, camera at, uh, at the Raymond Tower. So about 500 feet up, uh, of course, uh, it's been popping lightning like crazy. I, I point that out because of the fact that the storm that we were talking about that has a strong wind profile that's coming up in the southern Hines, uh, th that would come basically right over the, right. the, the camera. We'll see how good it works. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we'll see how good they, 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 they ratcheted that one down up there on the tower. But uh, needless to say, uh, again, that's what the, you're kind of seeing right now in southern Hines County as that storm's moving in there. You've still got very heavy rainfall moving on across portions of Franklin County. Again, severe thunderstorm warning in effect until 445 this morning for uh uh, for Franklin County. Not only that, we've also got the flash flooding that's ongoing as well. Back to the West, I, I, you know, I want to I want to just kind of hit on that very quickly because it, it's been a while since we've kind of talked about it, but you see several flash flood warnings ongoing across the area. And as I mentioned, at some point in time, this line is going to come to a complete stop and we may lose the severe weather, traditional severe weather, in the fact of tornadoes, severe thunderstorm warnings, and, 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 and things of that nature. But then we transition over to heavy rain, and I think that uh, somebody is not going to have a great time today. Mm. Uh, you know, uh, hopefully, you know, based off of what we're seeing right now, let's zoom out really quickly. I just want to get the broad perspective. Again, tornado warning still in effect until 4.30 this morning for Southern. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they... They may cancel that early, but uh, they're holding it for, for now. Uh, for southern Kapaya, uh, southern, southwestern Kapaya, uh, southern Claiborne, and eastern portions of Jefferson County. But notice how that one band right there really, as it's 
kind of sticking around. It's not really moving all that much uh, this morning. So it, we're getting to the point to where flooding is going to become the more prevalent thing. It's going to be a thin band wherever it happens. But where that thin band sets up shop, it ain't going to be good for somebody. So mm -hmm. let's hope that, you know, it doesn't. But eventually it's going to happen. The question mark is when and where and how long will it last uh, once it does get to that point in time. Um, just uh, want to point that out uh, as we are starting off the morning hours. Um, our very own uh, Nancy Pasternak was up in Canton this morning. She emailed me and she said uh, there were two Godzilla booms that happened about 3 and 3.30 this morning. Uh, she's talking about the lightning. Uh, you know, I, I know that you may have gotten a rude awakening. We said probably about 3, 4 o'clock in the metro area, starting to hear those rumbles of thunder, rude awakening type of situation. That's what we're dealing with right now. Thankfully, no active severe weather in Metro Jackson. We are watching one storm that's coming in the southwestern portions of the county uh, that has been persistent over the last little bit. And it's kind of on this weird tail end down here of this line. You see one tornado warning that's still active, okay? North of that, the original warning that was issued. But see how that line, you see just flash flood warning after flash flood warning after flash flood warning uh, ongoing back over here uh, in those locations. This becomes the issue, I think, in the coming hours. is becoming more of a flooding issue. That line is sluggishly sl uh, starting to slow down pretty efficiently. So uh, there's going to be a point in time where we, where we just have to deal with that. Uh, and we may not deal with severe weather. Okay, in the traditional sense, it may be the flooding rains, but that is at a critical time during your day, trying to get out the door, trying to get to work, trying to get to school, and all these things going on. Okay, so that's why you know we we, we got to be kind of aware and ready to go in that uh, realm. Uh, notice how things are kind of backed off a little bit back over to the South Delta. I think that you're still going to get off and on rain here, but your severe weather threat is done, my friends. You are done back over in Myersville, Belzona, Rolling Fork, Anguilla, uh, Valley Park, uh, Eagle Lake, uh, Chula, uh, Lexington. You're done for severe weather. You will not have another warning issued, okay, more than likely today. Now, that could change. I'd say for Holmes County and Yazoo County, it is possible still, um, but, and also Warren County. Uh, but I think we're going to get to a point to once this starts to move a little further off to the east, you're going to lose that potential pretty quickly. Okay, so the further east that this moves, the less of a chance that you will have on uh, severe weather. I know we haven't talked a lot about Pike, Walthall, Lawrence, Lincoln, Jeff Davis, Covington, Smith, Simpson, Rankin. I know we have not talked about that. We've been on the air since 9.15, okay, 9.15 uh, yesterday evening. The, prob the thing is that you're not seeing very much of anything. You're probably thinking, okay, well, we probably got away with this with no problems. The problem with that is don't think that for a second because we have another two things to deal with. First, the flood threat through the morning commute. Wherever this line stops and stalls, that is going to be the flood threat. The second part is a secondary severe weather situation that will unfold wherever the warm sector is still located at. We still got some pretty juicy air out ahead of this line. So wherever that line stops ahead of it, you'll be able to get severe weather. Okay. We have a tornado watch that goes until 6 a.m. for much of the area. That will probably be allowed to expire on time. Um, go ahead. Yeah, I was just saying they're going to uh, the National Weather Service is going to continue that tornado warning downstream for Claiborne and Capaya until 4 30. They're just keeping it. So they're just keeping it as of right now. So they, they've clipped the warning out of mm -hmm. uh, Claiborne County. OK, so now it's just for uh, now it's just for Capaya County. So Western Capaya County. And it looks like it's trying to wrap itself up again. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. Uh, so, you know, that's the that, that's the other thing over on the left hand side. You're seeing the uh, the sky cam from the Raymond Tower camera uh, as the storm that is coming up into the metro area is starting to me make its way across uh, that portion of the area. Let's hope it doesn't get struck by lightning. Yeah, uh, this, a lot I think of lightning is, happening. Out I think there. that's the first test of that camera. Right. Uh, so <laughs> I, I'm, I'm really hoping for for the best because it's it got some beautiful views. Um, so again, a tornado warning still in effect for until 4:30 for Capaya County. Uh, as we continue this morning again, 416 now uh, for Capaya County. There you go with our storm that's moving in Metro Jackson as well. But again, the main issue is the tornado warning that's currently in effect. Outside of that, uh, have we seen anything else that's come down from the Weather Service? No, nothing yet for them. Um, nothing yet. But again, yeah, for that particular sale that's in uh, Claiborne and Capaya, still going to have to continue to watch that one downstream. Of course, they're taking in a note that there's still some type of circulation there within that system. 
So have to watch that to see if it'll potentially continue down stream force. But here it is right here in portions of Claiborne County. Crystal Springs, if this continues to head downstream, this will be neck knocking on your door. A lot of people in the Crystal Springs community. Right now is a good time to find your safe zone just to be on the safe side. Downstream, you will be in the eye of this or just near, depending on if there's a little bit of a wobble to the north or a little bit of a more of a wobble push to the, to the east a little bit. But again, downstream for Crystal Springs, if you can hear my voice, good time right now to make sure you're finding a safe zone. We'll take things over to velocity right now to see if there has been any kind of a re-strengthening. And again, this is still very, very messy component for this uh, particular rotation. Just doesn't look to be the best. But again, if they're going to continue to keep this, they're seeing it of a note that it's trying to do something, maybe do a re-wrap around or a recirculation. The big thing is we're still moving into an area where there's still uh, still have a lot of energy in the atmosphere some, for some of these storms to try to continue to produce. And if you hear my stomach growling, <laughs> we haven't had breakfast yet, so you probably just heard that. But again, still some energy in the atmosphere. Some of these storms continue to move throughout the area. They're still going to be able to pick up some of that energy to be able to just kind of keep that circulation happening. I feel like that's particularly what's happening with this one that's starting to cross over into uh, portions of uh, Kapaya. So... We'll just put a we'll put a cone on this one just to kind of you know let folks know downstream what you'll be seeing. Again, if this continues to track where it's going, um, and just in case if they was to if this was to continue the bring back a, a greater circulation, Dentville 443, Crystal Springs 505 near Terry 519, Byram at 531, Florence at 5. 39 and we also have Poindexter Park which is in Jackson 546 something that we have to keep an eye on but again not the best circulation for that particular system D doesn't look doesn't look nice but I will say there has a little bit of that little bit of that component there you know a little bit if you will trying to maybe do some recirculation reason why they're keeping the tornado warning on it um, further downstream not a whole lot happening for us we're just seeing on the back end of this, we have uh, flash flood warnings. And so that's a good thing of note, not to say that there's still some strong storms at the south, um, at the end of this tail that's kind of making its way into uh, Wilkinson and then will make its way back through uh, Franklin County. Um, the big thing is we're just looking at flash flood warnings. That's going to be the back side of this. We're dealing with the frontal boundary right now ahead of the front where we're seeing still some of these storms located. On the back end of this, when we say the line stalling, we're not just talking about the north north portion or the north, the, the, the kind of in our viewing area, northeastern portion of this uh, line of storms. The entire line is going to slow down. So that's why we're seeing beginning to see even some more of the flash flood warnings towards the southern end of this tail beginning to come in right now, not only for Adams, but in for Jefferson into uh, portions uh, for uh, Kapaya. And then I wouldn't be surprised if they, can, in, they extended this um, into portions of uh, Franklin County just because of how much rainfall potential is happening, in, happening there for them. And so here's where our rotation is still seeing kind of that, trying to get that echo happening there, just a little bit of a hook nature, if you will, not pretty, but again, there is that, that kind of that hook trying to, trying to have a little bit of a, uh, some, a little bit of a texture there, if you will. But again, if anything, you're dealing with a decent amount of winds in this area that's in portions of uh, Kapaya County. Also heavy rain profile. We get some of these dark, dark reds that are moving throughout the area, certainly heavy rainfall happening take things back to the velocity and nothing new coming out from the National Weather Service. You know, the big thing is when we get no news, that's good news. We love the, we kind of love well, to see that. Let, let's hope it stays that way. That's the, right. that's the thing. It's like, while there might not be news right now, let's just hope it stays that way. Uh, still, still again, we're trying to get um, everything kind of put together uh, for mm -hmm. the morning newscast as well. Um, so we're coming up on it. Yeah, we're coming up uh, to 4.30. Uh, and at the end of this warning, what we'll do is that we'll just, we'll, uh, it's like, and Alex, if you're still back there, let me know uh, if you want to dip the brake first and then come back out or what you want to plan on doing. I know we'll just go back to regular schedule programming on Fox, mm -hmm. but uh, for LBT, it's a different story. Uh, or we just start the newscast off and just 
off right to the races. To um, so again, let's go big perspective again. I want to go out to the radar uh, really quickly again. While we have this going on for uh, uh, for Kapaya County, we still have a severe thunderstorm warning until uh, 445 for uh, for Franklin County. Got to watch these storms trying to do things down here in uh, Pine Belt. Let's go down there really quickly. I know that's outside of our area, but I, I, we've got people who are watching from all over the place mm -hmm. right now. Uh, the reason why I point this out is because you heard me talk about mini spinnies earlier. Okay, so these are little miniature supercells. These are little tropically induced cells. They're coming directly off the Gulf of Mexico, but they're tapping into the low level turning of the atmosphere. They're not very tall thunderstorms. They may be capping off at about like 15 or 16, 17, 20,000 feet or something like that, but they are spinning. Go to the velocity product on, on this storm here near Hattiesburg. There's a little spin there. That's what I'm saying. Um, no warning on it. It's not super deep, but it's possible that you could get one of these like, little, little cells that are well out ahead of the main line to end up trying to tornado. That's on the southeast side of uh, Hattiesburg. There's 98 and 49. Uh, so that would be out there just north of uh, Camp Shelby and uh, that would be closer to William Carey. Right. Uh, this is your old yeah. was you should you should be doing <laughs> yeah, this. Yeah. Um, but uh, you know, but that's something that we will have to watch as well because not just for Pine Belt, but for our southeastern counties. I'm talking like Covington, Smith, Simpson. It may take some time before you really get to see anything uh, or see anything crazy happening in your neck of the woods. But this may be part of it. You see another one out here at south and west of Purvis. Uh, so, you know, that, that's something that we'll just have to kind of watch here. That's Highway 589 takes you back up towards Summerall, uh, back over by uh, Canebrake. Um, but... See, I know about I know How you do. I, I, I know you're know. calling them out, Patrick, uh, like, like you live down there. It's like I, could, I couldn't call out what was going on in Cranfield, but I could figure out what's going on down in Hasbro. <laughs> Anyways, uh, circling back, let's go back big scale, back to the main radar because we're coming up uh, to 425 here. One thing to note, again, the line of storms is still moving through here. As I said, in this area here, if you are back here in the South Delta, you are done for severe weather. Okay, you're done for severe weather. Uh, could you be dealing with rain, though, that could lead up to some localized flooding? Yes, that will continue for the coming hours, but the severe weather threat is done. Anybody near or ahead of that line, severe weather threat continues. And unfortunately, that line's going to stall out at some point. And wherever it happens to stall out, flooding becomes the concern for a couple of hours here. I'd say between really almost now through about noon today, mm -hmm. before we start to see the push coming to push this down to the south and east. So places like Smith County, places like Simpson County, places like Jeff Davis, Lawrence, and as well as Covington County, it may be, and Walthall County for that matter, it may be until later on this morning before you start to see your rain coming through the fold. Uh, I had to make sure that. I think I lost my IFB. And there we go. Uh, but it's uh, but it may be a little bit longer uh, for that uh, to happen. So again, it's going to take some time, my friends. Uh, please be patient with us here this morning and throughout the day, because unfortunately, this uh, won't exit the area until probably three and four o'clock this afternoon. Mm -hmm. um, like I mentioned, we were with you this uh, during the overnight period for the South Delta. Uh, just looking at the power outage situation, I mean, basically all of Issaquina, all of Sharkey County out of power right now. Um, you know, I haven't heard anything from the South Delta School District, but I would assume based off of that, that it's going to be hard to have school today unless they can get the power restored up there. Uh, but that's that's just me making a, a, an observation. That's not an official statement. Uh, so we'll work on trying to get that information from South Delta School District. But based off of what we know, it's kind of hard because it's, you know, the entire, both counties are without mm -hmm. power right now. It's the Queen and Sharkey County. Um, again, we've got power outages that have started to mount also for portions of uh, Adams County. Uh, and Yazoo <laughs> County as well. And too. Yazoo County as well. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we've got several different waves that we're dealing with here this morning. So that's what we're kind of contending with here on your uh, Wednesday morning. So, uh, 426 right now. Last batch of this warning is going to come up here at 430. As long as they don't extend it and I don't perceive that they will. Yes. Okay. Thank you, sir. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. So he's just telling me what we're doing in my ear. Uh, so that's what we're doing. Uh, so at 430, what we'll do, we'll send you back over to regular schedule programming at 
Fox 40. But we're going to start the newscast at 4.30. So guess what? You get two and a half hours of me and Brandon. Come on. Uh, <laughs> and and, and, and uh, uh, I don't know. I haven't seen Wilson. So Wilson's over here somewhere. Um, but yes, uh, as far as we can tell right now, they probably will not extend this warning. Right. right? Okay. Have not got any reports coming from the National Weather Service. Now, and so that's a good thing. Now that could change. Uh, yep. But we're going to see how this plays out. Uh, but again, there you go. Line of showers and thunderstorms starting to slow down. This becomes more of the uh, flood threat here over the next little bit. I don't know what I got over there on Max. Uh, take Max 3 really quickly. I'll take traffic Max if we can on the wall and uh, show you what's going on with the tower camera. That's our tower camera at Raymond. And this gives you a perspective of what you're going to be seeing here over the next uh, couple of hours. If it's not the severe weather, it's going to be heavy rainfall. It's also going to be very frequent lightning. Of course, uh, that's looking off to the west uh, from our Raymond tower camera. So, you know, 25, uh, 30 miles off in the distance would be uh, would be Vicksburg. And usually we'd be able to see the lights from Vicksburg uh, on a clear night, but uh, obviously not a clear night this morning. Uh, this morning and leading into today. So again, very active day on the way. I, I wish I could tell you that once this is, you know, done and moved through the area, we're done. We're at severe weather all day long, uh, but this is not that day. Uh, this is going to be a long duration day. I told you yesterday, if we started at six o'clock, it'd be it, it'd be a 24 hour bout of this. We started at 915 last night with the first tornado warning. Uh, we're still on the air. It's coming up on 430. Uh, and unfortunately, we're probably going to have more warnings before the day is out. We do have a tornado watch that's in effect until 6 a.m. for most of the area. OK, tornado watch is in effect until 6 a.m. for most of the area. And that does include Metro Jackson. There will probably be a period of time where we may lose all watches except for the flood watch. Um, but we'll probably get another one at some point in time during the latter portion of the day. Okay. Because the storm system still has to make progress off to the east. We want to hope that this would make progress all the way eastward and get out of here, but that's just not the case. It seems like right now. So again, where it goes from here, severe weather threat starts to wane. Okay, we may still have a rogue warning or two. We still have the severe thunderstorm warning until 445 for Franklin County. And this warning that's coming up for western portions of Kapai County should be allowed to expire. Mm -hmm. Okay, I just want to make sure you yeah, get yeah, nod yeah. your head on that one. Yeah, yeah. So they said just uh, just a note from National Weather Service with the Kapai County warning about to expire, but they will continue to watch it following. Okay, so, so we're good. Yeah, so we're good there. All right. So what's going to happen? Okay. That's going to go away. <clears throat> Severe thunderstorm warning continues for Franklin County for strong wind potential, heavy rainfall uh, as it moves through there, uh, Meadville and Butte. We will keep you updated on that over on WLBT, our friends on Fox 40. If you need to stay up to date on the weather situation, news is going to happen from 430 to 7 on WLBT. We'll see you guys at four, uh, 7 o'clock this morning over on WLBT. We send you back over to regular schedule programming on Fox 40, and we start the newscast at 430 here on WLBT. Three on your side. WLBT Morning News at 4.30 starts now. Good morning. I'm Wilson Stribling. As you know, it's been an active morning already in terms of the weather. It has left many people without power as they wake up this morning. The latest numbers show more than 5,000 customers without service this morning statewide. 139 have reported, been reported in Yazoo County, 725 in Washington County. 100% of Sharkey County is reporting uh, no electricity this morning. Crews will be working to get the service restored in all the areas that have lost it. Down power lines are often the reason for outages. Both lanes of Highway 61 had to be shut down in Sharkey County just after midnight, and they are still closed between Valley Park and onward south of Rolling Fork. Crews have been on the scene there to get the lines back up and uh, off the highway. Utility officials say you should never touch a downed line and always assume it has power running through it. An alderman in Canton says it is crucial that that city gets approval to receive millions of federal dollars to help alleviate flooding concerns, especially when the weather gets like it is right now. It's seeking the cash through a program called Building Resilient Infrastructure.